Welcome back, and y'all know the title, Israel, Realism Decoded, The Real Meaning of Kanye West's Mysterious Symbol, and The World Agenda of Ufology We Are Exposing, because we know that all the governments of the world has turned aliens into the new religion. We know that the Vatican, right, have said that uh, it's okay for you to believe in God and aliens. That's what the Vatican said. And if you understand what we've been going over about realism, this is a UFO cult of people that is a doomsday cult, fear-mongering cult, deceiving the people so that they can create this problem so that the solution can be this new religion, which is mind uploading, human cloning. Basically, everything that's happening in the world today that we've been talking about, the 2045 agenda, all of that stuff, right? And, and we don't have to be redundant on it so we could just get right into where we left off with, with part two and come on right here with part three and let's get it. And if you are new to this, then you need to go to part one and part two of this realism series. And I got different color thumbnails for each one so that y'all can s s distinguish them. But other than that, we're going to hop right into it. So, uh, and, and again, we got a lot of uh, symbolism. We're going to go over etymology, all that stuff. But also a little bit of history of the group. And because when you think about it, this is a worldwide movement. It is the religion of the smart world. But this, gr this religious group, this mindset we can do the history of and see that it has been silently in the backgrounds for a very long time and is very powerful. Um, basically, when we talk about the occult, when we want to talk about, you know, that Crowleyism and OTO, if you want to get into uh, the Moravians, if you want to get into the Jesuits, I don't care what degree of the occult you want to get into, even Satanism. All of it has one principle, out of body, death and rebirth. Now, some of y'all who are new to this, you won't understand that. Some of you who've been doing this a while, you know about the Hiram Abiff ritual in Freemasonry, which is the out-of-body ritual, you dying and being reborn, right? All of the comedic mystery schools was based upon death and rebirth, and this is the same technological uh, feat throughout the eight. Well, this is basically cheating death, like we always talk about the pharaohs tried to do in Egypt. And... uh one of the ways to do that was to achieve this out of body experience. And like I said, they've been achieving it with technology and they've been cheating, breaking the rules. And that's been causing chaos and imbalance in the natural system of things and all of that. I'm just giving you an introduction. Um, so, let me go through some more of these notes, right? Realism teaches that an extraterrestrial species known as the Elohim created humanity using their advanced technology. And uh, this Elohim concept is something that we see in, in, in the foundations of the Abrahamic faiths, right? The Elohim creating man. And now that you have scientists saying that these Elohim are real, we're really in trouble now because this is the unity between science and religion. Aliens exist in science and aliens exist in religion in the form of ascended prophets like Enoch, Christ, and many more that I'm going to show you here today. Because an alien is just any interdimensional species of human. If one of you guys leave the earth and come back, uh, or, or excuse me, if, if any of you guys have the ability, right, 
to travel to heavens and leave the earth and come back at will, you're not human. I'm sorry, but you're not human like the rest of us. That will make you alien because you would have some sort of superhuman ability. That superhuman ability lies in all of us in the part of us that's not human. Yeah, there's a part of you that's not human. It's just spirit. And that's the part that can ascend. And that's the part we're going to be reiterating on the day that these rallying movements and what the governments of the world have hid this beautiful science about us and, about us, and they want to you know, redistribute it to us in the form of the stuff we're going to be exposing today. I'm also showing you how it's all united into one. Because uh, this, the articles, and I, you know I always come with receipts, so yeah. Even if the sources that I'm uh, reading right now is spot on about what I'm saying about how all of this aligns with all of the Abrahamic faiths and et cetera. See, a lot of people who went to scientism and technology and all that, they have a heart for the Abrahamic faiths. It's really one big religion. So let's talk about this whole, uh, the first phases of any initiation in any occult group is death and rebirth. It's going to be that group's form of a Hiram Abiff ritual. You know why? Just like in the military, they shave all your head off. They give you a new name, put you in new clothes. It's basically a new you. They fucking start injecting you with stuff that make even your damn DNA probably something different than what I don't know. I'm just this is all conspiracy theory and pseudoscience that I'm saying. And guess what? It should be debunked. Hint, hint. We don't want no problems with the laws, with the censorship. Y'all, some of the smart folks know what I just did. But anyway, you know. Everything you join want to break you down and build you up, even a game, right? Uh, so it's a rebirth ritual with everything. That makes that you can't identify with your cult group how you identify with your family and all them. So the cult got to have a whole nother way of interacting with you that your family don't even know about, your children don't even know about, you know. It's a secret uh, bond that you got exclusive to them. Hold on a minute. Because I'm about to go deep with this realism. So think about religion because when we talk about our uh, Realism, when you say religion, you're dealing with the same concept. All of these religions come from Ra and El. Any religion comes from Ra and El. Now, the spiritual systems come from the goddesses. The spiritual systems come from the goddesses. And uh, religion is a all religions is based on realism, which is an out-of-body experience with some sky god. You going out of your body, connecting with this fifth-dimensional being, this heavenly being that isn't human, but it creates humans. Doesn't that sound like realism? Didn't we just read that? A lot of people that is practicing a religion don't know that they are practicing Raelianism and that and that the whole end goal of all of their religions is for them to be abducted in the heavens and ascending to their God. Even in the science community, even in the science community, they believe in their scientists and their astronauts. And like Makai Kaku said, the ultimate end goal of science is mind beaming and traveling the quantum universe. Not the real universe. It don't exist in reality. They've built the universe in meta in the meta space. Told you that the word meta backwards is atom. And if you look at the symbol of realism, 
you will see that it is indeed the atom. What is the atom? The atom is the small man that was created before all the other humanity come from this atom, this in the garden, right? So who is this atom in the garden? Here it is right here. Let's do this. Everybody hit the like and share button, please. Um, I really want every, we got over 500 people in the building. Do your boy a favor. Everybody hit the like button right now, and I won't have to beg y'all throughout the show. Let's just keep the likes up. Do that for me real quick. I really appreciate that too, by the way. Let's take a minute and hit the like button. I'm not, not, not like the other folks. I'm not going to play boring music and all that, but I am going to like my blunt. <laughs> it just hit that like button for your boy. It's free. Now check this out, y'all. Here is what Adam is. Here is what Adam represents. When they, you know, Adam was fashioned by the hands of God, and I keep showing y'all. Watch this. Look at this symbol here. Look at this symbol right here. Here go the hands of God forming Adam. Think of forming clay with your hands like Plato. We're all familiar with this symbol, but this is the cube of Saturn trapping you inside of the hands of God. These hands of God, right, is what they're calling Santa's claws. Yeah, that's, this, this is the claws and Santa claws. And another way you can look at that is uh, the crystal ball. right here that's the devil's trident and that ain't nothing but the brain stem holding up the pineal gland and your pineal gland is where your whole reality is taking place at in the back of your mind and if people can read that they can read they can, your memories your your future they can fucking tell you everything about yourself so when they plug your mind up to Neuralink they can study all of the neural activity from past, present, and future. That's all the culmination of your memories, man, and your, and your experience. And yet that's essentially who you are. And this is your concept of the crystal ball. And again, Christ and Ale and the God ball all in one, the Holy Trinity. We see they all holding up the uh, heavens. And I can show you more of these in comedic where you have the deities holding up the heavens. This is not no uh, new concept. Here we are in Kemet now, and we see the deities holding up that celestial wheel. Inside of that celestial wheel is our known universe, y'all. And everyone is projecting the world outside from in inside. And this represents your pineal gland. Think of a crystal ball. We're dealing with holography. And once the light is shined through this seed base projection, the source right here, right? This would be like a, te a, a teacher's projecting machine, and it's clear with the clear paper. And then she can put the little sheet of paper on the thing and project the picture on the wall. Well, the, the base point for what you see on a wall would be at the machine. The machine is in between your eyes and the back of your brain. That's the mind. Everyone's mind in unison collectively is helping create our entire simulated universe that you see outside. Even your science tell you if there was no one around to observe the universe, it wouldn't exist. So when you see images like this in Kemet, huh, this is an old concept, guys. I got to let you know that, that the world around us is expanding from a dense base 
world that's very small but dense. This is your Big Bang Theory. If you ask any scientific person what started your Big Bang, they wouldn't know what to tell you. They'll run you in circles, dance around, and play with you like you're a child. They'll insult your intelligence instead of saying, I don't know. And if you don't know what started the Big Bang, your damn show can't tell us what's going to end it. And your damn, listen, if you don't know the beginning, you can't know the ending and the in-between, buddy. <laughs> if you don't know how a person was brought up, you can't go to judging their life in the middle and at the end of it. Even some of these serial killers that y'all be judging these folks and that y'all don't know that these folks was beat on when they was a child. Folks' daddy molested them. Mama treated them like shit. Locked them in a the room for years. Giving, you know, some of these folks that y'all, man, that nigga evil. Man, that dude had a fucked up childhood. And see, because you don't know the beginning, you got to guess at the middle and the ending. Same thing happens in science. Once you admit that you don't know the beginning, and w which is what started it, then be quiet about everything else and let's all start from the blackness and try to figure it out from ground zero and no one act like they know it all. Now let's get back, because I got to show you. These deities are spinning around the heavens. And this is your UFO concept that they adopted in realism. As you can see, this looked like a UFO ship turning. But this is the Zodiac wheel. And see, guys, our star, let me show you something. Our, our, our sky is a lunch point for souls when they said we're fallen angels we definitely are your the your um what is it your your star sign and all that represent the points of latitude longitude and time by which the angel landed did you hear what i said if i launch a missile to another country they got the direct latitude longitude points it landed all of the numerology associated with your birth date represent the landing of something from one place to another, the transitioning of some consciousness. So look, if you look at what our sky is doing, this is this is the the everyone is beamed from this middle point. But then wherever you're po uh Pointed at determine what country, continent, what time, right? Think of the sky turning right now. And you have all of these souls being beamed down. And as people are being born, there are people dying, being beamed up, headed back up into the mothership. So right in the middle of this wheel is a stairway. And it's a uh, double highway stairway. And that is this whole abduction concept when they talk about the stairway to heaven. Uh, if you look at the symbols for realism, you will see it's an open UFO ship. Uh, I'll give it to you right here. This is what it is. You see? Now, some of y'all familiar with this image right here, but you just ain't never known. Now, guess what? When you look at the symbol of realism, doesn't it look like the Hebrew Israelites? And what are the Hebrew Israelites telling you? They want to be abducted into heaven by Yahweh. See there? Didn't I tell you everybody with a religion is a religion? But before the spookism, it dealt with us and the ascension of our consciousness. Let me uh, pull up something else for you. A lot of folks got a problem with, with people teaching with symbols. Uh, and they say, well, you putting the symbols up there, but you ain't putting no words up there. I'm giving you the words. That's what my mouth for you, silly. <laughs> then they say, well, you putting the symbols up there, but ain't no math with it. And guess what I'll say to that? Uh, yeah, 
I use everything in moderation. There's no math required for me to teach about realism. See, that's a dude that's saying, man, hey, it's time to go to church. Hand me a hammer. No, you need a Bible. <laughs> Niggas need to understand proper requirements. And quit asking a nigga for something that that man don't need to express himself. You're trying to cripple him is what you're trying to do. Now, let me move on. And there's going to be a lot of people pissed at this video because they just can't do what I do. Because they don't have the uh, integrity to put the ego aside and realize we've been lied to. Then they want to maintain a lie. But when they come over here, they they anger themselves watching me. And I don't know why, because, you know, you, you don't have to watch, you know. Check this out, guys. I want to go into the symbolism associated with realism now. And let's talk about this UFO concept that you see these folks, what they love. This is one of their known symbols. It's a little, matter of fact, let me uh, see if I can find it. Because they just showed it to you there, but I want to show you. Here it is right here. Now, that's the shaman hat. Now, if you think of Alistair Crowley, see, that's what I'm telling you about Alistair Crowley. Look. You see this hat? And remember now, Kanye West and Jay-Z are part of OTO, which is the fraternity that Crowley created. Which is why if I show you a picture of Kanye, he got the same, uh, look, do what thou wilt, the Egyptian stuff. All of this stuff is realism. That's what the Pharaoh, the Babylonians, it, they, they, we're in Babylon. So think about what they said that the Babylonians wanted to do. They said that the Babylonians wanted to build a tower to the heavens. But the tower got knocked down by God. And the tower to the heavens is this stairway inside of the UFO ship. Remember that the UFO ship is the sky, which is the heavens. Watch this. I just showed you that, remember? This is the UFO ship that they trying to build a stairway to. Now, what is the stairway? It's the CERN beam portal. Beam portals. And those beam portals literally look like, let me show you something. Those beam portals, watch this. They got demonstrations of what the late, what this beam going to look like. And I'm going to show it to you from CERN. Uh, let's see if I can find it real quick. Here it is right here. Scientists at CERN, laser cool. So, see, this is the world's first laser-based manipulation of antimatter. Now, what this represents is an ethereal laser that has reached the hyperbolic, uh, when we talk about tearing through the ether, when Moses made the waters pour back, piercing through the ether. This is how they are trying to get to the, the heavens. And what they can do, you can beam human consciousness on this line. And if you want to find out about that, go go and research what Makai Kaku been teaching about mind beaming. Do that on your own. So if you think of this little silver cord to the sky, it's also going to open up the ethers because there's seven layers of the atmosphere. And they're going to break through all of the seven layers and when they get to that 7-1, that's the, like going back to the early forms of the universe and all this good stuff that they're talking about. Antimatter is ether, is ether, basically. And this is going to manipulate antimatter how? By allowing us to pierce through it, piercing through the ether. Now, also, the same laser that's piercing through it will serve as a highway for consciousness to ascend to the heavens via technology. Now, 
uh, this is not my bizarre technology. This is theirs, and it makes me think of the silver surfer, think of tight roping. See, because if you think of what Christ represents, watch this. Watch this. You know that that beam of light coming up out of the uh, UFO ship is the stairway. So now you got to ask yourself, how is a beam of light a stairway? Because the beam of light ain't no straight line. Light travel in a spiral. And the spiral widens the further that the light travel. And as it widens, the light get dimmer. So what a laser beam is a very focused beam of light that would take it so long for that light to get damn, uh, excuse me, wide at the end so you can focus a single beam for long distances. That's all it is. Even a laser beam is getting wider and wider as it goes away. You'll see that the beam at the original starting point versus the end would be wider. Now, I'm saying all this for a reason. Now, all of this technology I'm showing you about right now, this is the same as the beam of light coming from the UFO ship. This is Jack's beam stalk. All throughout ancient folklore, people have spoke about this beam stalk. And uh, another way they call it the silver line, the, the tethering line, the silver cord, because we have one of these already built within us. It's going up and down a spinal cord. Matter of fact, let me show you that. Every one of us have our own lifeline or being stalked to the heavens. And the serpent rising is you. You're a sine wave of energy traveling up a being stalk, which according to the Hindu, that is a series of incarnations to different parallel universes. And each universe is ascending higher and higher to your heavenly state. And each incarnation getting more heavenly and heavenly. <sighs> Granted that your karma good. Now look, that means this snake is crawling out of one body, going into another body. But it's using the spinal cord of each of these bodies as a staircase. When this man dies, this snake ain't going to die. It's just going to crawl into another body. And then, you know, as it ascends over time through that witness, it'll keep going. This is a snake shedding its skin. They told this, the snake that's eating its own tail. Um, basically, think of the snake like a worm and an apple. And the worm got to eat its way through the top of the apple. But then it find out, wow, there's another apple and another apple. So they call this the eater or the ether. Symbolic of this serpent. Now let's talk about the spinal cord and the kundalini is what they're mimicking here with the CERN beam portal. This is what's going on. See, this is you. They're t always studying us and turning what they find into some technology. Now, let's talk about when you think about uh, walking a beam portal to the heavens and cheating death and uh, resurrection and all that through a beam portal, you think of Jesus Christ with the light in the heavens. Let's talk about it. Jesus Christ. We've seen this kind of artwork. Hold on. I'm, I'm typing and nothing was even coming. Hold on. Share the video, guys. So we got all of these images of Christ ascending to the heavens on a cross, right, with his hands open. And I'm going to make some sense out of this for y'all today. If you look at this kind of symbolism that they give us, and I've seen this throughout my life growing up in the church, the stairway to heaven, all this stuff. I never knew that it was realism. 
I never thought it was realism. Because if you look at this realism symbol and the same thing they telling you with Christ, right? That we want to climb the stairway, meet Christ in the heavens, boom, boom, boom. Now watch this. Look at here, same story being told. But watch what's going on here. How, what you see that the stairway is silver, right? That stairway is silver, right? They call it the silver lining. That's why the spaceship always is this silver color. But now check this out. When you look at this, that was a hero called a silver surfer. And he surfed the heavens on one of these silver uh, beam lines. And uh, when you think about a person on a rope, Get Like if I got to walk across a log to get from one part of the bridge to another. Then you're going to hold your arms out. You see this? Remember that ma'at means balance. It means balance. If you real fat and obese. It's going to be very hard for you to make it cross this law and balance all that weight going across this thing. And when you look at Jesus Christ ascending to the heavens through the silver line, through the sky opening, the sky vault, he has his arms open for flight, but for balance. Uh, uh, this is what I'm telling you guys. The symbolism is everything like the God shoe at the middle of our universe. There's a staircase and in order to walk upright it takes balance or you will fall this ain't your average staircase this is a move you know like escalators is moving this beam is moving so let me show you what i mean and and and, and we got a lot to talk about here's what we're talking about a, a spiral staircase but it's like escalator it's in motion as well because this beam, of course, it's, it's flowing. Now, think of walking on these logs and they spinning as well, like the barber pole, because of the water. You got to balance like this little girl doing. You got to balance like he's doing. And when you start to balance as you were saying and cross over, remember that the word Hebrew mean the people from the other side. What do we mean? The other side of the ethereal river of Stitz, the river of life in heaven. Let's talk about the people from the other side because when people, in, in the near future, we're going to cheat death and we will create another dimension in this realm. And that will be people traveling back and forth from each side. And that will be people from that side that's born on the other side. And when they come on our side, we will refer to them as aliens. Hey, these are people from the other side. Now, the word other is the word ether. Ether. All of these ethereal realms are going to be connected via technology in our time. So I want you to look at the symbolism. Let's talk about. As this, as the sky turns, there's a beam line in the middle point, and that's what they are, are mimicking with this, the North Pole. And we're all have that North Pole in us as well, micro, macro, as within, so without, because the pole at the center, like I told you, watch this, it's called refraction and reflection. All of us is our own cup of water, right? But there's one pole that we all share with the true north. Because if you start to stack these cups of water inside of each other, that straw will reflect and refract outward indefinitely. However many cups you put inside of each other with water in them, you will get another straw. So you can get a third straw. It'll be separated and staggered, broken off from the Lord thy God. See what I'm saying? He's been severed off. You see what I'm saying? We went over this symbol in part one and two. But let's think of this concept. 
this silver lining that's connecting all of us to the true north because all of us is fake north, meaning the ego body, the, the, the skewed version of God, a fallen angel or angle of light, which would be the refracted straw. That refracted straw that we see there is a false image of God and it's crooked, it's not in alignment and it has failed through reflection. It has projected itself away and broken off from the Lord thy God and broken itself. That's basically each and every last one of us. And when we get back in alignment, it's this basically, you know, getting that right angle to where this illusion is no longer created or removing the water from the cup. And when you remove the water from the uh, cups, this would be the opposite of the great flood. This, and then when the cups flood again, that's when we lose our mind and then we go into this divided state. We fall from Eden. We're no longer one with God. Then when the waters are sucked back in, then we unite with God again. Boom, you see that how this would be. Now, that's just a way you can look at this whole dispulsion from ether and this connection with the mothership. Now, What's happening in the case of the cup, the waters ain't being removed, they being stirred. And what will happen is once you create a hollow point in the middle of the cup, then it will connect all of the reflected and refracted straws as if there was no water in the cup. You get what I'm saying? Because the only way to get rid of that illusion is to move the water. But what if I told you to move the water without sucking it out the cup? This would be a genius way to do it. Osmosis. Stir it up. And that's when I know you're a genius. If I tell you, listen, the straw is refracting in the cup. And the only way to stop this refraction reflection is to remove the water. But you can't suck the water out the cup. What do you do? Stir it up. Just stir it up. And once you make this little dry space in the middle, at that little bitty point, the, the, that refraction won't exist. It'll be an alignment at that point. You see what I'm saying? And that's kind of, and this is what Moses represent, you know. And when Moses talking about connecting people with the other side, you know, he's going to connect them with the other side. Look at his hands, though. You see how he got his hands opened up? What is that showing us? The tightrope walking. And look at the lane that they're walking. Remember I showed you the dude on the line, the, the girl using the log to get across the river? This is balance. That's how you walk through this narrow path. Now watch this, y'all. What Moses did was stirred up the water and created a portal to the heavens from the earth. Now here is our earth down here. We're using CERN to stir up the heavens to recreate what's happening at the North Pole. If you look at our sky, that's what's already happening. But they want to mimic the sky. See, here go our world down here. And when we look up, there's different stars on different height levels and altitudes all the way up to the ones way back here in the distance. And uh, in the middle of all of them is this North Star Polaris. It doesn't move. It stays stationary in the same position, but it spins like the eye of a hurricane. The eye of a hurricane don't move from its position. But the way it moves, it just turns in a circle at this position. That's what Polaris is doing. And then it's, it's, it's everything else is sitting within the ethereal medium. This is what you got to realize. P stars are, are stirs, meaning if, if you got like coffee stir, if you, if you got to stir a big pot, guess what? You need more than one stick to stir it with. You need a couple of folks to help you stir it. Like think of this the same way. 
that uh, this jar that we're looking at is our whole earth terrarium. We're at the bottom, and there are little animals like a carousel suspended from this thing. Polaris is the opening in, in this watery medium. It's not really a star. It's the opening to another light source behind our whole sky because our whole sky is represented by the water inside of this jar, and the stars are represented by any floating Anything like the specks floating in there, that can be your wandering stars. And then you got fit stars. Those stars are literally drawn onto the glass. And they don't move. They just sitting on the glass as artwork. And you got real stars. This is what our sky is. But Polaris is a vortex in the middle. It's not. Each of these stars are like, just say, a bubble, right? All of these bubbles you see is like what the stars are. They're trapped air within a medium. So our night sky is darkness. And within that darkness, you got these bubbles of light all being projected from this huge portal of light called Polaris right here. Every bubble you see in this water is like a star in the night sky. It's a... uh. Dry space in a wet wetland, in a wet ocean. If you notice that the bubbles represent the same principles at the central vortex, which is no water. Uh, inside of every bubble is the same thing that's inside of the vortex at the middle. Air. Trapped. It's trapped in a cyclone. And the faster the cyclone, the lower the bubbles will descend and be trapped. Now, when you slow that thing down, they go to shooting on up to the top. So as the ether slows down and speeds up, the portal is opening and closing. It affects the rate of ascension and descension. And you can look at these bubbles, right, as the pineal gland inside of all of us. So our earth at the bottom and we're looking up and that go the whole heavens. That's, a, that's the way you look at that. So another way you could look at this cosmology, like I said, with Moses, he's just another form of the Egyptian god Shu that's in the middle of Nut with his hands up showing you uh, this same and we about to go deep with this. Hit the like and share button, guys. It's so much that I got to, you know, go into. Bear with me. So, uh, yeah. Hold on a minute. So where am I? Where am I? I want to show you. Let, let's skip around. I don't want to stay with this forever because I, I got a lot of stuff to go to. Let's just start going through some of these concepts and share the video. Here is more artwork of Moses splitting the sea. And I just want to show you that's nothing but your brain fission. This little split in the middle of your brain is called a fission. Now, you know what the word fission means? Brain fusion. It's the place in between your brain and in your brain where the two halves are fused together because they are separate pieces, but they are wired and fused together by what? Do you know what's in the middle? What, what is in that crack in your brain? Guess what, y'all? Your left and right hemisphere, your brain is fused together by the neural highways. I want you to think of this part of this left part of your brain as a city. And I want you to think of this right part of your brain as a city. And these cities are divided by an ocean. And the only thing that can connect them is a series of highways. This is what's going on in your brain. The, the left and right brain are connected by the neural 
highways. In other words, these highways are allowing the left and right brain to communicate with each other like that bridge system will allow those two separated cities to now communicate with each other. So one of these brains represent a whole nother uh, you in a whole nother parallel universe and the other one represents you in this universe. So the this left brain is 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 basically the part of you that's left behind in your past lifetime that you trying to evolve. And then this right brain is your future self, what you trying to become. And so your energy is shifting. And it's based on memory and, and, and it's all based on these neural connections. That's your whole experience. Uh, this is the great crossover. This is what Moses represent the technology, right? To get us uh, uh, into a state where we can be transportable through this great rift, right? So what I'm telling you is like, our earth is made like our brain. Matter of fact, let me let me pull something up for you real quick. We, if you were, really want to understand realism, we finna go deep into it. Hit the like and share. Let me open this up for y'all. So again, here is our cosmology right here. Since we talking realism. Everybody, let's hit the like and share button. Let's see if we can get the numbers up, y'all. Let's, let's do it real quick. Hold on. So check this out. The whole symbolism that we see in realism is dealing with the uterus. It's dealing with, I told you before, the spookism. This is from Mesoamerica where you got a man beaming up. And this ain't talking about UFOs. Today, they will show you this and try to turn it into UFOs. But that was a magic mushroom. Why was the mushroom magic? Because it was a gateway into the ethereal realms. Simple. Now, if you look at the spores of, and, and just to prove my point about how they turned the mushrooms into a UFO ship, because really we was going to these other worlds by taking mushrooms. They came and banned all our mushrooms and now they want us to go to other worlds with Neuralink. Man, I'd rather take the mushrooms. <laughs> now check that out. Don't you know that when you talk realism, ufology, going out of the body, leaving the earth, all of the symbolism associated with that is based on the mushroom? And the spores coming from the tip of the mushroom are like the light rays shining around the Pharaoh Aten. This is Jesus' crown of thorns, by the way, Christians. You know, Jesus said, I'm the light. Let's look at the way a lighthouse shine and look at the Last Supper. Jesus lived through all of his disciples, which mean each of those 12 disciples was just a projection of Christ. The lighthouse. I know this shit is blowing y'all mind. Think of it this way, Captain Planet, right? Each planeteer is holding some of Captain Planet's energy. And until they all release some, that portion of energy they got, they can't manifest the most high, which is Christ in the middle, just like Captain Planet. So this is why Christ chopped up his body and gave it to each disciple. The same reason Captain Planet chopped up his energy and gave it to each planeteer. That energy is called a chakra. Each of these rings is a chakra ball. And once all of the chakras align, you get Captain Planet just like that. Just like when they took all the pieces of the body of a saw and brought them back together and he resurrected. That'll be like the Last Supper in reverse. That'll be like all of these disciples taking Christ's body and giving it back to Christ. And so that Christ can resurrect in the middle of the table like Captain Planet. People, this concept is very old. Keep liking and sharing the video. 
Because if you think this is an important message, our goal is to get a thousand viewers with these series per show. When we going deep like this, we got to have goals and that's what we want to do. But just to go on into realism here, because I'm going to keep teaching regardless. All of the religions is based on realism. When you look at an observatory, which is, you know that the the the, the uh, most advanced observatory that they going by uh, is the Vatican thing. I think it's called a Lucifer. Let me see. So they said that the Vatican don't got a telescope called Lucifer. But uh, that's what they, they, the brief, it ain't called Lucifer. The acronym means Lucifer. But my whole thing is this, this uh, Lucy or Lucifer telescope or, or, or excuse me, my bad, observatory. Only thing I want to say is if you look at the observatory, and think of an Olmec helmet. Or if you look at this observatory and think of a Teflon, think of what I told you about the Teflon, right? Watch this. The Teflon is a cube on the forehead that on a spiritual level, it opens up to release Jack out the box. When we talk about Jack in the box, your pineal gland, when you say, man, that's jacked up, I'm screwed up. Yeah, let me show you some. You living in this world is being screwed because it's like a light bulb screwed into the socket. And when you when we when we were le see this little ball right here is really what we are. This what leaves the body upon death. And them having this box on their head. On an on a ethereal realm, that box is opening up and it's allowing uh, light, the, the, this man's soul to leave his body. That's, that's how you get the unicorn. He's a unicorn. You know the uh, symbol of, of, hold on, let me show you. You know how they got Jack popping up out the box? It comes from this. When you think of Christ on the cross, here's why Christ was on the cross. Christ is the light. He told you that. He's the God ball. And when he's ascending up out of the earth cube, this is what it looked like. When all of us open our doggone mind up, it looked like an observatory. You see what Moses showing you? How did the unicorn get to the other side of the rainbow? Because this is one of the folklores dealing with the unicorn. And it's similar, similar to the leprechaun. What is the dark side of the moon? What is the other side of the rainbow? It's literally the other side. It's, it's this whole transitional aspect of us navigating through the wall, as Pink Floyd say. But basically... Becoming a, 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 a species that's no longer bound by the ethers. That's what's happening on Earth. Now, some what's happening on Earth is, is some of us are having this awakening of traveling to the other sides. I had it myself, astral projection. We're, we're inheriting this ancient spiritual gift naturally. And then so, and they using everything to stop it too with pausing and, and all that. But they want everybody to rely on technology to do it. They can't stop the awakening. So what they could do is offer technology while destroying the natural things that would govern this natural awakening, like mushrooms. And and in and, and countries, some countries they use mushrooms as antidepressants, and the depression levels are the lowest in the world. Now think about that. We weren't taking antidepressants in Mesoamerica. They banned mushrooms, but it's natural. It's a doggone pizza topping. <laughs> a nigga, can, if I get caught with this pizza topping, I'm going to jail. See how that sounds? 
but I can get the synthetic stuff that's going to hurt my spiritual side and hurt my spirituality. Now watch this. Look what Moses is showing. All, when we wanted to observe the universe, we didn't do it in these big old doggone sky observatories. When we wanted to observe the universe, we went out of our body and, and literally went to the fucking heavens. Come on, bro. When our ancestors said, I want to study the stars, they went up there to do it. You just don't know how to get up there to study the stars. Let me share some with y'all. You know why it ain't no stars in space? Because space is fake. But guess what? Here go the crazy part. When you get to a certain height, it ain't no stars. You don't see the stars no more. The stars that we see from the ground are made to be seen from the ground. It's no different than me building a crop circle and you saying, well, while I can't see it from the ground, because it's a huge ass crop circle that's intended for you to look at it from the air down. And this is what the sky is. It's intended for you to look at it from the ground up. Which is why when you get so high in the heavens, it's hard to find a star. Because it's like you got to have this certain angle in order to even see a rainbow. And you can be seeing a rainbow one minute and turn a corner and because you at a certain angle, you don't see the rainbow no more. It's like it's unique to your perspective. Same with the, a lot of stuff in the heavens. So it's made to be viewed from a certain angle by design. Uh, but let's go deep into this concept. I don't want to, you know, waste too much time. This concept of Moses getting the people to the other side, What you got to think of a beam of light coming out this observatory. That's no different than this man Teflon open. When his Teflon open up, it looks like the open box. When this light ejects up out of the brain. And when they start creating, creating technology that would allow us to jack open. Remember, jack open in order for Jack to get out the box, he got the jacket open. If you look at Samson's body, he, he's resembling a jack. At Think of this kundalini energy in Samson's spine. And as it spirals, his arms pushes outward. And jack, just like a jack, it opens up these pillars. This how you get this why we call it a jack. Think about what's happening at the top of the crown. Jack, right, is a tool that we use. This is a little bitty tool that can lift up a big ass car. Jack is Atlas lifting up the world. The Egyptian scarab beetle lifting up the pineal gland. You get, you get what I'm saying? A drop a one if y'all get. There's a reason for, for all of these folklore and stuff. Atlas is a form of Samson. When we see Samson stretching his arms that break open the two pillars, he's opening up the sky canopy. This is what's going on. This is another form of Samson right here, the God Anu, which is the root word of Anunnaki, the ones that are able to traverse the ethers, these interdimensional beings. We're Anunnaki too, y'all. Don't let that scare you. Once we get this gift back, we will be just like the Anunnaki that we read about. Now, watch this. When we look at Samson, Samson was an Anunnaki. If you rearrange the word Samson, you get the word Mason. That G in the middle of the square and compass is the word God, and that is you and me. The world around us is the is 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 the prison we gotta break out of like a, a a a caterpillar in a cocoon. See, the thing about this butterfly here, 
the first time that it spreads its wings is when it's going to shatter its world, just like Samson. Just like Samson. See, when Samson decided to open his arms, he was able to break free. And, and see, ain't no looking back flight take place after that. The thing about it, you're asleep right now inside of an incubator and you're dreaming. But when you wake up from the dream and stretch, this whole world around you will be ripped away from your eyes like a veil. And those, you know how like when you wake up in the morning and you stretch, when we die, our soul awakens from a sleep. And when it gets up, it stretches. And uh, when it roars, the vibration opens up a portal in the heavens. And when it stretches, it realizes it got wings to fly through that portal. So our soul yawns and stretches, and that's the MGM line. Vibration can push the waters aside. Vi vibration is what can open up this ether. And so when, upon that, when our soul awakened from the simulation and it, uh, yet that yawning, not, no energy is wasted in the universe. The yawning soul becomes the vibration that's used to beam its portal up out of here. And the stretching souls becomes the, the, the most high letting you remember that you can fly. You got wings. The butterfly don't got to learn how to fly. It comes right up out of there for the first time knowing how to fly. You know why? Because in its sleep, it's already a butterfly. That's what I'm telling. That, that caterpillar ain't wasting time while it's sleeping. It's running a simulation in a dream world of already being a butterfly. So when it break out the cocoon, no, nobody got to teach it how to fly. It learned how to fly in its sleep. The baby don't have to learn how to reach for the nipple. The baby don't have to uh, learn how to be a baby. For that nine months when the baby is asleep, it already ran a simulation of, of, of its walking on the ground, it, the picture what mama looked like. It, it ain't wasting time in that sleep. It's, it's projecting itself into the world that it perceives around him through sound, vibration, all that, and picturing itself moving around in that world. And that's by design. So that it's already get acquainted to what the world it's about to be born in before it's born in it. So there are certain things that babies just know. No one got to teach it, just like this butterfly, just like Samson. So when those baby birds start spreading their wings in that nest, they realize it just ain't enough room in here for us no more. So by the time those birds go to spread their wings in that nest and they getting bigger and bigger, wings getting longer, they realize I got to lead a nest. That's what's happening. Uh, when you think of the, I want everybody to like and share the video here. We talking about realism and ascension. We t l listen, when you look at this, this is called a chrysalis. This is the same story of Christ. Resurrection. And they told this in the Neo movie, The Matrix. This tree of life represents your spinal cord leading up to your brain splitting. And the way out of this world is through the crease or the Christ. Christ is the way, the truth, the light, as they call it. The crease is the Christ. The salvation is Christ. Before we said salvation was Christ, we said salvation was Christ, Christos. They changing it to throw you off. Christ represents Christ, a Christ. You see here? He represents a slit, a split. 
that leads to liberation up out of Sheol, up out of this underworld. So Jonah, the same thing. And this is what the Raelian people are trying to reverse engineer with technology. But they got to have this worldwide alien scare for us to fall for it. Everything got to be them creating a problem so that this can be the solution. When they tell you aliens are taking over the earth and shooting at us, boom, 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 ain't nothing we can do and everything falling apart. The only way is to lead the earth. And now the mind uploading. Boom, we cross over, we go to the other side. The Hebrews were the people from the other side. The Hebrews were the people from the other side. And when you talk about the other side, you can people can say that's the other side of the Mississippi River. That's the other side of the Pacific Ocean. That's the other side of my grandma house. No, that's the other side of my behind. That's the other side of my backyard. Everybody want to tell you what the other side is, but it don't specify. It just say people from the other side. And guess what? That leads you to the believe only one thing that this other because during that time, those ancient Christians was talking about communicating with the dead and talking to demons and summoning demons and angels to talk to. How was they doing it with technology like what we're about to use today to, to, to do the same thing? Alexa technology that can communicate with these layer different layers of our reality the more advanced technology get, gets the more our technology will be able to permeate and pierce through these different dimensions of our makeup of our reality the spirit realm is one of those dimensions and what i'm telling you is that religion have already created the technology to meet us in the spiritual realm. The spiritual realm is what we're calling the astral realm. That's what in the Bible talk about a war in the heavens. That's playing out on the earth right now in the form of the information war. Words. Words represent the war in the heavens. These debates we have in science and technology uh, different rights, political debates. That's the, that's the stars and astrology playing out the value systems showing who we really are and what we stand for. But that's going on in the heavens, but it's playing out through us on earth, and that's going to lead to us humans doing everything on a physical realm that already happened on a spiritual. But once they know that, they can start rewriting our actions. They can start rewriting our interpretation of the stars above, which will di dictate our actions below because we still subconsciously are governed by the heavens and we still know that things like astrology are real. Now, when we look at the human brain, we are looking at Atlas holding up the world. Let me see if I can pull him back up for you. Look at your brain. What is this brain holding up? It's holding up this heavy ass ball, but in that ball is your whole world. That's what you're not getting. There is no world around you. You're projecting. This is like a dream and happening inside of you. See, you know, like a teacher have a projected machine. And where the light is aimed at is where the movie will be projected at. Hold on. Now, if there's no place for that light to land, we won't see no movie. There have to be a landing point. I got news for you. You see the ground that you walking on right now? It's called land for a reason. I'm going to say this one more time. Polaris is in the middle of our circle. It's projecting our whole reality downward. And as it projects downward, it makes a triangle. This is the eye with the triangle below it. That's our universe. But this is what it really looked like. 
It's a machine, bro. Polaris or the all-seeing eye that can see everything is because it's projecting everything. The one-eyed Cyclops God is a projecting machine. It's projecting our whole simulation, but it needs a landing point. Guess where the landing point is? In the back of your brain. This is where our whole reality is taking place at. This whole movie that you think is happening around you, bro, it is really happening right here. So let me explain something to you real quick and let you grasp and digest that for a minute. Once we understand that our universe has been, and this is something that the ancestors been understood that our universe was projected and it was a projection of light. Now look at Atlas here. Look at Atlas and let's go back to that brain again. Let's make these connections and we'll move on. We want to make them with the symbols. We want them locked inside of our third eye. Our third eye learns from symbolism. And our second eye, first eye, learn from the words and all that stuff. We, we, we teach in every aspect of ourselves. Anybody leaving the symbols out, they're a slick-talking motherfucker who don't want to show and prove. And then boy, are these doggone city slickers good at that. Now let's go ahead and show you Atlas holding up the world. Because they try to laugh you. Oh, that's pseudo, pseudo. Everybody like to use the word pseudo, right? And that's just their way of saying you thinking for yourself. What you saying ain't come from nobody. It's resonating with an awakening within you, so it's pseudo. But check this out. I didn't, I didn't create Atlas. They don't say Atlas is pseudo because the Greeks marvel at their deities and stuff like that. And we finna go into some deep stuff, y'all. Now look at Atlas holding up the world. Why is Atlas holding up the whole world in his hand? Why you think they sang that song? Who's holding up? See the brain stalk right here holding up the brain? That's Atlas, man. This was... This was the ancestors' way of teaching science. Atlas represent your brain stalk holding up the pineal gland. You see Atlas from a side view right here. Now, if I flip this brain around to a front view like this, and you imagine this whole that a whole world is inside of this little ball. That's why he's holding up the whole world. Why do you think the stars and all of that is inside of that? Because our whole reality is being projected from the inside out. The body is a stand that is allowing a crystal ball to project the simulation around it. Around it. I hope that don't confuse you what I'm saying. It goes back to what I was showing you earlier about the crystal ball. Holding up the world in your hand. This is another form of Atlas. Atlas. All right. All of this is the same concept. That our entire universe is inside of our mind. This is the entire world right here. And once it started projecting outward it recreates another you in the outer world and, and that other you is your body and it's housing this inner world that we all create in heaven back here which is the original projection point for this whole uh simulation now if you don't get everything i'm saying now you will don't worry you're getting it in you and over time it always trust me i know how the mind works now chest this y'all as this thing open up, it's like the Teflon open up so that the mind can project out of the body. This whole observatory is what the body is. But the body will, will fail to 
observe its reality if the mind is closed, if the brain is closed. You are the observatory. You are the observer. So why don't we, why aren't we taking in the world around us and understanding it? Because we're not using the most precious gift we possess, and that's our mind. We rather use a machine over here that mimics your mind and your brain. I told you, people can look through this thing at the stars all day while destroying the earth and fell into understanding reality. But until they go to the heavens, they will not have a relationship with the most high. And I've been to the other side. I've lucid dream. I've astral projected. I'm acquainted with the other me on the other side. And if till you do it, you'll laugh like everybody else. We're the true alien abductees, the ones who astral project, the ones lucid dreaming. We come back and we tell you, yo, I was, I, I was out of my body. I was in another world. And it was, enough, it was another, yeah, and you say you crazy, just like you tell the alien abductees. But the sad thing is they telling the alien abduction people that their story is more believable than the people who said that they had an out-of-body experience on their own. Even the government, and I'm about to pull up articles about the Vatican and the government right now. They let these nutcases go out there and say, I was abducted. Salutes to young Pharaoh. I know it's a lot of people's got the alien abduction story being operated on. To me, it's corrupting the truth because the real out of body experience is what alienism or alienism is hiding. Behind abduction crap and rapture talk. Now, Check this out, y'all, because there's a lot we got to talk about, and we just getting started, man. Here is what, what we call the uh, drop box symbol. Remember that this open box looks like a diamond. Look at it, man. You see the diamond with the ball of light in the middle? That's an eye, man. That's an eye. That's a eye. That's no different than this image right here, son. Check it out now. If you turn this thing 90 degrees to the left or right, you will see it is a diamond. Have you ever saw Jay-Z do the one eye? What is that diamond with the eye in it? Here it is. You see the diamond, a reptilian eye, the third eye representing the crease. There was a god called Vulcan. And the fire coming out the volcano represent the the fire at the top of the volcano is the all seeing eye. The volcano is the pyramid that's missing a capstone. That's Vulcan. So when the fire shoots out the volcano, that's like Jonah shooting out the whale. It's your consciousness being beamed off of the earth, which is why I'm showing you the astronaut helmet. It's just a sperm cell, and even when you open it up to show a rival, you get this third eye symbolism. It's a Pokemon ball allowing the soul to release. Look at this. You can see the eye right there. This the God they worship. You see, this sacred geometry is all over the place, man. It's all over the world. And when you talk about unfolding a cube, which is what, uh, Islam and Christ is all about cracking the Rubik's cube to free the soul from the labyrinth, right? Let's let's go into it. Y'all think that the cross and the cube are two different symbols, and you don't understand why Christianity and Islam is the same religion. Judaism, Christianity, Islam, Abrahamic faith, it's the same religion. The cross is nothing but the six-pointed star, the tetrahedron. The tetrahedron ain't nothing but an open box, family. Think of an open box right here. It's going to look like a star or a plus sign. And the light that's coming from it, the center of this star, is the true soul leaving the fucking matrix. See, let me show you something. The star ain't nothing but an opening in the sky. You see this Enoch artwork? 
Let me show you where the star is. Here go a star right here. See, the light that you see twinkling from the star ain't got nana. You got to ask yourself, how is that light reaching you through the darkness? Because the star is actually a tear in the ether or a bubble in the ocean. Think of a, what is a bubble in the ocean? It's a rip in the ocean. It's a tear in it. Because if the ocean is all water, something break in that water, and that's called a bubble. All of the water stop there and form around this hollow opening called a bubble, just like these magnetic ley lines of light. All of the light that is creating our holographic simulation is bleeding in from our earth from Polaris, the source light. And it's it, it in the pattern that it make. Think of a hose pipe. Think of a fireman hose that you aim at the ground and the water pattern. Let me see if I can show this. I don't know if I can show this. But if you spray a hose pipe at the ground and let the water splash, right? It will make this same pattern. Let me see if I can find it because that's hard to, to, to show. Here it is. I found it. So our universe is like a triangle of light. When you talk about the all-seeing eye above the pyramid, the all-seeing eye is the source of all the light. That would be the hose pipe. That's the North Pole. And all the light pouring out of that is what we make our simulation with. See, let me show you how they showed this in Egypt. This is what they showed in Egypt. That our whole reality is being projected. Remember, I just showed you the projected machine. And the projected machine makes what? A triangle from the source. And, when, and, and that triangle leads back to the source of light. And that's why the pyramid can never be capped. Let me show you something. This pyramid will always be missing a capstone. You know why? Because the heaven gates are open. Once I cap this thing, it won't be a pyramid no more. You get it? Do you get it? The uncapped pyramid, y'all, you can't cap it because it'll, it'll destroy the pyramid. It's capped by this source. How do, why, why, why don't you cap a volcano? Because that thing on erupt. The volcano is capped by the fire that comes out the top of it. That means that is not capped. And that the most highest point of this volcano is basically the point that's projecting everything downward, which would be the hose pipe in this case. So once we look at this pattern that the hose pipe is making, now think about not only this though, but think if you, if you, if you hold this up against a wall, it'll make this pattern. If you take a high pressure hose pipe and just spray it up against a wall, it'll make this pattern. And the reason I'm bringing that pattern up is because that's all flat earth is about. Flat earth is a earth that it's projecting itself from a central point outward. All of these magnetic ley lines that you see are leading to a hole in the middle of our earth. And that hole is what's projecting every, our whole existence, the light of our re reality, the light of creation. So at this middle point of this, you have this beam line. And once it make contact with the ground, boom, all of the water breaks, ready, break. Just like you see in this window glass, a break. 
See, and all other energy breaks away from the point of impact in, you, in a perfect spider web pattern. Ain't nothing random in nature. The, the secret to everything is Big Bangism. You see this mushroom? The reason that you can connect with the other side with these mushrooms, because they are literally individual breaks in the ether. And the spores that we see are leading to the most high point at the tip of that mushroom what broke the spores outward, which is why I showed you Jesus earlier breaking up the bread, spreading it at the last supper table. He got to break the bread and spread it at that table. And they're basically teaching what I'm teaching you here. All right, so hold on a minute. I just had that image and now I can't see my, let me bring that back up. See, actually you could picture it in your head, the last supper table. Jesus is breaking the bread at the middle of the table and spreading it around the table to all his disciples. See, Jesus is decreased. Y'all don't realize that. Jesus' last name ain't Christ. Jesus don't have a last name. Jesus' title is the Christ. And that's an ancient way of saying the crease. Jesus, the crease. Jesus is representing the crease point that leads out of the earth or the bean portal in the middle of our earth. You see it? Think of a straw. A straw is a crease. That's, it's a lane, a tube, a alleyway, a cut, right? So Jesus is personifying the crease. Jesus, the crease or the Christ. And the God Shua, Shu is personifying the crease in the middle of the universe, Nut and Gab and Shu. Shoe represent the North Pole, the crease, that cut that leads out of here. That what I just showed you. Moses is showing. This is what it represents. This is what Christ represents. A hole in the middle of our universe that leads out of the thing. That's why he said, I'm the way to heaven. Because he's the highest point. And what is the highest point on this picture? The hose pipe. And what is the hose pipe? A crease, a tube. So this pipe would be personifying Christ, the crease. And he said, I will pour my spirit over the earth, over all man. And then when it's talking about pouring out the spirit of God over the earth, the light of creation, which is allowing for the simulation to exist from the top down. One of the biggest mysteries in the conscious community is how can a pyramid be created from a top down? And I've already answered this question. Think of an hourglass with sand in it. This is how a pyramid can be created from the top down if you start to think about a pile. This is how a pyramid is created from the top down. And that is the symbol. Let me show you something. When you, whenever you see a pyramid with a beam of light attached to it, remember, y'all, that the uh, they want you to think that that beam of light is coming out of the pyramid when it's the other way around. That beam of light is literally creating the pyramid from the top down just like this hourglass. You see? And when you talk about a pyramid being created from the top down, boom, you're talking about projection. Think of this hose pipe. Think of that movie projector machine. 
That's how you create a pyramid from the top down. And the pyramid that's created from the top down is projecting all of us into creation, which is why the Pharaoh is showing you this. So the pyramid created from the top down. Let me stay on that for a minute. Because that's one of the biggest mysteries, right? Man, the pyramids was created from the top down. I wonder how they did it. No, they're not talking about the physical pyramids. They are talking about the ethereal realms. These are the pyramids that were created from the top down. The pyramid that's created from the top down cannot have a capstone because the source that's creating it is creating it from the top down and that's where its capstone would be. So that, it, that capstone is replaced by a symbol for God. And the reason that this pyramid will never have a capstone is I, I can't do nothing but show you these images right here, man. If the pyramid being created from the top down, what's turning it into a pile of sand or a pyramid is the beam line coming from the top down. I, I, I mean, that's capping it. So this pyramid will never receive a capstone. It'll just expand and get bigger and bigger based on a pouring in of sand. And that's called the expanding universe. That's why the Tower of Babel get bigger and bigger. This pyramid will get bigger and bigger and taller and taller the more sand we pour down on it. But it'll never have a capstone. Now, don't that sound like the Tower of Babel? Yeah, let's pull it up. Same concept. Let me show you another way you can look at it from around the world. The cup that overfloweth forever and ever, the Holy Grail. That's what we're looking at. Here go the Tower of Babel being uh, tore down. They told this story of the tower being knocked down by God. Look at here. God ain't knocked no tower down. God the one creating the tower. They told you a lie. And let me show you how crazy it is. You know the symbol for peace, right? Watch this. Peace is really when we find peace is when we learn this knowledge that I'm giving you how to get out the body. This beam line is leading to the heavens, but this pyramid represents the simulation. That's the great fall from the heavens. That's the great fall. All of that sand, that's the great fall and everybody playing a role in building this hell down here. But let me show you some ascension back to the top. Beaming back up is the goal. So you look at this peace symbol, peace represents a chamber. A peace is a cut. It's a lane. It's a tube. If I say I cut a piece out of it, or I left a hole in it, peace is Christ, crease. Christ was standing on top of a mountain because Christ represent this beam of light. He said, I'm the light. The reason Christ standing on top of the mountain, because he's the source that created the mountain. Remember, this hose pipe is the one standing on top of that water mountain. That line of sand is the one mounted at the top. Christ is this beam line of light on top of the mountain. Of surrounding him are the two thieves, the sun and moon, that's trying to rock, pull him to one side to get him to fall down because he's tight roping. I showed you that earlier. This is why Christ got his arms out, balanced like Ma'at. When we make it to this center point in the heavens, if you don't want to fall, you got to have balance. You already did this before and you fail. You fail. And that's how you ended up in this universe. In between these lifetimes, this is what we're doing. 
And I can show you images all over the world that show you this, that when you leave this earth and you make it to the highest point, that point is, is so thin, just like the tip of a pyramid, it's hard for you to balance up there unless you Christ, unless you become, strip away the dead weight, get rid of all the bullshit, and then you can move further in this walk. Because this is what we're doing on the ethereal realm. And this is why, see, they trying to pull you to the left and the right. That's the two thieves. If your energy ain't being put to one side, then just like my eye, you got balance, ain't no scale tilted, and you, you can make it across. But if you fall down, you got to climb all the way back up and start where you left off at, and that's what we doing now. We got to climb back up this stairway of heaven and continue our journey. And what does that look like? A shooting star. When you on this thing, this the beam line. When Christ ascended to the sky, this is the Christ is representative of this tethering line as your whole soul is going to be your soul is, is, is light. Right. But when your soul leaves this earth, it's going to leave it in a laser beam form. Nature going to compress your soul. That's why I'm showing you Christ in the form of this laser beam this little line when they said neo is the one neo was the christ but when they talking about the one they talking about the laser beam the one was mounted on top of cavern even in the matrix the one neo he was on that babel tower see so christ is the one or neo and 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 when you think about that is represent like Christ said, I'm the light. But as Christ leave the pyramid, which is the earth simulation, he leaves it through a projection uh, point at the middle of the earth. There's this sort of like an elevator system. And one and 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 depending on what we've done on the earth, the turn determine on how balanced and how straight and how upright we project when we leave. So, Christ, all of the light in your body is going to burst out of this earth, but it's going to form a single line and leave here like Christ in a beam. You're, all of what you are will be compressed in a beam of light, just like Makakaku showed you. That's what they reverse engineering. And what this looks like, what? It looked like Jonah getting spit up out of a whale's mouth. Look at it. Oh, my God. All I'm doing is showing you how all of this symbolism got turned into realism and all that. Yeah, when we see Jonah getting spit up out that whale's mouth, you can see the whale's mouth right there. Y'all see the whale's mouth? That's the peace symbol. This the mouth, mouth of the whale that's spitting Jonah out, which is this beam of light. That's like an observatory opening up its things apart, splitting the waters like Moses, letting the people cross to the other side. And they said, so they called it people from the other side, the Hebrews. See, let me tell you what happened. Just like we doing today, we're going to cheat death. And people that die can come back and forth from our side back to the realm of the dead. And we can do it too. So at that point, death won't exist because it'll just be a gateway that we using for traveling dimensions, what dimensions. And that's what it always was. So. Long time ago, they opened this portal up and they allowed the dead to walk the earth and the living to explore the realm of the dead. Souls started getting mixed up in these realms. Soul harvesting and pirating became prevalent. And basically what happened was, like with the pharaohs trying to cheat death be gods, um, they found a way to close the portal. And then 
what's happening now is that port the, that you can only keep it closed for so long, just like all dams got an expiration date. Every dam in the world got a break one day. So this dam that was built, this ethereal dam that has trapped souls in this place for the past couple hundred years, it's opening up now. It's, 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 it's been breached. And the light from the other side is shining into this realm. And, and, the, and that's going to start an awakening here, a, a regaining of memory of what happened. And that's what's happening right now. So, but the thing about it is, it'll be like, just, just think about this. When we open up this portal in about 2050 and cheat death and dead people can walk in this dimension and we can go into the metaverse, into the dead people's dimension. Think about what, what's going to happen when that shit fail and that system gets shut down, some people are going to get stuck on the other side. We're going to open up a portal. And some of the people that die are going to be able to cross back over into the realm of the living. And some of the people that's living are going to be able to go and explore the realm of the dead. That's what we're going to do in the near future. But how long would a portal stay open? Because my research shows this happened before. And the portal closed and souls got trapped on, on each side. And that was by design. So we got some people on this earth walking among us that are really dead. Meaning they are just dead spirits that cross over into this realm. When we open up the portal, you get what I'm saying? They had already died before. But since we cheated death in the past, those old spirits was able to cross back over like I was saying. We already did this before. But when the portal closed, when the portal closed in the past, a lot of those spirits from the dead got trapped in the realm of the living. And a lot of the spirits from the realm of the living got trapped in the realm of the dead. It'll be like if you travel into goddamn China and next thing you know a war break out with China, you trapped over there. Ain't gonna be no more travel allowed from like China depending on how the war is. This has happened before. When they closed the passports, closed the shit off and some people that's traveling, they get trapped over there for a minute. Same thing on a spiritual level. We wanna move on. Please like and share the video. And don't forget to subscribe and hit the notification bell. Be sure to select all so that you can receive notifications every time we go live and upload to the channel. At some point on this earth, y'all, and I'm gonna show you something about this symbol. If you look at the priest hat, and I'm about to load you up and show you something. If you look at the symbol right there, it's the same as this one. The, the whale is the world. Jonah and the whale, genie in the world. You're a genie inside of a world. <coughs> they turned that into Jonah inside of a whale. They plan with y'all. I'm telling you now, all of this symbolism is going to free you. Look at this. This is ancient Hindu. This is what the Hindu said happens at the North Pole. They said souls ascend this tower to the heavens. Would, would you look at that? Don't that look like a whale? Tell me that we, we don't get this same thing about Christ with his arms open on Mount Calvary. Even when you go to SeaWorld. See, when you go to Sea World, the symbolism is telling you, man, hey, look at your world. See the motherfucking world. <laughs> I'm just bullshitting. Back on track, though. See, when Jonah leave that well, that caterpillar breaking out of that cocoon, the, that, that whale's mouth 
is open only a little bit. So for you to break out of here, you got to get light, empty your bag, and be able to squeeze through. So this is all dealing with cosmology of leaving the earth. And then it got turned into some Raelianism and some UFO ships and, and harvesting our souls to these archons, you know. And even, you know, so let's, let's just go through a little bit more symbolism with this. Everybody hit the like and share button. So again, the peace symbol, we can see, right, Christ leaving the pyramid, right? Same thing right here. As a beam of light. Same thing. That beam of light that's spitting up out the is splitting our world. When Samson is in between the two pillars, he's in the middle of this tube right here, and he's stepping up to this higher heaven to another platform. That's why when you pull up Samson and the two pillars, he's on a high platform. He ain't on an earth realm with all them other people. He stepped up to another realm through, the old, through that portal, breaking out of it like the light you see. But now let's read a little bit about realism and its leaders and go into how in the occult some more stuff of how they, uh, you know, dumb us down. And we can start closing this little screen share up. And go to some uh, reading now. Reading in our articles and shit. So again, Christianity, Judaism, Islam, all of that is right here in the Saturn cult. I'm going to be doing future streams exposing the Moors. I'm going to be exposing Noble Drew Ali. I'm going to be exposing the Circle 7 groups and the 5 percenters and all that. Ain't nobody going to get no motherfucking pass, nigga. I'm going to whip your behind. I'm going to whip y'all niggas behind practicing some shit you don't understand. And it goes against your people. And I'm going to expose it too. Now check this out, y'all. This is what, this represents the crown chakra. We went over this in the last one. How the reason that they got them wings up there on his head. Let, let me go to this real quick. I've, uh fucked around and opened up so much stuff I done messed my slide order up but there's no biggie hold on okay so this is what we want to deal with cause the beam line that they reverse engineering we already went over it is right here within us now, let me show you how this thing work. Remember what I showed you about the hose pipe? Now, let's go back to the CERN beam so we can tie all this together and move to the next part because I'm still got a lot of most stuff about realism and Aleister Crowley and the leaders and all them. Remember that, that beam that I showed you from CERN, what they reverse engineering the silver beam? This isn't you. Now, when that, when, that, when that laser beam gets outside of you, then the light start to expand again, like this hose pipe. Imagine all the water ascending up the tube of this pipe, right? And when the water get to the end of the tube, it start to expand. That's what's happening right here with you. Look. When they talk about the Kundalini rising, let me show you. It's like the water rising inside of that hose pipe tube. You see here? And it'll spray up out your head like a triangle. See, when the Kundalini rises, that's like the water rising up the tube with this hose pipe. Then when it gets out of the tube, it now expands, it spreads its wings and fly, becomes a bird. What is that expansion? It, it starts to project another world above the head. That's called dreaming. 
It's the upside down, the, uh, the up and the down. Let me show you what's going on. Where my, my movie projector machine at? That triangle that you see busting up out of the head, that's, that's you now. You done left your body, and now you projecting another reality. You project it into another reality. And now what's in that box right there is a whole nother universe called a dream. You just went to a parallel universe. Now, when it's time for you to wake up from your dream, the third eye will collapse this whole box, suck it in like a beam, and spit it back out, back down this other side, this root chakra down here. And it'll lunch back out, it'll spread back out again. And it'll recreate you back in this world again, or the base world, the root world. Down here, it'll spread out down here at the root chakra. And you'll be like, yo, I was in this other world. Yeah, all of that root chakra energy that's coming out of you at the bottom, just like the water coming out this hose pipe. That energy gets sucked up through a tube, and it beams itself up and above you, and it spreads back out again. And when it spreads back out again, it just is launching a whole nother simulation. And it keep doing that to, to travel these parallel universes. It collapses one world, and it implodes one world, and explodes the other one simultaneously. Like waking up from a dream or falling asleep into a dream. And this is what's called a third eye. When it blinks, and opens up again, it'll be a new movie on the screen. But what they talking about our awakening, we're about to really move into a whole nother universe that's finna fade into our reality. And a lot of people ain't gonna notice it. Cause what's happening is the collective consciousness of humanity is ascending at this time, just like the water ascending on this hose pipe. And that represent our journey with technology and terraforming our earth. And the other side of that wormhole would be a whole nother world. What is it called? A metaverse that man has made. As man traveled through this time line or this tube, on the other side of this wormhole, this false illusion of time in a line or a tube, was man discovering that time really don't exist. And when he do that, he become a time traveler, not bound to time, but now an infinite being multidimensional on the other side right here. So man now start to project his own universe and in it, he's infinite. That's what they're getting us prepared for right now, immortality. But in this new universe made by atom or meta, meta, atom, this, this God, this ancient soul, these ancient cabal of spirits that's been using this glitch for their benefit to harvest souls for eons. They have now found the way to create a simulation that can stand the test of time, if you will. So think of an infinity dam. Think of a dam that can never break. And but they telling you this is a body that can never age it's to throw you off, right? Because what's happening is your soul is like water trying to flow, but it's trapped in the body. And the only way is to break out of the body. Now, we call that death or out of body experience in, in, in it's a lot of religious, spiritual, spiritual systems, all of that. And in birth, we say the water broke. And it's this whole significance of waters breaking upon arrival for that reason. So the thing is, you do have a soul that's inside of the body. And it have to break through the body. So that's why in all the religions, they say that the body was damnation. The body was sin. The body was unholy and filthy. Because they looked at the body like a dam, something that was trapped in the soul and into lust. Like all of that stuff your body want, money, cars, women. Your spirit don't really want that. That don't really benefit your soul at all. That's just the pleasures of your body. 
So that's how you created religion based upon people saying, well, the body is like a prison cell for the soul. And the early Christians were saying in order to break out the body is to starve it. Meaning don't go hungry, eat food, but all of your vices and lusts, the evil shit like the pleasures that we want, we don't do that. That kills the, the part of our soul that can only manifest its evil through a body. Because there's a part of us that exists that cannot do no evil. And the only way it can do evil is if it's born in an evil world through an evil avatar, a body. This is purgatory where souls can now manifest evil. The laws of uh, evil manifesting are applicable here. In the heavens, there can be no evil. Evil don't exist. Even though they told you about all that in religion, that ain't the way it work. So you have uh, dissension below you and ascension above you. But the thing, I want to compare this to what, what, what we are, right? And how reality is I'm doing the best I can trying to teach some advanced, very advanced stuff. So Christ wore a crown of thorns. Christ was personified as what? A rock. Now ask a Christian, why did they personify Christ as a rock and why did they call him the crease? Because the crease mean the hole or the opening. And the rock is what would have caused this opening, right? So Christ saying, I'm the light. Think of this as the Big Bang explosion. You see here. This is what your macabre is. Your macabre or your star body, or when we look at this image of realism, it's your portal back to the heavens. Everybody got their own portal. You can't use mine and I can't use yours. That's why when everybody die, they create their own white light in the heavens. The energy that you give off upon your death is the equivalent of the Big Bang and that's what opens up the sky vault for you, just like we see here with Enoch. Enoch had an out-of-body experience. You can create that energy without dying once you harness your kundalini. That's what yoga is about. And you can, you can, these folks got equipment where they, they know that it's the, it, like, think of a Buddhist monk, right? He leaving his body and he's projecting up to like these high heavens. They can detect that energy, man. When they say, hey, a star just exploded over here. Nah, man, a ascended guru. Like it's some beings on this earth, y'all, that's very skilled at ascension and projecting themselves out the body. And they so good at it that they know how to ascend to the highest of heavens and the lowest of hells, just like scuba diving. And these beings, think about it, we all giving off this energy when we break through the ether. When they saying, hey, a star just exploded here and there, man, that's, that are a, that's a war going on in the heavens of ascended masters who are fighting above your head. Now, when you rise up to the level that they own, you will be one of those energies that they talking about. You will be fighting this battle on a higher dimension. We're fallen angels, but we still fighting the same battle that's playing out in the heavens on a lower realm. Those gods that's fighting in the heavens, when they fall down to the earth realm, they end up niggas like me and you arguing about politics and shit. Arguing about is it flat or is it globe? The, the wise man on the earth that's having the intellectual technological arguments and shit like what we doing. And when you see that, it's basically veganism and natural science versus meat eating and technological-based vampirism science. It, and that's the same war going on in Olympia, but we the same gods that fail. We continue in it here in this realm. But there are higher realms with ascended masters that never fail, that still fighting a war on high. And we will rise up to fight even on those levels as well. 
when you read about the this same thing I'm saying in all of y'all religions, so why crucify me when I tell you the same thing but just give you the real science behind it and the original concept? <coughs> so why was Christ personified as a rock? Because that's how you create this pattern. Let me show you. This is why Christ was personified as a rock, because look at the artwork, fam. Christ wore a crown of thorns because he's the hole in the middle of this. Bro Christ represent a consciousness that broke into, the, broke into this realm. That's how all of us was born. Christ means crease or gap or hole, cut or break. And that's why he got the crown of thorns on because he represent this little hole. And, and they tell you Christ is the rock because the rock is what caused the ripple effect or the break. And that rock was casted down. And you get the same story with Satan because it's the Kundalini serpent. That serpent that was casted down was Serapis, Christ. He's a seraphim. He's a serpent god. And that all of us are serpent gods. That's what the Nagini, the genies are. The serpent, the kundalini in you. And here go the genie right here. You see the serpents? Now check it out. What is the genie representing? This right here, the Makaba. Your starship is your opening back to the heavens, and that's in your heart, man. That's in the heart. That's in the middle of the earth. You know why? Where is the break at? Where is the break? This opening connects all things at the heart, at the center, the North Pole, the center, the Santa. So, Everyone's heart, when it stopped, will beam their consciousness back through the portal that they came to this earth that you made. In order for you to be in this earth, your consciousness had to break its break a uh, uh it had to uh break a hole through the ether. What they call breaking these seven seals, or breaking the broken the seal, breaking the water. That play out as the mama water breaking in this realm. This I just showed you with Moses. This is what your, your blue six-pointed macabre ship is. Watch this. Our six-pointed style of human macabre. That blue six-pointed star. Look over here. What this is, y'all, this is a break. I know you think it's a star, but I'm showing you what stars are. They are openings to another dimension. Please like and share the video. And don't forget to subscribe and hit the notification bell. Be sure to select all so that you can receive notifications every time we go live and upload to the channel. So this is what stars are. So we see the genie here. We see Jesus similar and what's coming from the chest. Look at pop smoke. Now, the machine that's projecting Pop Smoke's hologram onto that stage, the source of light from that machine is in the middle of his chest right here. This is why I keep showing you Jesus. The way that your body, your flesh, or your flesh is projecting itself into this simulation right now is just the way we see Pop Smoke doing here. And again, you see the Pokemon ball. You see the Death Star. You see the soul trapped inside of a ball of light. And that is the prison, the Taurus field that you're in right now. We're all in it. You trying to break out of it. This is called a trick of Saturn. Now, if you look at this, what does it look like? The planet Saturn, right? 
when they say Saturn has your soul, it's because Saturn, Lucifer, is a, is a false light system that's recycling souls in a false world. Look at what Saturn is. Now, this planet don't really exist. Not the way they showing it here. Of course, Saturn is in the sky. We can show you the star. But this, what I'm showing you here, and I'm not saying, no, it don't look like that, but it's not 3D. It's not like exact. This is CGI. But what I'm trying to show you is that when they talk about Saturn harvesting souls, the symbol of Saturn is right here. You just got to open your eyes. You can see the planet Saturn has pop smoke soul. You can see the, the ball right here and the rings right here. And this is the whole Saturn trick for you to become a hologram. See what I'm saying? For you to be a Pokemon inside of that ball. But, that, but what's happening now, we breaking out of one old matrix that they already built. And they trying to break, make you a new matrix to go into. You can't fall for it this time. You fool me twice, then the trick, then I'm the fool at, at that point. Apparently, according to the Maya, we already failed for this trick one time. Guess when, you forgot. Let me show you some. They telling you that you were a sperm that went into an egg. Because they lying to you and don't want you to know that you were a fucking genie, a, a, a spirit, an advanced spirit that got captured and your memory was wiped out. They just like the Pokemon ball when they captured the spirit in a Pokemon ball. That happened to us. That's how we all get in here. But when you get here. They don't tell you that you were a ghost that was caught, Ghostbusters. You know how they catch the ghosts in a little black cube? They don't tell you that. They wipe the memory of, of, of the war that took place in the heavens, and they say, yeah, you a sperm that, that went in an egg. But really, this is what happened. You a soul that went inside of this doggone Pokemon ball, this Saturn trick. Energy can't be created, which means your birth was a fucking lie, Neil. Well, so what was your damn birth then? It was the it was when your soul landed inside of the box. You know, like Ghostbusters. Let me show you some. Cause that black cube that they worshiping, that's the damn Saturn cube. That's harvesting the soul. This right here. This what happened to us, but they told you you were a sperm went into an egg. Here's what happened to you. Just like Ghostbusters. They said a sperm went in the egg. No, the ghost fell into a CERN portal that they were stirring. The egg, let me show you what they, your mama egg, let me show you what they doing. When you look up a black hole in space, what do they give you? Saturn. Now, what did this represent? Watch this. People, this represent sperm being recycled in and out of a damn vortex. When they see all of that light that you see, that's sperm getting chewed up. That sperm getting chewed up, and when the sperm get chewed up in this crease this is where the simulation at with the firmament above you and the shield below you this is our earth right here in the saturn matrix so when you get spit out of this thing you're gonna become a line of light again 
but you hoping that you can break free from Saturn's matrix and that Saturn don't suck you up like a spaghetti noodle again. They teach the a lot of folks said, oh man, brother Sanchez speaking pseudo signs now. And a lot of people laughing at me, I know. But guess what? I'm going to laugh at you, bro, because I'm teaching what science teaching right now. That let me know you ain't, you ain't really in the science. What I just taught was called spaghettification. When the sperm go into the egg, I told you the astronaut is just a damn actor. He's just person carrying out a ritual of your childbirth. Oh, he's, he's, the, he's personifying the sperm cell. Connected with his tethering line, entering and exiting the mothership and going to the earth, earth realm. It's a ritual. They call it sex magic because it's based on sex. Sex is the magic that hide this from you. Because the way that they teach how you came to this earth, they said you were a sperm cell that, that won a fucking race to an egg. And that ain't what happened. It's so deeper than that. You are you are you are consciousness that your mom and daddy uh created a vortex, a opening, and they allow your consciousness to enter this realm through that opening. The way that this sperm will spiral into the the, the, the simulation. Once it arrives in the hospital to be born, it's going to be split just like the simulation. That's what I'm showing you. The path of the light shows you the Pokemon, but it's the secrets of it all. That's going to turn into the brain with the split in the middle. To remind you of the fall. See, the, the whole thing about this soul luring system that's luring our soul back in this trap, the only way it can trap you is to trick you, the trickster, Saturn. And if you could be tricked, that means you ain't ready to leave no way, no way. You still a baby. You ain't matured yet. You care about being laughed at. You care about saying it's flat. They going to laugh at you. you, you the awakening going to make you deny Christ or deny the crease to where you Christ said, I'm going to deny you too then. So you won't be able to access the Christ or the crease, which is the gateway out. Because in order to do that, it comes with spiritual alignment. And if they got you mocking everything about this alignment within yourself, then you will just keep on fooling around, clowning, laughing, and joking with the tricks, the, the laughing God that got everybody joking at the truth while he recycled them forever. So the thing about this system is, once the light enters the doggone matrix, on the other side, this whole symbol of light becomes the code of that reality. And what does that represent? Balance. Balance. 50-50. In other words, this is punishment. And we fell into here because something we already, and you know what I think it is? I think we mock this knowledge at some point and was recycled because you have your memory deleted of your past recyclings. But when we stop, when we accept this truth, it set us free, just like it say. Now check this out. The thing about it is, when the light falls into this matrix and become a human being, all of the symbols for it to set itself free is represented by the same matrix that locked it up. In other words, the symbol of balance becomes the symbol of Saturn. In, in other words, on an ethereal realm, if you're scared of, it, fear is what's going to cause us to reincarnate. And then guess what? They said you got to be balanced, man, like Ma'at. So if you look at this entire school that we in, it's, it look, it's, yes, it's Saturn. 
But you know what? I'm going to say something to take away the spookism. I love Saturn, and I love this simulation that we're in. And you might say, well, Brother Sanchez, why you say that? Because a lot of what I've been teaching you is making you get scared of, like, the simulation, Saturn. But that ain't it. Don't, you don't supposed to have no fear. And the reason I'm saying that is because Saturn is just a test. And it's te that when you say estrogen and testosterone, right, that's in every human. Once you balance your estrogen and testosterone levels, you awaken the kundalini. Estrogen is the word astro, dealing with the astro realm. Astrogen, the genie. The astro genie. The, the feminine energy is what allow us to lead a body, the feminine energy. The masculine energy is what puts us in the simulation. In the man's world, Man's world was literally created by ancient wise men. Now, once you get 50-50 with your energy levels, masculine, feminine, estrogen, testosterone, the testosterone is what? The test. The testosterone is the raw, the violent energy, but that's to test you. In other words, Mother Nature gave you a little bit of, of devil in you if you were a fallen angel. And if you were a rising demon, she gave you a little bit of angel in you. So the evil people in this world had to learn how to be good in order to even manifest up here because they, they are lowly spirits from the depths of hell. And they was on their own path of ascension, meaning they were being good to get... This is the highest they can go, though. You're a fallen angel. You can go higher than here. They can't. They can only drag you lower, and you can only pull them higher. This realm becomes a tug-of-war battle. A tug-of-war battle. And they told it as Vishnu having a tug-of-war game. And nobody really winning. Evil ruling sometime, good ruling sometime. Evil, sometime they pulling souls into hell, sometime they pulling them back up to heaven. And it's just endless war of just going on here. And it's war for the souls of man, pulling them into my realm or you pulling them in. Because this is a split realm. Look at what's happening. You can go, you can be pulled down into the underworld forever. Just like you can go on this path of ascension to heavenly experiences upward forever and because this is what we're looking at. Right here. Saturn with all the rings. Same thing, flat earth. And uh, But let's talk about this UFO concept because it was never a physical ship. It's an interdimensional ship, and any abductee would tell you when I entered the spaceship, it was out of my body. There is not one alien abductee saying that they was in a physical ship. And that's something y'all need to pay attention to because they, the foundation of realism is out-of-body experience. And, 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 and it was never about a physical ship, meaning rockets. It was, it was never about us going to space and rockets. The world was hijacked by Raelianists who wanted to get us fascinated with going to space just so they could say we're going to do it with mind beaming and human cloning. Because when you look up Raelianism, that's what it's about. Matter of fact, I can read it to you. I can read it to you. We already read it. Hold on. Let me let me go to. Realism holds that. Hold on. Re, let's read this. Because it goes into that they need cloning to make this happen. Why do Raelianism need cloning? Look. Raelianism is about cloning. In other words... 
when man finally achieved cloning on the earth, it's going to be because it was secretly funded by rallying and organizations. And this is a part of Abrahamic groups who want your soul. The devil wants your soul. They want your soul. Let's clean this board off a bit and let's go deeper with this thing. Hold on. Let's go deeper with it, man. Let me get the screen shares I'm going to need. Hold on a minute. Now, let's go to, because I was finna go deep with this. Why do they need cloning to travel space? Because if you're going to go out of your body, then you're going to need another body when you get to the other side. That's what dreaming is, astral projection as well. All right? Let's take some of this stuff off the screen we no longer need. It's confusing us. But again, look at the Fibonacci spiral here. That's what your Milky Way galaxy is. But it's not no galaxy in the middle of space. It's right here, man. It's right here. All of the stars in the sky are circuiting above Polaris. And they are ascending and descending just like a carousel. Let me show you something. They call it the clown collar. The clown collar is what these rings make. Because if you look at the carousel, yeah, they going in a circle, but they also going up and down, up and down. That creates a sine wave. Every animal making a sine wave. And when you go in a circle in a sine wave, Guess what you make? A clown collar pattern. The clown is the clone. And his shackles is around his neck. Because if you look at the human torus field, it's around our neck portion. This, this Fibonacci spiral, that's the clown collar. The reason it's around your neck it's because you're really in pol at Polaris and you projecting yourself outward into this earth and outward and downward into this underworld where we at. But your real true self is, is this middle star at the middle. That's your pineal gland. That's where you really at for real. You projecting your body down into this earth. But when in, in the middle of your brain is this star right here. And as your soul climb from the bottom of this earth up the spinal cord, your damn soul going to also be ascending to Polaris at the same time. Your body is synced to this system, in other words. So when we have an out-of-body experience going to the heavens, our soul is in a lower body that exists in this underworld. But as it climbs these heavens, it's because our true self is up here and it's pulling back in the consciousness from this realm, projecting it other, uh, uh, elsewhere. Now, the true self never left the center. It only projected itself outward and made an avatar in these other worlds to partake with everyone else. But in the middle is where you at, the true self. And you're wearing a doggone clown collar, see? And you're in a daze because your consciousness has been projected from the center and all of these light rays. And it's spinning around like that carousel, like that carousel ship. Remember the carousel? And that's how you get the clown collar pattern. So, you know, when you're dizzy, you see double and triple. And that's what's happening. We're creating this, this multiplicity when, when the soul fell asleep and went into a daze. The soul started to travel in a circle like a vortex. And then when it starts spinning, we all went into Tasmanian devil mode. And in our spinning, we started spinning days on earth. Think about what we, how we talk. 
We are spending our days out on this, in this realm, right? We're, the soul is literally days, and it got to spin it out. Meaning if I spend something, it just got to keep spinning till it settle out. And that'll be death. You will fall down, go in the ground, and fade away. Because the, the moment your body fading away, this illusion is fading away. The illusion of sin double. You was knocked out. You was a fallen angel who was knocked out of heaven. And when you was knocked out, you started seeing double inside of this multiverse, what we see here. This is hap what's happening to our soul on a spiritual level and how duality was created when we was kicked out. If I knock you out, you see double. And that's why you get these chakras layers, these different versions of you. There's only one you. But until you wake up, you see all of these different versions of yourself. Or the clones or clowns or clones. So the Raelianism is about stirring up, keeping that stirring going so that we can stay clowns forever or clones forever. And how you perpetuate that stirring is with Raelian technology. That is CERN technology. And I can show you that technology in ancient Christian artwork so you can see that ain't nothing new under the sun as well. When we say ain't nothing new under the sun, we saying ain't nothing new under the CERN. Hold on a minute. Here is Christ in front of the CERN. CERN is what's going to allow us to cheat death, resurrect, to become immortals, if you will. And if you look at CERN technology and you think of the Statue of Liberty, it's this blue statue with spikes, right? Now look at CERN. Their God was always a vault, a sky vault. Don't this look like a bank vault? Let me show you something. This is a vault that's going to lock souls away. You already trapped in one of them now, and I'm trying to free you. I know I sound crazy, but you think I would spend hours on here if I'm not? I'm giving you the reality according to ancient people. And yes, ancient people, yeah, this stuff may sound crazy, but man, it's science behind this. So look, in the Hebrew, they talked about the sky vault. And that th this vault that's allowing people to resurrect is what I'm showing you, Jesus Christ and Lazarus coming up out the tomb. The open tomb. It's the open vault. The MasterCard symbol. This is your MasterCard symbol rolling the, the, the wheel away. This is your, your MasterCard. Why? Because it's the, the master, the card is a slit, would allow him to skip through that little slit access in a card, card, a thin card, give you access because this crack in the middle of the brain. You see it? So this, this was your master card symbol with the two circles willing away. That's the Ouroboros, looking like the number eight in a horizontal way. MasterCard, Resurrection, a open vault, man. Look at the open vault. This is what the sun and moon is. One is the open vault and one is the door side. So this is an open vault. And what we got here is they're trying to recreate their own vault system. Their own so, so, you know how our earth is made because if you look at the vault right the sky resembles the ground because these doors are in alignment to each other that's the magnetic ley lines that you see on that vault i just showed you the crack on the glass is making the same pattern the spider web cern doing the same thing look at jesus right here remember jesus is aligned with the middle of the vault and he represents one, Neo, the laser beam. Check this out. Look at the mushroom, the beam stalk.
in the middle of the spores. This sacred geometry leads off of the earth, leads us out of the earth. What is Christ? Christ is coming back from the other side. Christ is entering this world and he's bringing Raelian technology to this world. He's telling the people in this world, you don't got to die no more. You can come into my kingdom. What is that? That is the scientific universe that you can upload your mind into. You now have world religion forming. Remember the root word of religion is rail. Because the rail is the beanstalk, the portal. A rail is a rod. All of these wise guys had a rod or a rail like the line of Judah to symbolize this beanstalk. They cheated death and then they started telling us regular humans because they are what separate us from these relians is they have cheated death with technology. And they enter in these different realms, introducing that same technology over time that we saw in ancient Egypt that allowed the pharaohs to be immortal or cheat death and be, you know, like they said, a Mayan with time travelers like these. And this is a, the secret of the earth. So, um, again, if you look at Jesus in the middle of this vault and then think about pop smoke again, trapped in the vault in and out of that vault. So look at the sacred geometry with pop smoke hologram trapped in the prison of light or this Taurus field. And all of these are spiky light rays bleeding out from the ball in the middle. This bright light in the middle, that's the machine that's projecting him out there. You get what I'm saying? They turned this to the Big Bang, man. Look, when you ask them what created the Big Bang, they won't tell you because they got to admit that it's, an, it's a divine, intelligent machine. Even the Raelian people say, the dude wrote a book called Intelligent Design because in the occult, they know they the only ones going to be reading that shit. They going to give you physics books, science books, and all that and get you fascinated with building tires and building windows and shit. And they going to be reading books about this shit that I'm telling you about right here, this, this deep shit. Now look at the Big Bang and look at this right here. Same pattern, same color light and all that, man. If you look at other images of the Big Bang, you will literally see that they showing you man is a damn projection of light. Each one of us. Look, look at this one. What do you think this mean right here? What do you think that mean? Huh? I'm going to show you what it mean. That don't let them give you all that mumbo jumbo. Watch this, y'all. See, a person said that they into science. They don't know what that picture mean. They don't know what I'm talking about when I pull this up. They don't know. They have no idea. If you ask a dude that said he's smart with science, right? Ask him, why do they got that man right there in this Big Bang picture? He ain't going to know what to tell you. Because Big Bang teaches that our universe is holographic. It's a simulation and it's a projection of light. But when, by the time it make it to you on TV, you don't get none of that. You don't know how to decipher this. Look at this. This is what the Big Bang telling you. A projection of light that's coming from a ripple effect. Do you see the ripple effect back here? What is that? That's a damn camera lens, dude. Watch this. Oh, my God. Watch this. You think I'm lying. Watch this. I ain't got to make this up. Watch this shit. When you look in a projection machine, guess what you get? The rings of Saturn, dude. Now we're looking in a projection machine. 
so you can see what's creating our universe. And so when you go back to the Big Bang and you see the man being projected onto the wall from the, from the projection lens, it should make sense to you now. I've been teaching you that the whole day. They worship a one-eyed God, a Cyclops God. And here is the God Cyclops or Saturn, who is the creator of the universe. He is the, uh, the light of the universe. Why? Because it's coming from, it's being spoken out of his mouth. When God said, let there be light, this is what it looked like out of his mouth being spoken. Because God is Saturn, this ripple effect deity. Speaking it into existence. So let's move on, man. Let's move on. Let's move on. Let's talk about Pop Smoke some more. Because, I mean, it's just so dope how I can go to this Pop Smoke technology. And, and by the way, look at the symbol that's on Alistair Crowley hat. What do you think that is, bro? That's an illuminated Merkaba. So when they talk about the Illuminati, guess who they're talking about? Not they self, they talking about us because them devils ain't got no motherfucking light. They trying to harness our light because they ain't got none. You're the damn Illuminati. But guess what they got you saying? The Illuminati conspiracy theory. But when you look into the shit, you will see there is a conspiracy and that you the base of the whole damn conspiracy. It's all about you, Truman Show. Here go Jim Carrey in his glass world, that genie in a jaw. You're a damn star in a jaw. Look at the symbol that these devils wearing. They master in the world with this, this, this symbolism. Then when I bring it to y'all, y'all laugh at it. Take it to them, they know what to do with it. This is what you're calling an atom today because these, th this thing is fluctuating like a Rubik's Cube. These two triangles just ain't stand still. They're turning, they're orbiting each one independently. And no matter which way they turn, they're going to always make a six-pointed star. Just like a Rubik's Cube. No matter which way you twist and turn a Rubik's Cube for alignment, it's going to be a cube. But the point is to get the colors aligned. And the same thing with this starship. It's twisting and turning the different, uh, it, it's turning, if you can imagine that this thing as like the two triangles just kind of like a Rubik's Cube turning within each other at a central axis. But no matter what angle that they turn, it maintains this macabre shape, which is amazing, you know? so. If you can picture that in your head. But this is what they're, you know, here we go. They got this on the Jewish, the Judaism, the Star of David. Why is everybody obsessed with the Star of David? They call it the Christ Star, the Star of the Christ of Bethlehem. Because that star is right here. It's the aura. It's the Christ. It's the, look at what the Christ Star is. It's the star that represents the Christ coming to earth. I just told you the hole in the middle of the glass. Look. When they, when they saw this hole break open in the heavens, they said, okay, Christ about to be born. And they do that to this day. Your, 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 your mama go to the hospital and they say, yep, you about to have a baby. Because they see this hole in the middle of her egg. Let me show you what they see. The egg don't have a hole in the middle. They don't see a break in the water. Let me show you some. Imagine a female egg. And I want to make this clear. Hold on. Imagine... All right, hold on. Hold on. 
And then I'm going to talk about this on another one, too, about the dude that's buying the female eggs in Africa. Show you what they're doing with it. Let me show you what's going on. Here's a female egg. And there's nothing at the middle of the egg. But when a woman thinks she's pregnant, she, the doctor go look at this egg, and what he's looking for is a light in the middle of the egg. When he see that light in the middle of that egg, he said, here go a soul descending from the heavens. The souls are dropping from Polaris, from the sky. But as they fall onto the earth, it, it, it looks like a sperm racing to an egg. When the sperm make it to the egg, that's how the genie get in the jar right here. Right here. Now, what they're looking for is this. Watch this. If you pull up a stargate, that's what the female egg is. They're looking for something to break those waters. That's conception. If uh, if someone is traveling and they and they like think of a car going down the highway with the headlights, all of these travelers got a headlight, and they traveling through the stargate. The moment they mount this uh uh the mount they mount the stairway. And the moment they start, to, they had a pair over that horizon line. The people from the other side of this Stargate can say, hey, somebody's coming. Like if, if somebody's coming through this hole and I can see them from a distance, a little ball of light and the light get bigger and bigger and brighter, brighter as they get toward me like this picture here. See, if you was on the other side of this Stargate, you will see a little bit of light because it's far away from you. Then as they get closer to you, that little light will get bigger and bigger, and then your side will get brighter and brighter. Then they'll pop out the water and say, hey, what's up, man? And we'll say, we saw you coming. And we'll say, how you saw that? The same way the doctor saw the baby coming. It started off a little bit of dot. And it got bigger and bigger until it turned into a baby and broke up out of that water. And the waters broke just like this. That's how you came to the earth. You're a fallen angel. But what's happening in the heavens happened on earth, though. When you fell from the sky, you landed right here in this little egg an incubator. So you see nothing in the middle. Now we can see a star in the middle. Look at it. You see, now we can see, now the doctor can say, yep, you got, you definitely pregnant and you will be having a baby because conception takes place before birth. This is conception I'm showing you. Conception shows you how your pineal gland gets in the middle of your brain. That little light that you see in the middle of that egg, it, it didn't go nowhere, buddy. It's just right here. It didn't go nowhere. It's still you. Here it go. That was your mind. What it did in the incubator was build an avatar around itself called a body. And once it got its avatar built, it was able to enter the realm of the other avatars, just like in the movie The Avatar. In order for the American soldier to get into their planet, he had to get into their body. The real you is this little dot. That dot, when it entered this egg, it built the body around itself. But when it's no longer got that body around itself, you're going to lead this world. The only way you can exist in this world is in an avatar. And they reverse engineering this same technology, saying that we can make you an avatar in, in the worlds we made and beam your light into them. Why? What light? This light. It never went nowhere. They can extract the real you out of this avatar and put you into another one. This is like an incubation process. Now, they've been doing this for years. That's why we call them reptilians. They don't, they're not born like we are. They're virgin born from just the egg. That's why you got the story of Mary and all that. When they say that the spirit of God impregnated Mary from on high. Now, guess what? I'm going to show you something real quick for you Christians. The Bible spoke against angels in heaven 
impregnating women on earth. They said that it was forbidden for the, uh, what was it? Angels of heaven to mate with the daughters of man. Yeah, they call them sons of God. If you read them old books, that was a law that they made where they said that angels were mating with the earthly women. They said that God said it, it, it at some point it became a law where it was forbidden for sons of God to mate with the daughters of man. Go look it up. Now the Holy Ghost made it with the daughter of man. So what I'm telling you, the Holy Ghost was an incubus. It was a seraphim, a sh 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 Satan. It was one of those gods that was breaking the law and coming out here seducing the earthly women, using their guru, their Arconian smarts against the babies here who just learning this knowledge, but like a class clown holding you back, man. Like these folks are masters of this because they are old souls but they won't let us evolve. They came down here make mating with our women, doing all that stuff, and, and we can't really state it with our women, but they can. They represent the rich of the world, the bloodline of the wealthy. All of our women wanted to mate with these sons of God, and if you look up what the sons of God was, these were very popular men on the earth that would have been musicians at the time, tech gurus. They would have been gods in the flesh, but it was said that they weren't like us. They bloodline lead back to the holies of holies. And if you look at all the celebrities on the earth, they all start to get initiated into this bloodline, this spiritual bloodline under Abrahism, Abrahamic faith to justify them now partaking in this wealth, stolen wealth that they partaking in. We know how that go. They all a brotherhood. So, but let's go back to here. When it say that the spirit of God impregnated Mary, this is what it was talking about. Mary ain't no physical female. She just the egg. They use these eggs so that they can these eggs are little stargates. They moving around stargate portals. And when a woman sell her eggs, she's selling little bitty micro explosions that's openings from our realm to another. I want to let you know what you're selling. And, and those little interdimensional openings, they can use them now to allow in what they want in and, and allow out what they want out. It's like an incubator. Like I told you, it's a stargate because you can connect it to the other. It's connected to the other side. They can they can uh, aim this tube wherever they want, and it'll serve as a bridge for whatever soul they want to bring in here. So an angel is an angle, an angle, because what this tube is is depending on where you turn this this portal. It's pointing you toward whatever world you're going to go to. And whatever world you go you go in, that world go in you. Yeah, as within, so without. That's what the Taurus field is. Whatever world we go in, it also goes in us. This is what it looked like. It flows around you and in you. But it's projecting from the inside out, not, not vice versa. Now, check it out. When we talk about the, the North Pole, which is splitting our Earth at the middle with, with a tube system, that's what I'm showing you here. Look at this. I want to open your eyes. Look. Check this out. I'm going to load this next one up. What do you think that tube is that's splitting through them domes? You see here? Let's go to another one. Right here on the right. See, nut is the, the vortex, the gateway that get us here through the mama. See this? 
This is her pregnant belly with the belly button right here, the umbilical cord. All this play out on the earth because it's playing out in the heavens. But this line that is going into the thing is actually how the star get in the jaw. It's how your soul got in your body. When, when this pierces the egg and injects the, 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 the consciousness the doctor already know you're going to be born here. It's a matter of time that you arrive because what's happening now is just you're on a journey now. Like that little dot that you see in the middle of the egg would be no different than if you was on the other side of this stargate and you saw a little dot getting closer and closer, bigger, bigger, brighter, brighter. Next thing you know, boom, it breaks the waters. It breaks, it breaks through your end through the waters, covered in liquids, gasping for air, just like a baby do. This the miracle of childbirth that you will never get from a scientist. You will only get this from the ancestors, showing you how your eternal soul get in your physical, mortal body that's going to decompose but the part of you that's going to go on to another stargate which is another mama to be born again and again through these when you see the mgm lion breaking through the little mirror roaring that's the baby being born breaking the waters through this egg like i'm teaching you now now what i'm teaching you now is what re the the origins of realism how we are aliens traveling the heavens and why our mama was personified as the heavens, which is the goddess Nut. Let's look at it. Why was your, see the goddess Nut is equivalent to the, what's happening with your mama. Why has she got the stars on her back though? The connection to the heavens is inside of the woman. She's the final landing point from the other side that we see at the, the brightest star in the sky is Polaris. That star leads from the center of the earth to every woman on earth. It's like one line that starts to unbraid itself as it falls down into many lines, like unbra unbraiding some, a rope into threads. And this one line at the North Pole, uh, it starts to unbraid as it falls down to the earth, and each one of them thin lines becomes a baby in a hospital connected to that one pole, that wormhole. Every woman on earth is to see, and, and we can't forget, though, that the man is housing one part of your consciousness and a woman is too because of that split I just showed with Saturn, masculine, feminine, testosterone, and estrogen. The testosterone is the test. The estrogen is the innate divine feminine knowledge that you need to activate to pass the test. When the two come together, that's the balance and the, and the shit that make us gods, baby. Zen. When do I tell you balancing them 50 50? Passing the test. Because the, the estrogen is the astrogeny, estrogene, genie, the astrogeny from the. That divine feminine is, is the whole intuition, all of the spiritual knowledge. The fucking uh, testosterone, that's what we learn from the man's world, how to hunt how to kill, how to survive. That's your instinctive half. But once you balance the two, it's like a perfect relationship and you learn a lesson that leads to you breaking out of here. Because what Samson is doing, Samson is breaking up out of this world with balance, like tightrope tight walking. But the thing is, if you push one of the pillars harder than you push the other one, it won't open. You got to push both of them at the same equal speed like ma'at. Otherwise, if you pushing one more than the other one, you tilting the scale. So 
That's why a tornado is upright. It's balanced when it's spin and it ain't tilting like that. Because it's, it's balanced, it's evened out, and then it starts spinning at that point where it evened out. That's what our consciousness is in this vortex. That's what shoe represents, you know. But you can't tilt one like Samson. You got to break them evenly. This is like swimming. If I flap my right hand more than my left one, I'm not going to swim forward. I'm going to swim in a circle. To swim forward, I got to do it evenly. And this is what they telling you. Even. This is how we traverse through that portal. Otherwise, you become one of them. You ever saw a falling airplane, how it go to spiraling out of control as it fall? That's how we fail as angels. That spiral created days. Meaning a, 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 a world where there's a bunch of yous that's reborn every morning. And until the final birth, you can't escape this days or time system trap. Because the whole thing about multiplicity and duality in this system is you see double when you dazed and knocked out of knocked out of heaven, like I was saying. So the spinning motion is the witch brew. They want to keep you spinning. That's why they keep saying the earth is spinning. That's the whole war that's going off now with flat earth globe earth. It's a spiritual war. Like I'm battling against spirits. Like you looking at regular human beings, you thinking it's like a regular debate, flat earth, globe earth. No, if I'm debating against Neil deGrasse Tyson, Makakaku, all of these folks come, bro, this is a spiritual warfare and everybody ain't who you think they are on a spiritual level. There's an attack against the truth that's going to set us free. If all of the evil folks want you to keep thinking you spinning. They want you to keep spinning. They want you to spend time, spend money. The earth is spinning. Spend your energy. Spend, 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 spend. Spend money. Spend time. In a daze, daisy, dizzy, spin, 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 spin. The earth is spinning. The moment we wake up, guess what we say? Man, the earth is flat and it ain't spinning. And now they understand they got to re-hit the spin button again. And we like, no, nah, that shit ain't going to work this time. That's what the CERN button is. They say, oh, them motherfuckers waking back. We got to spin them again. That's going to give put you back to sleep in the days, knock your memory. This is what's going on. Saturn trick. So the Raelianism, the UFO ship, that's the Saturn trick to keep you in this simulation, all right? And they doing everything that they can, man, to keep their simulation going. Because, uh, you know, there's a white dude that go to Africa to buy eggs. I'm going to do a thing on him. Uh, it's a bunch of groups. I looked them up. I'm going to do a whole thing on it to show you how they ain't buying their eggs. It's certain people eggs they buying and it's and it's and I'm a, and I'm gonna talk about this racism going on. Cause I believe it's certain people who can open up a bigger portal than certain people. And that if if you can open up that portal, then why you got to buy our people's eggs? I'm talking about regular natural humans versus whatever these folks is that's in power. Cause for some reason. Uh, they trying to buy up everybody eggs everywhere you go. They, yeah, man, yeah, they buying eggs, dude. We got to talk about that. It's p females selling their eggs, and then when you start t telling them and talk about what the eggs is, then you selling some real sacred, yo. And if these people got to buy eggs from, from folks, what the hell are they? So I'm not through with this relinism thing. We got to do a part four, man. We got to do a motherfucking part four. The rabbit hole going too deep because I'm just cracking the surface with these parts, showing you the science of all this shit. 
But when I go into who the creator was or this Relianism group and then go to tying it in to these ad companies that's buying these eggs and go to tying that in with what the tech Google Calico, that see, they sharing these eggs with the tech companies so they can study how to open up the damn CERN portal. Man, I'm telling you, look, follow my part forward with this shit because I'm going to go deeper and deeper on every part. And I'm going to have a different thumbnail color for every part. Uh, you'll see, the, you'll see, man, we got to continue this, bro. Look, here, when we see this, this right here, this mutated into this right here. Y'all get what I'm saying? Watch this now. As the soul descended into the earth, this little light get bigger and bigger. And you know, as this light get bigger and bigger, guess what it become? It looks like it's a baby growing. Think about it. The baby comes out of nowhere. Ain't nothing inside of that bag but a spark of light. And as that light get brighter and brighter, it dims. Because it's becoming this. The light is forming into an avatar holographically, just like Pop Smoke. When they say, oh, nigga, I'm in my bag. I'm in my bag, baby. Yes, we're all in our bag. You'll never make it out of your bag. You'll always be enclosed because this is an enclosed system. So from one bag to the next one, just a bigger one, because you growing and you get a bigger bag. We about to get a bigger one now. When you look at this image right here, I don't know why you don't get the Neo in the Matrix vibes. Because the moment this shit click with you, you're going to see what this world is. Look. That's what I'm telling you. Your mother is a tree. You literally grew like fruit inside of her. Now watch this though. What started off? What was the, the the early form of this fruit was a little ball of light. Look at this little ball of light. As it descended closer to the earth, the light got bigger and bigger, but at the same time it was about to break the water, it was turning into a baby. Now if you look at the hologram technology, you will see that's exactly how you make a fucking excuse my language. But I'm excited. This, this knowledge is deep. Watch this. The light don't become a human to the end of it. See? If you start this, if I trace this light all the way back to the source, it'll shrink and become that little bitty ball of light that it was. Rewinding time back to your conception. This is how you started. A little bitty dot of light. That light expanded. It expanded into a human. And when it fully expanded in the, in the bag, this is your hologram was what was at the other end of that light. Right here. It formed at the end. And this is the Polaris star that never left. This little dot right here represents Polaris. But you're connected through it. It's your mind. You're projecting your avatar down into the earth. It, you the journey. That's the light shine down. The light started to shine through. And it broke the waters. And on the other side, it expressed itself as a hologram on the other side. Just like we see here. On the other end of these light rays is a human being. All of the rays forming with their end spikes, the building blocks of what becomes a human. And this is all based on holography, the light of your conception. So this same light, right, is what they showing here. And what I just showed you, this is the light that's projecting your hologram down into the earth circle. And this will collapse like an Asian fan and suck you back up like a spaghetti noodle 
they call it spaghettification. And this is your macabre ship will fly away and it'll zap, it'll spit you back down in another world for another game, another uh, ride, you know. And what'll happen is it'll suck you back up again, take off, park somewhere, and boom, beam you back down. This is what we're, what, what, what's happening in the heavens. So we see Enoch, we see Christ open in the heavens, and remember, we're going to compare that to this so we can understand that the darkness of space is a thing. It's a medium. And that when you have your Big Bang Theory, right, that medium is broken. But you're, you're caught. See, you won't say what broke the medium. In other words, if I got broken glass, cause and effect now, what caused this pattern? The pattern is what we call in life. A clock, DNA, chronos. This break in the universe created time, which is a clock. The clock pattern. It's that simple. But the thing is, who threw the rock to open up the darkness? The darkness is like a wall. The darkness is like water. If you throw rock in the water and break the waters, you get a ripple effect. This is the Big Bang. No one want to want to see what's going on when you ask them what created the Big Bang. It's like saying a broken glass and asking a child, who broke this glass? Nobody want to say who threw the rock. We know that in order to get omelets, you got to break eggs. When I ask you who broke the egg that created this omelet of life, nobody want to answer to that in science. Because that'll bring God into it. And that's why they personify God as a rock. Because if you start saying, what caused the Big Bang was the, 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 this earth, the, the Big Bang represents an idea being born from the mind of God. And, that, and, and thoughts are born just like babies. They are conceived. So the same pattern we see when a baby born, we see this whole when a universe is born, right? So a universe is conceived. And that's, that's pre, prior to birth. That means some had to throw the rock before we had the shards of glass. If the shards of glass represents the physical world, then the opening represents the place where the physical world was born from. If all of those shards of glass is a element on the periodic table that is being stirred up around a central point so that all of the elements can be fused together to create life, then this makes perfect sense out of the Big Bang and the projected universe. Every piece of shard of glass you see, that is a element on a periodic table. All of these elements are able to be fused together because something is keeping them stirred up. If the stirring stopped, then these elements would all settle on their own layers because of density. This would have happened. This would have happened. If I wanted to break all of these layers and mix it all together, I could stick a straw in this cup and stir it real fast. And when I do that for a brief moment, everything in a cup will be unified. But when I stop stirring it, it's just going to settle back just like this and separate. Separation if we don't stir it. But if we stir it, we become unified with them. And that's what we want to stop the stirring. You want to breathe, meditate, and slow. That's what it means. Like, 
to stop the stirring is to slay that serpent. He represent this spiral vortex that's keeping us saying double in a daze. The witches brewing up the brew pot is doing the stirring with the CERN to keep the simulation going, to keep us the multiverse, the duality going, but it's only one true universe, one true you. You exist in a matrix right now. See, the moment they stop, they, they, they stop this, that, 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 this hole right here is going to close up like a sore healing. And all of the shards going to fall away and that portal going to close. And that's the whole world falling away. And uh, it's being sealed with a new agreement that we won't let this shit happen again. That's the great seal. When, they, when this shit is sealed back up, and it ain't no more shards because as this hole is open, the shards are spinning around the hole like a tornado center. That's how you get this, this system where all the elements on this table can be unified and where life can exist. If you look at space, everything's separated. Over there, you got a big old, they telling you this, but I don't believe space. I'm just telling you what they trying to say on, a, on this, they, what they hiding. They telling you a, a gas ball of argon is over there. This planet filled with carbon gas. This planet filled with a different gas. This planet just got sulfur gases. So in space, all of these gases and, and, and solid liquids and gases are separated from each other. Pluto is just a chunk of ice. All of the ice accumulated there. You got a water world where just all the water at. You got these planets where they just got one element, where Mercury just, it's just a ball of Mercury floating there. But on Earth, you got all of the elements blended together. That's how you know we in the middle of the universe. You never thought about that? Even with the globe, they got everything separated. The most diversity in the globe universe is Earth. Ain't no other body in the heliocentric model got more diversity on it than Earth. So why wouldn't they say that life always started on Earth? That's dumb. They tell you life seeded Earth from a comet outside the Earth. And it landed in the ocean and we evolved from single cell creatures to humans on some mermaid shit. They telling you that, that all of the life on earth come from outer space. But yet when they look in outer space, they telling you they don't find no damn life. Stupid. 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 If you look at the whole heliocentric model. Earth is the most diverse planet on it, but yet they said life didn't start on Earth. Earth ain't the center of the universe. A comet came in and boo, landed near, come on, man. Then they need evolution to explain how the single cell becomes a complicated, intelligent, complicated cellular structured organism don't make no sense because it always was a multi-cell complicated advanced organism and it started right here life then land here what happened was life landed in y'all simulation so in a model they can't find no life nowhere else but earth but they tell you life from everywhere else. Life landed on earth from, from out there in space. But they ain't found life out there yet. Then recently they said, well, we found single cell organisms on Europa. You mean to tell me that a satellite that's light years away from earth can see a single cell organism on the surface of a planet with y'all believe everything. They need to now explain, see for they lot of work, they got to find single cell organisms in space. And guess what happened? They launched these telescopes up there and they ain't going nowhere because you can't leave the earth. They launched the shit and land in the ocean. They put it away. You think it's still up there. 
but really it's up under the ground at a secret base with a bunch of rich men drinking coffee. They done made a coffee table out of that shit, and they laughing at your dumb ass drinking coffee on it. And, and they keep telling themselves, dude, do you believe that this coffee table we're drinking coffee off of, those dumbest think is whirling through space right now light years away? They turning all of them damn telescopes and satellites that you think whirling through space into underground rich man furniture, laughing at your ass, saying, yeah, that sofa that you sitting on is actually near... Uh, Andromeda right now and they busting out laughing. <laughs> they invite the rich people to the underground meeting and he say, damn, where you get that couch from? Oh, that's actually Cassini. You know it's damn nearby Andromeda right now. <laughs> Damn that refrigerator nice. Where you get that from? Oh, that's just a piece of hubba. I gave the other one to Susie. She look check hers out. Yeah, you, could you believe that they think that is near Galaxy 813 near Titan right now? Yeah, man, nice fridge, isn't it? Yeah, they turning all that shit into furniture underground. And you think that shit's still up there floating around. And that, that shit that far from Earth traveling through all of these harsh conditions and they don't got to clean the lens on it. And it's still getting a good picture. My phone ain't never lost the, left the Earth. And I, and I still got to wipe it off with a lens wipe to get the best quality image. They sent telescopes away from Earth. It got micrometeors and all that. Ain't no scratch nowhere. We getting these beautiful, pristine pictures from these telescopes that's been going through the harshness of space for fucking since you was a little boy and they still giving you a perfect picture back. Stupid. No scratches on the lens, no breakdowns, no service. And it's going at speeds that quadruple the speed of a bullet. Stupid. No screws and bolts coming apart. Let me show y'all motherfuckers something real quick. Because you, you, you got to really think about something, right? Let's look up Cassini. Now, Cassini is made out of nuts and bolts, aluminum foil. Look at this shit. Look at the material, B. Now, let's look up how fast is Cassini going. Because at a certain speed, none of those materials can stay fastened together. Shit'll just start falling apart. Now, Cassini going at 42,000. Cassini's going at 43,000 miles per hour. And look at it. <laughs> Can you imagine this thing moving like an asteroid with a tail behind it and that wing stand on it? People, have you ever put your arm out of your car window on the highway just going 80? This piece of shit right here. Look at this shit. Look at this shit made out of Gore-Tex and plat, and it's going that fast, and it's staying together intact, giving perfect pictures. Stupid. It's time to wake up. It's time to wake up, man. That's why when you look at images of Cassini in space, it ain't real. It's cartoon. It's CGI. You can't even take a picture of nothing going that fast. I've done a good job today. I think I'm going to say the rest for part four. But I ain't, I ain't quite done, man. I ain't quite done. Um, I'm going to prepare myself for part four so I don't touch nothing that I already touched before. And that I could just go forward because I want to get on this Fibonacci spiral. Like this symbol of the black hole sun, this is what we see throughout the comedic system. As this thing spinning around, this is the sky. This is the heavens above. You see it? Matching the ley lines of the earth. This became the swastika. So they want to curse these symbols. But guess what? 
be, be stay tuned for part four. Join me. What is it? Friday, 3 p.m. Pacific time. Friday, 3 p.m. Pacific time. Flat Earth Globe Earth Debate. Be on the lookout for the notification. Um, I'm also going to be doing, be on the lookout for notifications. I'm going to always keep y'all updated prior to going live. I find out that works better. So, yeah, I ain't going to cram it all in here. I went over a lot of stuff that's kind of profound. I'm going to give you time to marinate with that. And uh, But I really didn't do a lot of reading like I wanted to. I would stay live for a little while longer to give you some more. But, you know, I don't know if y'all down for the long haul for real. Hit the like and share. Support the show. But in the next portion, we're going to talk about how the Raelian movement has infiltrated the government. You know that they saying aliens is real. The Vatican saying that they are our advanced brothers and sisters. So that would mean they saying this is the Elohim ruling over you, which is what the Raelians teach. It's so many articles I want to read to you. The Scientific American coming out telling us to be kind to extraterrestrials. You know, a lot of guys say that y'all pseudo flat earthers, you pseudo. But their scientists said that E.T. is real. And guess what they say? When you call them pseudo, guess what they say? Well, you got to be egotistical to think that you the only one on earth. Nope, you just got to be honest. That ain't how science work. Science says you got to prove aliens before you say they real. You just can't say aliens real because you got to be foolish to think we the only ones on earth. But see, that's what the heliocentric model introduced, space. It gives you this model of the universe of you on a little ball with all these other planets. Now you can have other life forms and aliens come into your shit. But you can't have that on a flat earth. You find out we the aliens. And that they reverse engineering the technology of us into interdimensional avatars, drones. The shit you see in the sky today, that's government blue beam technology. The way them lights be moving and y'all say it's UFO ships because it move that way. That's because it's being projected from the earth. From a, it's like a laser beam. It's like when you get your little laser beam to play with the cat. And you can zigzag the laser beam and play with it and all that. That's what they projecting into the heavens. And they trying to make us think it's some new life arriving to the earth. Because we seeing these light vehicles, they ain't physical. They holographic. They're like interdimensional vehicles. And they're moving in a way that we know that they can't be moving on a physical plane it's a it's moving like a projection like someone is actually moving it from a source and it ain't these things ain't even real these ain't alien aircraft flying in the sky this is blue beam they able to beam a hologram let me see if i can show you You see, the, it's always some light shit. It's never a physical thing. It's always some light show. That's because it's holographic. It's a laser beam coming from an earthly source. Look at this. People was recalling that saying the UFOs are here. This is what they doing. They're, they're, this is blue. We've been talking about them faking the alien arriving with blue beam technology, and they're doing it now, but ain't nobody really talking about it. They got us distracted with everything else. So if you look at this, this is the basically interacting with the uh, ether, stirring up, making a ripple effect in the ether, opening up the ether. And then this would be the beam line that you travel on, the, the stair staircase of light, the mercury caduceus, the two serpents, 
right here, and the soul gets beamed to a next. So what's happening on the earth right now, the technology that connects the, the underworld and the heavens to the earth is opening back up. The portals are opening back up right now. And in the underworld and the heavens. And we're going to see this stuff in the sky because the archons are resurrecting that technology in our time. And they opening up their portal to Sheol. But we're opening up a portal collectively to the heavens as we get our heart. It's the will of the heart collectively. All the people that saying we want to go back to a natural way of living. We tired of war. We tired of being divided and conquered. We want heaven on earth. You got these two portals opening up because of that. And everybody that's go that like this simulation, they're going to go with their world and we're going to go higher into the world we trying to create. And what's happening now, this earth is graduating. Our souls have been harnessed here too long. And what's th when they say they're going to separate the sheep from the wolf, everybody whose energy is calibrated with the archons is going to go down with them. And everybody who got their heart pure and with righteousness in it is finna a sin. And what's going to happen to this earth is it's going to be inherited by baby souls as a neutral ground like it always intended to be for souls to explore themselves and to, uh, you know, create these mystery schools for ascension. Because these mystery schools got corrupted in Egypt and all that. We was revealing this mystery before Egypt. But they started to make it to where if your money ain't right, then you can't know the knowledge. And when Egypt started charging a high price, like with college today, getting people in debt for knowledge that was free before it became a cult. So if you look at it today, it's the same way. If your money ain't at a certain level, all the shit that I'm talking about, you don't know these mysteries. These are the mysteries of rich men. Either your ass rich or you awakened in a motherfucker and you figured it out. And then if that's you, everybody at the bottom going to say, what make you think you know it all? All of the money them people got. Now the people with the money know what I know, but they ain't telling it to you. They giving you the lie, dummy. And you'll, you'll, you won't take this shit from me. And you will say, well, ain't no way he right because look at all them with all the money and telescopes and shit. And they got all the lies. That, 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 see, see, that's the thing, man. But let me, let me move forward. Let's move forward. This was a great example of how we're conceived. I, I really did a good job on that one. I got to pat myself on the back right there, baby. Yeah, check this out, though. Let's see what else I got for y'all. We ain't going nowhere. Look at this image. Look at this image. Look at this image. Don't you know it's all the same? Don't you know in the middle of this doggone hexagram, it's the real you, and that's your densest version. And you're projecting yourself from this middle point all the way outward, and you got all these heads. You're called Leviathan. That's called Levi and Aten. Because if you think of what a Levi is, that's what it is, one of these tethers. Levi, Leviathan, a seven-headed dragon. That's your seven chakras. You got seven heads and seven ethers that you live in. You got to be born out of each one. So if you count the points on here, guess what? It's a seven-pointed star. No, it ain't, Brother Sanchez. It's a six-pointed star, only if you're looking at it in 2D. But if you're looking at it in 3D, it's a seven-pointed star, buddy. You forgot about the point that's pointed dead at your ass. It's hidden right in your face, the hidden point, the seventh point of Maru, the highest of heavens. And this point right here is the one bursting out of your heart field. You feeling me? You see this image? Let's go to Pop Smoke. Look at where Pop Smoke light. Where, you see this ball of light? 
That's the source point that's projecting him outward. That's the machine that's projecting his hologram, that ball of light. So that's equivalent to Rudolph Big Bright Nose, but it's right here. This seventh point on a Macava. That's the one leading you to in your right direction out of the heart right here. You see what I'm saying? So if you look at it right here, that's the highest peak on a wheel. All of those other, they lead to the highest point right there. So again, at that point, all of these other points are crashing together. That's why I said crisis, crash, crush. Boom. And when they crash together, it tears a fucking hole in the ether right there. You see on that wheel? So like, like I said, if you got a bunch of cars making a circle and they all hit the gas and drive toward the middle of the circle, when they all crash together at the same time, the fucking explosion is going to be so loud, bro, that it's damn near tear open a, a layer in the ether. And that's what we showing. All of these lines of light represent highways and that these highways spirits are leaving the earth and they taking one of these magnetic ley lines back home to the North Pole to climb the portal up out of here. All of these roads lead to home. So wherever you die at, your soul will be by a a, a highway in that area where you'll see a bunch of souls traveling that highway back to the center and you will join them and you will be part of the energy flowing on the other side, helping power the simulation from this side. None of the energy is wasting. The, the, in, the, dead, the energy of the dead powers the world of the living and the energy of the living perpetuates the world of the dead. Just like Morpheus said, it's a symbiotic relationship. All of these lines are magnetic energy rushing toward the same point. And when they get there, boom, what's going on at the middle of the earth is the perpetuation of one of the hugest explosions in the universe. The Big Bang never ended. It's perpetuating itself at the center based on the flow of electromagnetism in and out of the point of origin. There are souls right now making that journey home. And when they get there, the, what they're going to realize is, oh, shit. See, what's going to happen is this, right? Imagine, imagine a soul traveling this lane to go to the North Pole. And it's picking up speed, more and more speed, the closer it gets. And when it finally reached this point, it realized, oh, shit, it's a bunch of more souls that I'm about to crash into. But it's too late now. Boom! You can't hit the bricks. Because guess what's going on? All of them other souls that you crashed into were the other versions of yourself in the other ethers. And the crashing is all of y'all coming back together, being fused together. That's why they said at the middle is fusion happening. You were copied in all of these shards of gas. Jordan Peele told you this. Jordan Peele get out cover was 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 alarming like he's talking to you with the symbolism look at this cover he got this bro he got the broken glass just like I'm doing he's telling you to get out of the matrix you are reflecting in all of these shards of grass and uh, shards of glass and until you break each shard you won't return to the center. Every time I break a shard of glass, that version of him, his energy go back to the middle and then vice versa all around. And, it, and each time you break one, the dude in the middle comes back to life. He start to teleport back to Eden. You know how in Star Trek, when they fading in and out of existence, teleporting, 
The reason he ain't in the middle of this hole because all of his light shine out and fell out into the multiverse. But when all of his little single units of light come back into this hole and unite, it's going to come together to make one bright ball, and that's what Polaris is. When all of these versions of him return back home, they're going to crash together into one divine version of him and fuse together. That's our liberation, what they trying to stop. But we gonna get out though. Just see the the celebrities talk to us through the films. Jordan Peel. Jordan was a river of river of baptism where you peel through the layers of the fake self and wash yourself from the sin, the synth body. Jordan Peel. All of his movies is giving you a spiritual lesson about this simulation, but you ain't even looking at the shit. Jim Carrey was doing it to you with the mask. The green mask, the heart chakra, you put it on, you become a clown. In the Truman Show. And see, Hollywood is basically a big ritual where they telling your ass what's going on in the simulation. They know the shit, but they can't say it. Because that'll be like a teacher giving you the answers. It's a test. You got to pass it. I can't even make enlightenment happen in you. You Enlightenment is something you do on your own. I can give you the information, but it's a lot of people that's hearing this and they don't get it. They ain't enlightened. So I can't enlighten a person for them. I can give you the information. I can shake you, but you got to get out the bed and wake up. I can shake you. That's all I, I could do. Somebody did it for me, and I appreciate that shaking. You don't like when they shaking you at first. You're going you gonna to cuss them out, and you're going to cut the light back off, get under the cover, and hit the snooze button. But after a while, you're going to shake you again, and you're going to finally get up while you're cussing them out, and you're going to make it to your interview on time. And guess what you're going to say? Man, my bad for cussing you out. You was trying to wake a nigga up, but the sleep was good. But, hey, bro, I got there on time because the vault was closing. It's limited time. The sky vault don't open. It's lim it opens and closes. And if you tra at this time, it's open. Souls are leaving. When this thing closes up, this world fills up with souls. It's called, uh, it overpopulates. And when we reach... Our, our work, when the sky vault closes, we rely on technology because most of the energy come from the sky vault. When it closes, it gets so thin that we ain't having a lot of babies because the, the highway, think about it. Once you close some lanes on the highway, it slows traffic down. When the sky vault, because it gets big and it gets thin, it gets big and thin. When it gets thin, we start using laser beam technology and incubation technology to create life. We start using thin tubes for life to go through. When it opens up, the technological world is destroyed and the natural world of souls entering and exiting. And like the Bible said, being fruitful. Them days come back. But when this, when this thing is closing, the minds of the masses close. They go to a dark age. They forget about this knowledge of the heavens. As it opens back up, man slowly start to realize that technology was a crutch for him to survive a dark age. When the portal is closing, man have to light the world up with technology. And, uh, and I'm not talking about light like the light in my room. I'm talking about vibrant energy, life energy. When that portal is closing, death becomes rampant on the earth. Death becomes rampant. Disease, war, hate, depression, boredom. And as the portal open back up, happiness, Garden of Eden days are returning. The knowledge of how we fail is returning. But during this time, we can escape this middle realm because 
when a portal closes, that don't mean that the light from the other side and the other side ain't still behind that portal. When that portal open this time, you need to leave up out of here. And when it closed, you ain't bound to duality no more. That means you ain't bound to light age, dark age. Humans getting dumb, then humans getting smart. Humans building heaven on earth, then building hell on earth. Humans having a peaceful time, then a war time. Humans figuring out the secrets that they gods, then falling ignorant, becoming fucking war, 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 uh, loving, evil motherfuckers. These shifts, this du duality, that's what we're about to graduate from. That only exists inside of this middle realm. Above here is consistency of vibrant energy. Below this is a consistency of boredom, technological energy. The energy you would get on a gray day in a booming metropolis and hearing the horns and just away from this beautiful tropical Jamaica where they got the fruit drinks and parrots and colors and sun and shit. These are two different universes. And we're, we're, this is like a ballot system, a casting a ballot or the ball is when, when you were casted into the box, you're, you're a vote. It's based upon how many of us in this box agree to create heaven on earth. That's what we're going to make inside of this box. But if they get everybody to agree to create hell on earth, nature ain't going to stop it. It's a voting system. It's one box. All of our souls is casted into the box. And depending on how many souls got the natural energy versus the non unnatural energy, that's a vote system we doing with our hearts in this box, in the ballot box. And you being casted in the box, you just want, it's like a war going on in the heavens. And they sending soldiers to the earth to help fight that same war that's playing out on the earth. But how they send the soldiers to the earth is by casting a ballot or casting a soul into a box. The ball, like ball, ballot. When, they, when your soul entered the earth, it was because you came to vote for the side of righteousness. This is a political debate. This, a, this is an election going on. And we hoping that the natural side cast the most ballots. Meaning more souls are coming into this earth from the heavenly realm than from the hellish realm. And the more of them coming here outnumber the devils, the earth going to turn into heaven. It's a voting system. If there are more demons here than angels, then the earth going to let them turn up the fire and make hell. If there's more angels here than demons, then heaven will be here. Nature's foul. She got a majority rules like this. If more people in my house is saying it's cold, I'm going to cut the air conditioner down. If there's one person saying it's cold and everybody else saying, no, oh, that feel good, then they got to put some cover on themselves. But if more people in the house saying, yeah, it's too cold, then majority rule. That's how nature do it. So it's a ballot system going on on earth. And we hoping that we can see they trying to stop our reproduction and speed up their reproduction. They trying to make sure that we don't have a lot of babies, but that they have babies because of this balloting system. The, if there's more of them, then they going to turn the world into hell. But if it's more of us and see this, why they don't want us creating babies, but they want to buy eggs and all that shit. Now, you don't want us making no babies, but you fascinated with eggs. You don't want us making no babies, but every time we turn around, you trying to take the shit that we naturally make our babies with and use it for yourself to make your shit unnaturally with, by putting the egg with the tube and the incubation and shit. Wait that expose these rich dudes taking their ass around the world of these poor countries, charging these girls $100, $200 for their eggs. Now, they done took the price up on it, 
But just to, but but we gotta t egg selling, bro. We gotta talk about that because what I'm researching is spiritual. It's spiritual, bro. Like it's it ain't you don't know what the egg is, man. And when and on 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 the net on my next part of this joint, I'm telling you, bro. You a net. The whole thing about these companies selling eggs, you're going to see who the devil is, nigga. Because that egg, on the other side of that egg is a soul. And the only way it can get to this earth is through that particular egg that you sold. When you take the egg from out your body and move it to a laboratory or something, that's like you got a baby on this end and the egg is an opening for it to get to the earth. That opening is right here in the mama's body. The mama take this stargate, this opening out of her body and she put it in a laboratory over here. Now when that baby go down a tube, it ain't born through the mama. It ain't born. It's, it's, that baby gonna enter the, the, the other side of that thing and say, I'm not in mama. I'm in a Petri dish. That's what you're doing to the soul. And they're going to fucking try to harness the soul and make it form a fetus and make it into a baby right there in a Petri dish. And these are lab-born humans, bro. And how long have they been doing this? Phil Schneider said they got underground military bases with aliens in them. But the aliens ain't come from no other planet. They born in a lab. These the lab born incubator children. They been found out how to cheat death. They got souls that are born underground that never made it to the surface. And that can be an egg that was donated from some chick. And they see what they'll do. They'll get her egg, get the sperm, but you got to think the point that I'm trying to make, even though if I'm not going into detail or I'm not totally correct on the science of how I go, the point that I'm making is they trying to make the human without the mama and daddy. If they can just harvest the man and woman for your sex, sexual fluids, then they can stop the intimacy and create this world that they had called equilibrium. In their ideal utopia, you're a uh, androgynous species where the man and the woman don't express masculine or feminine energies. They're just this advanced race of go watch the movie Equilibrium. They all act like robots, like robots. The ma they all act the same. A woman robot and a man robot still talks like this. There is no distinguishing between masculine and feminine. And this, this world, this, and all of their gods are androgynous, like the Baphomet. This blurring of the blurring of the sex lines to what you see what I'm saying. So they're trying to create a world where emotions don't exist. And the most powerful emotional energy is the intimacy between man and woman. How do you get rid of that? Because that whole process of what creates the intimacy between them is the transfer of those sexual fluids that make life. If you can get in the middle of that and say, look, I give you a million dollars for your eggs and I give you a million dollars for your sperm. And you know that the whole world poor and that don't nobody want to make babies because it's too expensive. We'll start selling the part of us that make the baby because we ain't using it no way. And our excuse for not using it is it's too expensive. Well, what if I can now use it to get money? Problem solved. See, they doing that on purpose. Now they the mediator between the sperm and the egg. And buddy, that is a God-like place to be. We giving them the power of God. We putting them at the helms of the of because now they the mediator between that which perpetuates life, the bond. Now imagine when they start scaling that up and bringing technology with it. You won't even be having sets no more. Y'all are just be th 3D printing skins 
and swapping consciousness and that'll be life and death. Babies won't even exist no more because age won't exist no more. That's why they said that God, Saturn, he gobbled up the babies because he created the technology to reverse aging, to make us stop aging and to be immortals. Imagine a world where you hear no laughter of children. Because they cheated death and they stopped the age. In a future world, you won't have children. You will just have a set age of humans that froze themselves in time. And think of like uh, the Borg on Star Trek. See, with the Borg, you don't got no children, Borg. You don't got no old ass Borg. They all the same age. They all the same voice. Ain't no, and see, that's, that's the thing that I'm talking about. Everything that makes us human, they want to take that away. Childhood, teenage years, seniority. These are what forms memories from a baby to an elderly person. You will not have human memories no more. You will have uh, thoughts that are programmed into you with a floppy disk drive. That you can just, you say, hey, I want a new set of memories. And they say, what's wrong with those memories? I'm tired of them. Give me a new set of memories. And they'll take them out of you, put in another disk, and you'll run a whole new set of memories. Now, why are they doing that? Because they're trying to simulate what nature doing. You have more than one birth. You have new sets of memories to make. Just like you can think when you was born in this world, up until now your childhood, and when you die, you're going to be born again, making more memories. And, 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 between, and, and we reach a point where we start to remember our incarnations like you remember your birthdays. You start to remember all the lifetimes you had throughout the universe. That's when you start getting your powers back. Because all of these different versions of yourself start to meet back up at the middle. Just like what I told you. And crash together and Christ is resurrected. And in that one you, all the memories of every version of you that was born throughout all the ethers come into one. All of these scales come into you but because of that all of their vices and their demons combine together so at the point where you become the most righteous god in your universe you also become the most wickedest devil in your own little vortex but at that point god is the demiurge that's what i'm telling you god ain't no good or bad god God is just a master and he want to master evil and good. But in order for you to master them both, you got to balance them out. If you display more evil than good, then you only master evil and you don't master good. So the concept of Zen, balancing a negative and positive is how you became this ascended guru. So at the end of this journey, every version of us that fell from the central self will meet back at that central point. And what they will bring with them are gifts and curses. There are many versions of you that exist in other universes, and they all have their own talents, and they all have their own downfalls. And what will culminate when they all come together is a, a, this divine being that has mastered all of its talents in all of the universes, but also have consolidated all of its downfalls in all of the universes into one body. And at that point, they cancel each other out because if, I, if all of your problems and shortcomings that you got in this world, if I take those and add those up across the whole multiverse, 
all of your problems in each avatar and every ether, boy, that'll be a lot of problems to conquer. But you know, the Most High ain't going to put too much on you that you can't bear. Because at the moment when all of your problems are collected in one body, all of your talents or gifts will be collected in one body. So, yes, if you had to deal with all your problems in one big bag and all of these problems collected on the universe, you would need some sort of strength to do that. The universe ain't leaving you hanging. That's why she, all of these versions of yourself, they got superpowers too and talents. And when all of them come together with all their talents, they going to defeat all of them problems that they brought together. Because there's a good, there's a talent that there's in every version of you across this multiverse, there's a talent that that version of you got that another version of you need in another universe in order for it to battle a demon that it got. So when all of these versions come together, the version of you in that universe that was struggling with a problem, the version of you in this universe going to solve it. And whatever problem he had, the version of you in this universe going to be, he going to, for example, if the version of you in this universe has psychological issues, it's a universe out there where you are a damn psychologist, man. And that version of you going to counsel with yourself. And who is your best counsel than you? A whole nother version of yourself that know you in and out. You at the table with it, the counselor. Every universe, you got a weakness. And the reason that weakness ain't going to be conquered in that lifetime is because the version of you that can conquer that weakness haven't met with that version yet. When you finally fix yourself and counsel out all these gifts and curses, that's when we're going to see what we are, baby. That's going to be very beautiful there, boy. Because that's going to be a God that has used all of his gifts to conquer all of his weakness. And at the end of that war, the only thing going to be left standing is perfection. This is a sculpturing process. So let's talk about realism. Because when you see Ptah spinning the man on a potter's wheel, that's what's going on. Pottery, molding, sculpting. You're doing a good job, by the way. A lot of y'all going to pass the test. You will ascend. I know it. It's been confirmed within me. Nothing we doing here is, is, is a mistake. We know that the Big Bang told us our universe was random. If you really know that this is a simulation, then every word out of my mouth and everything we doing is manifest destiny. It is written and embedded in the code of the city. It couldn't have played out no other way. So that's what a simulation is, creationism versus Big Bangism. In Big Bangism, things are just kind of unfolding, randomly. We don't know where, hey, every day is a new day waiting to happen. We don't know. No, in a simulation, the past, present, and future happened when the, when the simulation was created. That's proof when you have deja vu. Now the University of Harvard is saying humans remember the future like we remember the past. And when you go to going into those articles, they go to talking of the deja vu. But we've been talking about that. They catching up. We remember the future because it already happened. The, the laws of the universe say you can't remember nothing that ain't happened yet. So when you have a deja vu moment, that's really a testimony to the Mayan and all of the other ancestors that said the future already played out. Because if it didn't, how you remember the future? Deja vu. Remember last time we were talking about Neo the One? R remember last time we were telling them niggas about how... Let's, let's, let's do a recap because what I'm going to go over today, I'm going to want to piggyback off something I went over on this last one, realism, that I want to add to this one because we talking about Kanye West as well and, and his... The, the secret religious order that's underlying all your religious groups on the earth that's at the base of their doctrines 
right? Now, let me show. Let's get right into the symbolism, and let me recap you by saying realism, people that's into realism, right? They are also into ufology. They are into cloning. They are into seed buying. We're going to talk about that today, baby. They are, all, oh, we're going deep today. People, they are also into soul harvesting. And when you understand what the religions and science and how they all working together for this one end goal, you will see that realism is the foundational. Basically, I don't know how many of y'all remember this. That was a while back where we used to say at some point there's going to be a one world order with one world police, one world medical, one world government. One world military, and that one world military will be policing the people. Also, what else did we say? One world religion. One world religion. Now, what is the one world religion? It is that at the foundation of all religions is realism, which is the concept of abduction. Each religion teaches this abduction process in its own way. Christians talk, call it a rapture. You, you People into the UFO alien thing, they call it an alien abduction where they're captured, raptured up to the highest heaven, right? A lot of biblical prophets spoke about this, Ezekiel, John of Patmos. We went over all that, right? And But what I want to do is reiterate Hi. on... I want to reiterate on some of the symbolism we went over on the last one and start back there today. And because we were saying that Jesus represented the one. We were saying that Jesus right here. Remember this symbolism? Let's go to it. Just passed it. There we go. We were saying that the one basically is the tube, the wormhole. Now, Jesus is a serpent God, and a lot of these serpent gods, I want y'all to realize they are worm gods. See, when you look at the Ouroboros, you have this serpent making a circle and eating its own tail. But another way to tell that story is a worm stuck inside of an apple trying to bite its way through. The worm and the apple, the serpent and the circle are the sperm and the egg. Remember what I told you on the last one, God? And that's the zero and the one, by the way, the binary code. Uh, let me explain something to you. The binary code is the number 10, which is the root word for tent. You're looking at a tent right now. It's called a pyramid. A tent. A tent. So at the top of the pyramid is God mounted on Calvary. That would be this tube, the hose pipe, the all seeing eye. It sees all because it creates all from above and projects it below. It's like a painter. A painter can see the entire canvas, but the people inside the canvas can't. You're the one in the canvas. Now let's understand this as well. Um, we talked about Jesus being mounted on Calvary and other symbolism we went into was this one here. When we said that this little Team one, this, this, excuse me, we said that this tube here would be Christ mounted on top of Calvary. It'll also be Jonah being spat out of the well. People, we got to understand that the concept of Jesus being on Calvary is a old concept. And before I can go deep with y'all today, we got to refresh ourselves again right here. Um, so let me go and open up this Jonah. Yeah, we got to start here. Look at what I'm telling you guys. The concept of Jesus mounted on Calvary, meaning resurrection, is this concept of Jonah coming out the well mouth being born again. That story was told in Mesoamerica. Here is Quetzalcoatl. Both of these are the same concept. This 
monster represents the world that you're in now. Our earth is a huge whale, and here it is right here, a pretty little whale. Look at it. It's cross-eyed than a motherfucker, but... <laughs> you won't understand these mythologies without the symbolism. Here's the Hebrew cosmos. Now, this is a whale swimming towards you from a front view. You can see the water being skied out the spout. That would be the souls, like Jonah, leaving the earth. Oh, yeah, this is all it meant, people. We ain't going to make it nothing deep. J Jonah leaving the whale is the it's at the foundation of all world religion. Why? Because when we die, we open up the same portal that ufologists are trying to open up with CERN. Here it is in Hindu. Let's zoom in on this guy. That right there is the portals that we've been seeing in the sky. Or what they're calling the Milky Way galaxy. Oh, we're going to go into a lot today. Look, check this out. People have been seeing these around. Uh, people have been sighting these because right now that Blue Beam technology is allowing them to recreate what our crown chakra does upon death and birth. So when you were born, right, and when you die, basically air, the only way you can get into this terrarium is by having enough energy to pierce through it's ether to, perm to permeate its ether. And that's what I'm saying. Like there's a sky vault above us and that represents the bullseye. Everyone that made it to this earth, you didn't, when you were a sperm that went to the center of the egg, not on the edge of it, you hit the bullseye. You hit ground zero, zero degrees. All of us enter this earth at the exact same point. Let me show you something. The sperm never goes in the egg from the side. That sperm knows something. That sperm know, hey, I don't just enter this egg any kind of way. In other words, all of our mother's egg connects to the, it, even though our mothers all seem separate, all of their eggs, all of you women eggs around the world, it connects to this one portal at the top of the earth. So every sperm making it to an egg, it don't explain how your soul get in the body, how your soul get to this earth. Everyone is conceived, their consciousness comes through this same zero degree point. Now, after we fall, everyone separate, and they're born in their own mothers. But when they die, all of their lines are tethered to this same pole. This is the illusion of duality and unity, ascension and descension. We're going to talk about the fall of the Elohim today in relation to all of this. And all. Uh, Let's understand that childbirth is very miraculous, is very divine, if you think about what I'm telling you here today. And this make a woman's egg a little bitty stargate. So now you ought to understand what you're selling. And we're going to talk about the companies that's buying these eggs and some of my theories on what I think they're doing with them. And yes, it's going to be some things that's going to be disturbing, but... We the big boys and big girls, right? So, God damn it, let's get it. And um, today we're going to do a lot of sourced material because we, we do want to read our sources today. But let, again, let me show you something about this. We don't want to iterate on this too long. Jesus is the light. He's the light that's mounted at the top of this pyramid. The one, Neo, Right? That's what this light represents, Jesus mounted on Calvary. And uh, I just wanted to show you all around the world, because when we talk Jesus mounted on Calvary, that's literally what this is. The spiral around this, this God here is descending as it go out and ascending as it goes in. 
So his head represents the highest peak. And at that highest peak, you see, we have this concept called Leviathan. This was the concept of Atom or Atun before it became the biblical Genesis. The word Genesis is Najin, genie, the genie, the story of the jinn descending from the earth, descending onto the earth, I'm sorry. But uh, Aten is Leviathan, Aten, Leviathan. This is all dealing with, see, I told you what a levy is. When a levy, let me show you something about Leviathan or Leviathan. The seven-headed dragon is the seven chakras, the seven births and deaths of karma in the Hindu legacy. Now, let's talk about the word Leviathan or Leviathan. A levy is the word Levi. Now, what happened in Katrina when the levies broke? There was a flood, water. When you were born onto this universe and your mama's waters broke, you broke the levees, Aten was born in the seven-headed. Once your soul was conceived in this middle world, it filled up all the seven ethers with your energy. You flooded the universe with your essence upon birth. Each one of us did. So the great flood is when your mama's waters burst, you literally flooded the entire earth. Every baby born is introducing a new energy into the collective subconscious on earth. Every human born, once they enter this realm, they give off an explosion that goes out to the edges of the universe from them as a point of singularity. That is all your energy filling up each ether. You exist in all of the ethers and, and uh, uh, expanding out from the center one. And this how you get this symbol. Essentially, the Hindu is saying you're a ripple effect. The Hindus are saying you are a ripple effect. And upon landing here, it was like an EMP. It, it, it was a ripple effect sent out from you and, and permeating your, your infinite consciousness and, and separating it into seven dimensions called ethers. And, and because of that, we have to be born in and out of each one. And this is why he got seven heads. The same reason you got six more heads and six more dimensions other than this one. You go to those when you dream. Now, we're about to go deep in a minute. Hold on. Well, we are already deep on a start a startup. So when you see him coming up, uh, you, you notice a man is emerging out of a serpent. And that would be the same as this. See the name Jonah? It's the word genie. And the genie's lamp is the well. It's the world that we're in. And, the, and, and, and like I was saying, we all made our own portal to enter this world. And we will all have to make our own portal to exit this world. This is the secrets of childbirth. And this is what they're calling the Milky Way. This is also uh, what they're reverse engineering with CERN, and we're about to go into that in a minute. This is the real UFO, guys, that's going to take us in and out of other dimensions. Man has managed to reverse engineer the most miraculous thing about life, and that's childbirth and death. I'm going to say that again. The most advanced secrets in this universe is the secrets of life and death. These became watered down in religion when they told you, hey, ain't nothing special about life and death. When you die, you just go to heaven or hell. Now, they know they lying. That's why they are trying to reverse engineer the secrets of life and death while keeping you away from it with religion. Now, watch this. What religion told didn't tell you was that you are already immortal. Can't nobody promise no dang on 
infinite being immortality unless it has deceived that infinite being like it's a bag of flesh and bones and it's finite. Religion has put a stain on things of spiritual matters. And now anybody talking about this stuff is thrown in the same box as religious priests. But I'm here today to show you the science behind it like I've been doing all the many other days. Check this out, y'all. Again, we got to link this into Kanye West real quick because everybody's showing you this same concept of the one being mounted on Mount Calvary. Each one of us was born by ourselves and going to die by ourselves. The only thing in synchronicity is, 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 is this North Pole concept. Duality is an illusion of expansion away from this point. Now, check this out, guys. We see how this light, once it reaches the pyramid, it gets separated into a... See, this pyramid, you can look at it like this. Let me show you something. Because I, I really want you to understand and see this how I see it. And sometime I can show you how it's in my mind a little better. So watch this. Here is what this pyramid is. This pyramid right here is the tip of your macabre right here. We just zooming in on it. Now when you get ready to leave this thing, you don't leave as a human body. All of the light inside of your human body is extracted out of the top of this thing, just like we see here, just like it entered the, the Merkaba. See, watch this. Let me show you something. Before you came to this earth, this star was empty. Guess how this star was made? Watch this. I'm going to blow you away. I'm going to blow you away. I ain't going to tell you yet. I'm going to make you wait for it. It's that far. Watch this. I want to see if I can find something. Watch this, yo. You know what? Fuck it. I'm taking too long. Let's get back to it. I'm going to have to go for, say the dramatics, right? Basically, you got a triangle pointing up, a triangle pointed down. Watch this, right? When your mama and daddy came together, that's what they made. I want you to think about what I'm saying. When those two triangles came together, at the same time your mama and daddy was coming together. And they were building this Merkaba, this starship, this vortex, which is a portal that would eventually siphon you inside of it and once you entered this macabre you were projected in the world born in your own Taurus field out of your mama in your own bubble did what made this macabre was your mom and daddy that's the two DNA strands tethering together guys you just so happened to be a, 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 a light being, right, that was on a horizontal trajectory through the heavens. And right at the moment when the sperm hit the egg, the, the, the top triangle hit the bottom triangle. They crashed together. And there you were. Doctor said, yep, when, you know when the sperm hit the egg, that mean a baby going to be born. But on a macro spiritual level, the sperm hitting the egg, the mama hitting the daddy, the bottom triangle clashing with the top triangle, your higher self being repaired with your lower self. All of this is, is a couple of actions synced together with one action on many dimensions. On the earth, your mom and daddy getting it on and the biology of how that worked with the sperm and the egg on the micro, we know how that worked, all right? But at the same time, a shooting star just, just was traveling through the sky, but in its path, guess what happened? Woo, a black hole opened up and swallowed that shooting star. Imagine a shooting star traveling through the heavens, and right in front of it, this portal opens. 
Boop, intercepts it, closes up. The sperm hits the egg. The top triangle merges, traps you in the bottom triangle. Boom. Now, this is no different than you catching a bug outside with a lid and a jar. The bug is just flying on its way. Next thing you know, it's jarred inside of a new world that you got for it in this jar. That big bang for birth is the jar closing, sealing you in. In religion, they call it the great seal. That's the big bang, the crashing of the, this, this would, would be what a bug would hear. As it's jarred in its new world, it's born in this new little world with a culture. And it never, ever leaves again until death does it apart. You ever caught a bug in a jar? Did you ever release it before death? If you ever release that bug before death, that's no different than a person astral projecting. Bugs get re released, they come back, come in. The jar is the genie's lamp. Here's the genie in the lamp once again. So that we can understand that the light man mounted on top of cavalry was a very symbolic gesture to say, I have left the earth. I've left the earth. Jonah is the genie being liberated from the lamp. Like we see here in the Hindu. But to be at the zero degree point on earth is what he's representing here. Meaning, I'm done. I passed my class. And I was able to exit the earth. Here it is in Christianity right here. We can see Jesus coming up out of the vesica Pisces. The heart is a portal. And uh, in the middle of your chest is how the consciousness is released out of the body. And that would be, where's my little macabre one more time. Everybody hit like, do me a favor and hit like for me. Let's get let's let's get the numbers and hit like for me. Let's keep this series jumping. So here's the heart right here. This this front tip. That's the dimension of the heart chakra right here. So as we lay on our back, when we're prepared for death, they lay us on our back, not our stomach. Listen, we're born in a fetal position. Why don't they? bury us in a fetal position because the energy once it once it works its way all throughout the different vortexes of the body all of it bursts out of the chest like superman it the energy bursts out of this central point this is what the north pole is this represent the pyramid right here see the heart and the mind or what's going to aid in this ascension thing. That's why I was showing you it's, it's going to be between the crown, the heart, and the root. The thing is, all the, the, the heavenly side, the hellish side, it's going to even out and cause ascension through the middle. In other words, think of it this way. Energy coming from the sky and energy coming from the ground, right? A vertical crash would cause the energy to flow horizontal. You know what I mean? If I had a water balloon in my hand, if I had a water balloon right here and I clapped horizontally, the water would skeet vertically up and down. It's impossible for me to smash the water balloon horizontally and the water splash horizontally. It's a polarity law. If I smash, if I smash the water balloon horizontally, all of the matter will be dispersed vertically. And if I smash it vertically, 
all of the matter be dispersed horizontally. That makes sense to you? Even if you clap your hands horizontally, you can feel the air being released uh, vertically. Like, think about a uh, car collision. So my thing is this. It's similar to this. That's, it's the same thing, right, with this energy I'm showing you here now. So when you land on your back, these two triangles, the one at your head and the bottom, when they come together, the energy is going to burst out of the chest upward toward the heavens. Now, if they bury you on your stomach, it wouldn't change nothing. I don't think that'll change nothing. I'm just saying it's human ritual. The reason we don't bury a person any kind of way, like in the fetus or on the stomach, is because in my opinion or research here it was keeping this concept in mind it was just trying to honor this whole ritual and concept so you land on your back and your heart is pointed toward the sky your soul is released out of your heart boom that make a lot of sense but now check this out this is what this chart represent and then I want to just go deep with this resurrection thing because the highest chakra is the heart vortex the highest peak of all the chakras the tallest one is the heart energy field and that's the one that make it to the sky let me show you something real quick Let me show you. If you look at all these chakras, look at the symbol for the heart chakra. See that heart chakra is a six-pointed star. Because look, think about this, right? A triangle is three points, right? A triangle is three points. You got three chakras above the heart and three chakras below the heart. Those three chakras are making triangles like this. They ain't just stacked on each other. The three chakras below your heart, they are making a triangle that's pointed upward. And the three chakras above your heart those are the three points of a triangle pointed downward. And the heart ties them together at the chest. This is what locks you in your DNA prison. Your DNA mama, daddy, Taurus field here. You see here? Your daddy is giving you the testosterone, your mama giving you the estrogen, masculine, feminine. You can, and your whole life gonna be a battle between those and trying to balance the two. And that's why everything messed up in the world today. We're not being taught about this energy that's inside of us and how to harness it. So everybody out of control with their sex energy with the, the emotions out of control, rage, anger, depress, because we haven't been taught we are energetic beings and that if the energy is in motion, you need to be directing the traffic. It's a lot of stuff that's going on that they ain't teaching us that's happening on an unseen level and they've limited science to only what you can see. The only time you can talk about the unseen is when they giving you some fake space crap, like what I was showing you with the Milky Way. And then they try to make you see that with deception, when really all of this is, is this same vortex energy I'm telling you about. Now let's talk about Kanye West and show you, because now that we know all of this means ascension. Look at this guy here. When we leaving this earth, 
This is what's happening right here. Out of the middle of our brain, out of the middle of our heart, there's an alignment that happens, and we get beamed up to God once we align. Beam me up. Think about it. If a spaceship is trying to suck you up, it can't do it right if you're not directly aligned up under that right, that light. That light represents Christ. This is why we always talk about being in alignment with God and all that stuff, standing up right, because, look, this is what ascension looks like. I can show you pictures of Enoch right now, and then we can look at what I, here's what I'm showing you here is a because a lot of people may laugh at my little crazy drawing. But here is another way to look at it. This is religious art. I'm showing the same thing. Uh, and, and so this is what Raelianism hid from us. And it's no longer for us to be alienated to our astral body, our souls. That's what religion has done. Now let's move on and tie this into some Kanye West symbolism. Now that we know when Christ said, I'm the light, right? And that he's mounted on Calvary ascending. We don't ascend in the flesh. We ascend in the light body, in this heavenly robe that's pure white. And it don't get a stain. What is that? An anointed body. Boom. This is what we're talking about here. I can even show you other concepts of this in Samaria if that uh, uh if that's something you guys would like real quick. That won't take nothing but a minute. Let's do it. Since we want to be thorough before we go to Kanye. And then we're gonna go and read some of this stuff and break it down. Uh, Christ rising. You see Christ with his arms open, Mr. God Master. You can see him here rising up. He's mounted on top of Calvary. See, the Christ risen, right? This, this, this Christ that you see that made it out of the Babel Tower, See, and what you got to realize, and it's so much I got to get into. Let me show you what this tower is. We got to skip around. And I got to now skip to my little sources so that you can, because now a lot of folks may think I'm tripping. Here go the Babel Tower. Here go the Kaaba Cube that they worshiping in the Middle East. Science is a religion that gives man the ability to play God. And you better believe that what I'm about to show you is something we need to be alarmed about. Watch this. You ever seen them people wear a teflon on their head? Remember I showed y'all that? Look, this is what they wearing. You see this black cube on their head? This is what they can use to transmit your consciousness from out of your head, they already put knees on people's heads. So if you think I'm doing pseudoscience, then you the fool. You the Matter of fact, let me show you some. They was testing this with rats years ago. Hold on. Thank Elon Musk, because he his name means alien. Look at this, bro. They already put knees on humans now. You know, this was years ago. Now, look at that right there. Everybody had the mark on their forehead. In the near future, this is what everybody going to be. Everybody going to look like a damn unicorn, a damn unicorn, and they going to be able to get to the other side of the rainbow. Mythology has a very eerie truth to it when it comes to religion, technology, the nature of our uh, universe. But it's not scary once you start understanding it. Just check the symbolism out. Understand that you've already been sucked inside of a technological machine. But this quantum computer right here is what we see right here. We ain't the first to build a beast. Man has been trying to get free out of this thing. What All of these little layers you see, 
Those are universes that you're born in. You started at the bottom, like Drake said. And guess what? You got to be born all the way up this stairway to heaven till you can reach the throne like I showed you. This is a stairway. Each of these circles is a flat earth circle with the North Pole in it. It's its own Taurus. We're in one of these right now. In other words, dude, this is the damn genie's lamp. This is the genie's lamp. Now, I bet you I'm losing a lot of people today. <laughs> but but guess what, though? If you think I'm uh, all right, y'all ain't ready to go deep, man. Let me read some to you about realism. Let me read some to you real quick. Realism, also known as Relianism, is a UFO religion founded in 1970s France by Claude Varallon, known as Rail. Scholars of religion classify Realism as a new religious movement. And stop right there. Realism ain't no new movement. Realism is the foundation of all religion. It predates religions. Religion was created when man start to worship this technology of immortality. Let me show you some. You see this little DNA pattern, that Kundalini pattern going up the spine right there? That is your path up and down this tower. Your energy is flowing through a supercomputer, Neo, just like the Matrix. And your spinal cord is literally the pole in the middle of the computer. All of our chakra layers are the different versions of us that was born on each heaven. It's seven heavens in this thing. Let me show you something. I knew when I, the deeper I go with this thing that I would probably have folks like, okay, now you going too deep. Yeah, you ain't ready for it, man. Look at this right here. I'm trying to show you what this thing is. And I don't mind folks saying I sound crazy. Check this out. These chakra layers you see around the body are the different layers of a quantum computer. Now, I'm going to explain to you why the Joker, prisoners, and all these people wear pinstripes. Look at it. The devil, the whole concept of pinstripes, like with Freddy Krueger, the whole concept of pinstripes, like with prisoners, with clowns, clowns wearing pinstripes, because a clown is a clone, clone. The word clone. And they wearing the pinstripes because they are behind the bars which is we're inside of one of these. This was the golden calf Moloch. They, they sacrificed souls to it, and you were one of those souls that they sacrificed. Now, you want to know my theory? They sacrificed us in a future universe so that we can go back and learn time travel like the Mayan. Y'all say I can go deep as I want, right? I believe in a future universe which is also a past universe somewhere in ancient Babylon, we created the most future technology. We created time travel in the past. We traveled to the future, and we started to lose our humanity the more and more technology evolved in the future. And in order to get that humanity back, I think just, this is a movie they made too, where in a future world, they started sending souls back in time to the old world to figure out how we destroyed the world. Because people, we had evolved into, in the past, the Egyptians, the Babylonians, all of them cheated death. They started time traveling. They broke a lot of rules, and it trapped souls inside of these dimensions. The only way they can undo this shit, in my opinion, in a future, they're in a future parallel universe. And they sent some of the babies, they sacrificed them into the quantum computer to go back to the old world to see how we destroyed it. Now, in my little crazy theory, once we finally born out of this computer, you're going to be briefed. Some higher beings are going to sit you down 
and ask you about this place and everybody going to confirm the same story. We were stupid as fuck. We fucking started global warming. The technology went crazy. We're going to tell this story. And it's going to tell these future beings. And they're going to try to re-edit this whole thing to try to ch alter time to fix this thing before the great fall and bring us back. So think about, think about this, right? I, I'm just, y'all giving me the ability to exercise my mind power. So I'm going to do it, right? What I'm saying ain't all to it. There's more I want to say on that, but I'm going to stop right there and skip around. I want to talk about something and read on. The group is formalized as the IRM, International Raelian Movement. And, and it's, uh, hold on, Raelian teaches, here's the part I want to get to. Realism teaches that an extraterrestrial species known as the Elohim created humanity using their advanced technology. Y'all see that? Now, y'all know that the word Elohim is a very ancient Hebrew word. And to be dealing with such an ancient word and then saying that these beings created man with advanced technology, now we got to ask, what was that advanced technology? Well, the Elohim gave us clues. In the Bible, it said, let us make man in our image, right? Let's use that as some evidence and let's research it. What was the advanced technology that the, Elo that the Elohim used to make man in their image? Well, it started off with let there be light. Now, here is man being made in the image of light. It's, no, it's just a very simple thing. When the, the Elohim represents an, an, an ancient, advanced civilization of humans that achieved God-like technology on this earth. They became gods with the technology they achieved. And guess what? With that power, they were able to create their own universes and, and uh harvest consciousness in those universes. Guess what? You're one of those conscious beings. Why did we go to the Elohim's universe? Why would that allow it to be happen? Why wouldn't we be born in the true heaven? Elohim, all of this Eli, the God El, it's because it's elementary. It's elementary school. Whenever you see E-L-E, -E, that's the word Hulu, Halo, Helios, dealing with the Saturn test system. You being tested. See, everybody got the descend for they ascend, and a king got to be a foot soldier before he rise to the throne. The foot soldier lives in the footstool of God. Anybody on this trampoline got to push they self down before they can lunch they self up. Any bullet in this gun, I'm going to have to pull it back and cock it back before I can launch it forward, just like any bow, any arrow from this bow. That's a science to the universe. If you're going to be launched back to your throne or your true seat of power, the first spot you go to is here. If I tell everybody to jump right now, y'all going to bend down first. Check this out, y'all. We are an advanced species of spirits, but we can't unlock what we are until we make it out of this tower like Jonah did, like the rest of the gods did. You being tested right now. You being tested right now. See, that's why I said y'all think it's a game, and it is, but it's also a test, baby. You were, your birth was fake. You're running a semi, just like Neo. You see this dude being born up out of this, that's your final birth. After that, see, is, see now think about this, right? He's going to get briefed. These gods that you see on the outside, these are the ancient ancestors that built this tower, and, and this is how you get in this thing. This is Jonah coming out the well. 
Now, let me show you something about Kanye West so you can see that a lot of these people in power, right, they know about this stuff. In fact, they are old souls that are keep traveling to this world to relive their bliss in their heaven. But in order to do that, they got to make all of us slaves. Now, watch this. Here go a book. I keep showing you this dude here is an occultist. <clears throat> And what I like about this book, and I didn't read it, <clears throat> I just read, you know how you go online and it t tell you what the book about and all that. Trust me, I'm going to read it, though. But this dude, this is the Jonah coming out the well and all that. And you see when you get on this top mountain, the veil come up off of your face. Look at it, the veil coming up off of her now. Now, look at here. Here is your boy Kanye West. See how Kanye keep disappearing and coming back? They swapping the man out. Man, I we've been talking about body doubles, clones. We've been talking about all this shit for years, bro. And I, and I know I get laughed at talking like this, but I really believe this shit, man. This is what I, I really think our reality is way deeper than what the fuck we been led to think on it. Once you go on a rabbit hole hunt that I've been on, yeah, bro, I think I, I, if you ain't ready for the truth, just go somewhere else, man, because I'm going to go deep with you. Now, check this out. Here is Kanye West. You know what that mountain is? That's the whale's mouth. You don't see the crack right there? It's all symbolism because him emerging out of that volcano top Back in the ancient day, they had a god called Vulcan. Now, drop a one in the chat room if you ever heard of the god Vulcan. That god Vulcan is the god that emerges from the volcano, from the tube, from the pipe. And when you take the M off Mario, of course, you get... Aureo, aura, the light is what he represent. Mario traveled in and out of different worlds through pipes, through towers, through, through the whale's mouth. Let's take a look at Kanye here. It's time to open the eyes, guys. Ain't nobody going to break it down this simple. So if you can't see it when I show it, you probably ain't going to see it. God damn it. Now, I'm just, I, they sent me to break this shit down from a country boy simple perspective. And the ancestors said, I'm doing a damn good job, hey, with the collages and all that shit. Now, let's, you, you got to see how I see this thing. A lot of y'all, see, because this little crack that you see Kanye coming up out of, look, that's releasing the light that's trapped inside of the brain. You, these two hemispheres of the brain, that's the whale's mouth. Your brain got your mind trapped inside. And your mind can't get out of your brain until it goes through the labyrinth. You know what the labyrinth look like? This vortex up and down your spinal cord. It looks like the maze inside of this tower right here. You know what that is? The DNA matrix. It's seven levels, and you got to untangle out of each floor. And don't worry, you're doing it. You will. Now, check this out. Um, your brain is take. Let me show you something. The real you is this light in the middle of your brain. But... Think of a maze trick, like a maze trick, like Pac-Man board. That's Pan's labyrinth. This is what your brain is, a labyrinth. But your brain got your consciousness in it. Your consciousness is like the white mouse trying to make it out the maze. This is what we're in. So think of the maze as your brain and the mouse is 
your pineal gland. In order for this white mouse to move its way to, to go out the top, the high, the burst out the top, it literally got to work its way through all of the brain highways and separate itself. In, in other words, this egg got a crack. And then it's going to fall through the layers of the brain and unify back again on the other side. See, that's how that's another that's what I'm telling you about all of this concept, the pilot ejection seat. But it's got to go through the brain matrix. So that's called Pan's Labyrinth. That's what your body is, but we're mastering the body. We're see the whole thing about mind above matter. The whole thing about ascension is you can't trap a rat that a rat that grows big enough to see over the hedges. Them little rats that ain't expanded their mind, they can't see over them hedges. They in the maze. Let me explain something to you. This knowledge is opening up the third eye. That's making us start to see this reality from a whole nother dimensional perspective. That would be the rat that's in the maze that start growing height. He can see over the hedges now, and now that's kind of a cheat code. You know why? Because like I told you with Mario, the cheat code is to go through the pipe and you can skip through all them goddamn worlds. See, all of them worlds want to lead you doing this the hard way through Pan's Labyrinth, through the, the, the little right rat going through all this. You know what I'm saying? But the shit that I'm trying to activate right now is what's coming from the universe at this time is what they scared of because that's the cheat code that's the shit that when we activate this ain't no goddamn maze no more ain't no little games and no little labyrinth it's just the pipe that go boom that's what i was telling you about that ejection button that's letting me the rat see over the damn hedges and just hop right on out the goddamn square and when the rat, think, think of what I just told you, because I'm trying to show you the symbolism with this. Watch this. See, when the rat grow wings, your little game is over. Because guess what? He just going to fucking fly up out the box. And when the rat flies up out the box, they got a symbol for it. Cheat code. Right here. Look. Here go Christ mounted on top of Calvary. See, think about this, right? Christ was mounted on Calvary. Calvary is the cube of Saturn. Him being on top of it mean he cracked the Rubik's Cube. He cracked the Rubik's Cube. And that's how he's now on top of Calvary in the victory seat. That's Jack coming out the box. That open box is the whale's mouth. That open box is the whale's mouth. That's the wormhole. And if you look at what's allowing Jack to do that, it's literally a spring we have Easter and springtime, spring, resurrection, spring. And if you still think I'm lying about, see, all of these toys and folklores and mythologies got some truth behind them, man. You just got to know how to decipher it. Look at this right here. This is how we get the jack in the box shit. You see that? That's no different than this. This little spiral that he on, that's the kundalini energy. You're be, the, the, see, you're being held back so you can be lunch forward, man. 
That's what this energy is in, 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 in you, this little kundalini serpent in the spine that I keep showing you right here. See, imagine Jack in a box waiting to be popped out. This is what he would look like. Now, when you ascend to the top of this thing, you're going to look just like Kanye right here. Just like this cover, just like this brother, just like Jack. You are inside of a little bitty, let me show you what, what that box is right there one more time. Show y'all what that box is one more time. Hold on. Here it is. Here it is. This what you in, man. You're in a Teflon. And don't the word Teflon sounds like tough land, wilderness? You in the beast, the belly of the beast, in the tough land, in the wilderness, you're in the what? The tough land or the Teflon, Teflon. Don't let them play with y'all with these words, man. I do this. Y'all be thinking this shit so deep, you just got to open your eyes and ears. It's another language going over your head. That's why I like etymology and syncretism. Because they playing us like children and talking over our head like mom and daddy. Look at this rat right here. Look at here. This rat is outside of its body. Its mind is in a computer. See, the consciousness is in this black cube. And then it's beaming that shit into a simulation in a computer. And they are watching this rat run around in a computer. They knowing that its body in the box is like a zombie sleepwalking. See, the real zombie apocalypse is a world with everybody is really beaming their mind into a alternate reality, augmented reality, virtual reality, a simulated layer of reality over our reality. And if you could look at the real you, you would look like a zombie, like somebody with virtual reality goggles on swinging at the air like this rat, like the all of the ancient people that resurrected in their little zombie suits knocking stuff over. Y'all see it all the time. They show you the zombie, he's goofy, he can't, right, because he's in another dimension. This is what we're talking about here, mind beaming. Your body can be here, but your mind can be light years away. We, and we know that without the chip. So this is what it looks like. And I'm get, this is such an ancient concept that, guys, that's how I can really, like, even science said, if we can start now understanding time travel, simulation, and mind beaming and all that in our uh, time, then it's possible that ancient civilizations did, advanced ancient civilizations did. And they say that if that's possible, then we probably won't be the first generation to cheat death or create time travel. And then what brings it all home is when the smart guy said, well, duh, if we achieve time travel, and we able to go way back in the past, you would need another portal in the past. Duh. That means if I want to visit ancient Egypt, the pharaohs in Egypt already built the time machine, and each of these dates, right, each of these dates where each generation built their own time machine, those are called checkpoints. And you can time travel from and, and, you know, and shoot to those dates. Those checkpoints are chakra points. The word chakra, the word check comes from the word chakra. We can go pull up the etymology, which is chakra. Chakras are checkpoints due to ethereal dimensions. Each one is a check. It's a checkpoint system. Nike sign of victory, right? And we want to know why. You know, so when we put the check mark in the box, Symbolize completion. The check mark is you. The energy, the box 
it's the cube of Saturn. We said that's completion. If you think of a top of a sperm head inside of an egg and think of that check mark in the box, you will see that only the head of that check mark is in the box. Matter of fact, we got to show and prove. Everything we do is symbolic, and I want to show y'all some shit. Because I done figured this shit out. Thanks to the ancestors and the flat earth shit. Watch. Watch this, y'all. They show us these pictures so much, right? They'll show you, like, the sperm's head stuck in the egg with his tail out. That's symbolic to me. That's symbolic to me because all of this shit lines up. Like I said, the sperm, the check in the box is the jack in the box. Like, that's what I was telling you. The word check is the word jack. You see the word check and the word jack sound the same. And if you look at this check right here, they turned this into the Mario boot. I know some of y'all going to be like, he reaching. No, that's the Mario boot. Guess what else that is? The Santa Claus candy cane. Guess what else that is, y'all? Papa Leck Bar's pipe. Papa Leck Bar's pipe. It's the Santa Claus candy cane. They said that this God's number was seven. Seven in a box. Now I'm finna expose you circle seven niggas. Now I'm gonna expose you circle seven, five percent, all of you niggas. You more niggas, everybody with that circle, with that seven in it, I'm gonna show how y'all Masonic and Boule. Don't worry, I got you loading you up right now. Loan your ass up right now. And you can say, Brother Sanchez, brothers don't mean that with us. Well, you shouldn't be using it. You're using signs you don't know nothing about. You're an agent then. Nah, you ain't fooling me that Jay-Z don't know that. They got pictures of this man way back in the goddamn 1600s. Jay-Z probably 10,000 years old. That nigga's a soul. That's good. Man, I, I look at this world different than most folks. And if I really share this shit like that, well, too late. The world already think a nigga crazy. <laughs> Let me show you some. Don't you know when you say Elohim, that's how you get the name Allah? Mm-hmm. Why won't none of them teach you that? Let's pull it up. Look at the uh, etymology of Elohim. What comes up? Allah. Why ain't none of them going to tell you that? Why ain't none of them going to tell you that the word hilo is the word illo, which is the word elite. These are the elite, the iloha or the iloa is what they call them. And elohist, Elijah. See, when you talk about the, the word elo, guess what the word elo is? Halo, halo. All of these gods that wear a halo, elo. Elohim. Now, what is the H-I-M? The H-I-M is the word. Oh, yep. Let me go ahead and show your butt something. We going deep today. You know, with this series, it's going to get deeper and deeper. That's my way of saying, if you sticking with me for each part, I ain't going to let you down. Look at the word heem. What is the word heem? Anaheem, California. And this kind of him, over him, and him, him, him. What is himwa? It's the word home. Home is him. So let's put them together because the word him is home, and the word elo is halo. And when you put them together, you get halo home. Where is the doggone halo home? Asgard. The Elohim are the ones that projected themselves down to the earth from Asgard, from the Astro Garden or our halo home, the home in the heavens at the North Pole. In fact, they've been showing you this in the movies. Watch this. 
Watch this. Um, they said that the Northern Light is a ancient city, uh, advanced city in a place called Hyperborea where advanced beings live. Watch this. In a lot of movies, they show this. I'm going to try to pull it up, though, because I think it's called, damn, I put it up just a minute ago. They called it His Dark Materials, I think. That was the series they did it. Let's see. His Dark Materials. Yeah, here it go. So in this movie, this scientist blew up. He got popular because... He figured out that the northern lights were really the holographic projection of a heavenly city. Watch this, y'all. I'm going to show y'all something. The northern lights are like this. The way they move and stuff. Have you ever seen the northern lights? Let's look at the northern lights and let's compare it to holography and I'm about to blow y'all away today. Not going to play with you. You people came for advanced stuff and I'm uh, hey, S going to give it to you. Going to give it to you. S going to give it to you. <laughs> look at here. Look at the nature of the northern lights. Doesn't it look the same way like this? Like a person taking psychedelics? Yeah, you tapping into the holographic. Guess what you doing? When you taking them psychedelics and you seeing all them little patterns like that, people say when you take psychedelics, the world around you just become liquid. It just start to fade away, man. You enter this another world because you taking a hallucinogen, right? You just opened up a, a stargate in your mind. And the reason the reality start to liquefy is because you're going behind the wall. You can stir up this reality on the astral plane and it'll start to disturb the waters. And once you start to accelerate that, you'll see the other side. And that's when y'all start your hallucin hallucination. Now, as long as those waters are in motion, you opening up this portal to the other side, but when it settles, that's your high settling down. And you coming back to this dimension. This is why reality liquefies when, we, when you're taking that stuff. It's doing basically this right here. It's stirring up the light that's making up our reality and the stirring up of the light that's making up our holographic reality is used to create another reality above this one. So the northern lights represent all the ethereal light that's leaving our dimension, and it's all exiting at that zero degree point that I was telling you. And it will ascend to create a whole nother city in the heavens. The people in that city probably will ask the same questions we ask. Where did all of the physical material come from to make our world? It came from us. These lights represent the soul of the dead. The aurora borealis is literally the word aura. This is the aura of man leaving the earth. In a borehole or borealis. So it's a green serpent entering a hole. So that's the way they showed you this uh, in, in uh, the Hindu. So that's ascension. All of that light, when they ascend up to this point, they manifest inside of this world. And like I told y'all earlier, when you born in these worlds, your energy fills up this whole universe with you. You, you now explode your energy out into that universe. See, science say when a star is born, it bursts its guts all through the universe, right? They know what I'm teaching. They just telling you in another way. You the star bursting your guts through the universe. And the candy that we eat called Starburst 
it's stacked up in different colors like the Babel Tower in a cube like cylinder. Starburst and then the water breaking. All of this is symbolism. But check this out. His dark materials, the dark materials is the materials that make the holographic matrix. We, we turn our light into darkness. In other words, we damn we, we damn ourselves as we expand the light. And we, 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 everybody together is helping to create the universe. When certain people leave the earth, you can feel their presence gone. Like you sleep in the bed with three of your cousins and one of them got up, but you kept sleeping. Even though you can feel some left the bed like that, you can, like if your loved one pass away, boom, you can feel some. Mit so we're pulling away our energy that we filled up. That we, we all filling up this terrarium. We're infinite explosions. But the barriers of this earth containing us, but it can't, can, the only way, see what's happened is once we enter this thing, we explode. And all our energy fill this thing up from the middle all the way out. And then when we leave, we implode and go back up this mountain right here as a beam of light. You see that tree right there? That's why I was just showing you with Jack coming out the box. See how Mario throwing them peace sign? What I showed you about peace, what peace means. I showed you that. And look at the shape of this God emerging up out of that tube. You see there? And if you look at his wings open, he's like the tree at the top of this mountain. This is just telling this same story over and over. Now, give me a minute. We finna go forward. We, gonna, we ain't stopping. We keeping forward. Let's go. Take me. Get me, take me something to drink. See, same stuff. We're going to start with symbolism and then we're going to go back to our notes and stuff. We're going to get through these notes today. But I really want us to see this symbolism though. Uh, so check this out, right? We, we got our boy Kanye to showing you this same concept, right? Let's take this. You see the, the jack coming out the box. Right, and we compare that to the check coming out the box. Jack in the box is check in the box. The check in the box is literally no different than Jack in the box. All of this symbolism is synced together, sperm and the egg. So let's go back to the five percent nation, the circle seven groups are all based upon what? The Abrahamic faith. They all love to talk about what? Allah, Allah, Allah. You know why? Allah is the Elohim. The, the word Allah is a plural word. It's not a singular word. All right? The word Allah is equivalent to Elohim. I'm showing it to you. So, what we got to realize is that Allah is basically Hala, like a screen. And a screen on the top of a mountain will produce echoes. And what do they tell you? We live in an ecosystem, an ecosystem. And I already went over that in previous streams. How the true self is at the top of the mountain. And when they said, let us make man in our image, that was echoed six times in the underworld. And here we go with seven chakras. The Elohim are the ones that occupy this spaceship in the sky, but they beam themselves from their spaceship onto the earth. And they showed you this in the movie Avatar when the white soldiers had to get in the Avatar body to go to the world. They never left their ship. They only left their ship via out-of-body experience. 
in this movie, His Dark Materials, this dude went to the North Pole and he has some technology to basically translate the northern lights to help us kind of see what we're seeing into. And what he discovered was those northern lights was a whole city in the heavens. They call that the city of Asgard. The city of Asgard. As a matter of fact, let me show you some more about this city. Hold on a minute. Let me show you some more. Uh, here it is. Right here. This is Balkan cosmology. And that go to Cube, all of that. Look at there. Here go the city in the middle of the earth. That's called Elohim or Halo home. This is our halo home. The sky that is spinning above your head is a big mothership, man. Watch this. Watch this. Our sky. Watch this. Our sky is a huge mothership. And you are literally beamed up out of here through the central star. In the middle, right there. This is what our sky is, man. You're not on a globe. You're inside of a Taurus field. You're on a carousel. You're in a carousel type. And this is what even the Balkan said. Look at here. All of us are helping to spin the heavens because the, every human is a vortex that's spinning. And by the heavens, been, our, the energy field around us humans, it, it projects from you all the way to the sky, man. We some powerful beings. And that energy is what's happened to levitate the sun, levitate the moon. The sun and moon are floating on a huge ocean of electromagnetic energy that each sentient being in this little bubble has fit. We flooded this place. Everything with, with sentient energy inside of this bubble, it burst that energy outward and flooded it with an energy. All of that together is the great flood, water breaking, pregnancy. Every new being born here is introducing a new energy into this ocean. They're flooding it with their energy. So check this out. All of that energy is spinning. Imagine this thing is this this little world that you see here. It's spinning around, but what's hanging from it is the zodiac, like a carousel, and that's how the night sky is going around. But it's really sitting on top of a huge ocean of energy that we're making. Each being launching its energy field out. And that energy is spinning out. Your Taurus field is spinning. So if you set some on, just think of a, a bunch of spinning Taurus fields down here and you sit some on top of it, it's going to start making a wobbly, wobbly rotation now. Like we, like a, a, like you going to a football game and they doing the wave and everybody passing that man. You know, when a, when a celebrity jumps in the crowd and the crowd pass him around, that's what we're doing with the sun and moon. And even the comedic people showed you this Atlas lifting up the sky. Watch this. The comedic zodiac. You got these deities spinning the heavens. Watch this. Look at them here. Each one of us humans energy on this earth is helping to rotate the heavens. The more humans leave this earth, guess what, y'all? The sky is going to start slowing down. And scientists are already talking about that if you want to call me pseudoscience. Oh, my God. Scientists said in the near future, the earth going to have a pole shift where our sky, our stars and all of that 
slows down to and then and, and eventually come to a complete halt. And they said when that happened, everything on earth will simply be obliterated to extinction within a few hours. Like four hours from a whole world to nothing. I just watched the documentary on that. Because all of our energy in this realm is helping to keep the art just like we see here. Each one of us is helping to spin the heavens like a big pizza we tossing up and down and round and round. That's the name of the game. And if you look at what it's making, again, it's a clown collar. Imagine a frisbee that's rotating on the floor and it's got an even energy. It's spinning, but it's also wobbling. That's what they're telling you the earth doing, revolving and rotating. It's just, so this is the, what's going on. And when enough of us start uploading into another universe, the heavens will slow down. That will, imagine a bunch of these guys just disappearing. Eventually, this thing will stop spinning. The more people we take away from this thing, we're collectively making it. There's going to be a great shift in our time based on people going inside of this new mind uploading they're doing and all that. They're going to cheat death and open up the portal. And they, that shift they telling you is going to be a pole shift that's going to really, it's going to end this world. But by then, they will have been made a new world. Everybody be going to help spin that one. When they said, come spend time with me, this is what we're doing. We're spending time together, literally. Oh, my God. If time is created by the rotation of the heavens, and we see here in the comedic description that we're all spending time together. <laughs> Damn, that's crazy. Yes. Literally and none literally because it's a paradox. It's just crazy how these words just it, it, when it click, it clicks. You know, we say a lot of stuff in our society and the lexicon and we don't know the science of where this stuff come from. Come spend some time with me. When two people connect together, they on their own time. Time may be going very slow to them but the world outside will be moving fast or time may speed up with them. They said time fly when you're having fun. Uh, I will ain't perceived the same to everybody. Time is based on perspective. Because check this out, y'all. All of us is helping to spin the heavens together on a macro level, but on the inside, each one of us is our own miniature universe spinning our own world around us. That's the unified, the grand unified theorem, the grand universe that we all partake in. And then that's the macro, the outer. And then the inner universe, which is yours. Don't nobody outside. That's private. That's private. Now, guess what? The inner universe is what we're giving them access to now with technology, with mind uploading. We allow them to now access something that was private. Now they can now enter your inner universe, each of us. <laughs> you see, a lot of things going to change with man entering these new levels of God-like abilities. And it's nothing new. It's just people been doing this for generations, and it's happening in our time. So they showed about this in this movie. You can go watch it. And uh, again... All of these Circle 7 groups, they know the, the truth. Allah, you know, Shalawam. All of these do like the, hey, all of these Abrahamic faith groups, these are all of your religions. Think about what I'm telling you. Religion only exists in the technological worlds. In the jungles and in the other places, Ain't no religions. It's spiritual systems. Spiritual systems. The everywhere you see religions is everybody is into ufology, realism. The news anchors are saying, oh, we spotted a UFO ship over here. 
oh, the Pentagon releasing the UFO documents because the Pentagon is the what? Five-pointed star of Satan releasing the doggone deception, the trickery out there to fool you, false signs in the heavens. Yeah, so I want you to understand something. Let's go to the board. Let me get some, some, hold on. You got to understand physicality is a matrix. I think the other camera going to be better for this one. Let's go here. Yeah, that's better for the board. Physicality of matrix, yo. The material world is the matrix world, the material world. Now watch this. All of your gods taught you, even the Maya said, don't get taught up, caught up into materialism because it will make you one with the God rail of the underworld. You will be mated, married to him. Mate, realism, realism. Being born in this underworld mated us with realism. This ancient Elohim technology that created our bodies, our avatar, that created the simulation. You wasn't born into sin. You were burned into a simulation like a CD disc. You were burned, copied, cloned. And this advanced technology that created our world and our bodies is materialism technology. It's how the soul becomes flesh by mating with this ancient tech. This shit is old. This simulation is old. And it's based upon realism, what we just read. What we just read. We've been mated and married to this techno not technological system of realism. And we got to divorce it. We got to break the bond. Let me show you guys something. Anybody in my chat room, moderators, giving the negative vibes, get rid of them. If they don't want to be here, they don't have to be here. And, you know, I'm not even paying attention to the chat no more, but damn. Yeah, uh, uh, ain't nobody... Like the level of research I'm giving you, any haters here, you know, we, we getting you up out of here. 2023, man, look here. Get on up out of here, man. We ain't got time for it, man. Look at this right here. Now, look at this right here. Come on, man. I know what I'm talking about, man. Let's keep this thing moving, though. All of us helped to hold up this whole thing. Just like we see in this image right here. You see that? Those ley lines is, is personified as deities in comedic. As deities. And here it is in Christian. Come on, man. Who ain't nobody deciphering this shit like this? And I ain't trying to be egotistical. But let's keep it going. Again, the word Allah. It also becomes the word Yahweh, y Yahweh and all that stuff. Boom, you know, you could do. They don't want y'all getting into etymology. 
That's going to reveal everything. Get into etymology, y'all. Now, let's read, y'all. Let's read. We see I went on a rant with this advanced technology so I can show you the quantum computer. So I can show you the advanced technology that we're in that they're calling the golden calf. All right. The halo home or Elohim. When you say Elohim, you're saying crown him, basically. And everyone that's crowned, that means you got a crown chakra. And you is capped inside of the fucking terrarium. Elohim. That means halo that man. Put his light crown on. Halo him. Crown him. Elohim. Elohim. The crowned kings on the earth. The fallen kings who wear the crowns of light. That's you and me. That's what this vortex in the middle of the realism represent, that seal in the back of your head, that, that, that point where all the ley lines are swirling right here, see? Where all those lines of light are meeting that right there. And then they making this big turning pan of braiding up like a braid and rope, and that's what's making this kundalini tower, this Jack's beanstalk to the heavens right here. This is your Rubik's Cube from a top view. This is a, the cube right here. In the, you do know in the middle of this macabre is a cube. Boom. This is just another way of showing you it's the Rubik's Cube. Now, the realism, realism people into realism, they ain't going to let you know off the top. You got to peep certain things because it's still kind of a secret society. It's still an elite group with an elite secretive agenda and the, and, the, and the motive behind the agenda can't be known everybody that is it if everybody knew these people really wanted to harvest they soul but people literally saying that in their religion like when i was in church we had a harvest time and they'll tell you yeah because christ coming back the great harvest the harvest the souls that's when they've dumbed us down and deleted our memory so much in this simulation that we forget who we are. And now at that point, we vulnerable to technology and to hand over our soul. We fall into a low state and it tell you when they get you at that low state, they're going to start cloning your ass. Look at that, man. Nobody making this up. Now, let's keep on going and let me show you what these folks be, what their mentality is. It's an atheistic religion. Now, people, I battle atheists every day. Atheists still have a religion called science. Remember, science denied God, but still gave you the Big Bang. And no, if you ask any atheist, where did everything come from? They'll say, bro, the Big Bang. And they think that they ain't in a religion because they just traded the name Allah, the name Jesus, for the name Big Bang. That's just the name of your God, Big Bang. And you know what the Big Bang is? Right here. Everybody worshiping the Big Bang. No matter what religion they in, they worshiping the Big Kaboom, the Big Bang. But what separate the liars from the truth tellers is they is we're telling you what caused the Big Bang because we know we in cause and effect effect. You can't give us an effect without a cause, but that's what these people do because they're atheistic. They're going to deny the cause and give you the effect. And that's when you know you are dealing with a deceiver. A person that believes in the Big Bang and they ask is when there to see it and they yelling at a Christian who wouldn't dare to see let there be light. Stupid. You hypocrite. That's right. Ain't no such thing as an atheist. It's just a nigga that's denying a cause but still maintaining an effect. Stupid. No goddamn such thing as an atheist. It's just a nigga that's denying, God damn it, that, 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 that is saying that it's all a polarity, but only giving you one side at the origin point. See, people, let me share something with you. This is a duality, a duot we in, man and woman, up, down, 
masculine, feminine, sun and moon. Cause and effect, which is what pregnancy is. Because the man dropped the seed, the effect is a human tree grew. Cause and effect. But what happened is what religion did, it gave us a self-created God that didn't have a goddess. He had a system of rule which is, was in effect but no origin point or cause to it because there is no kingdom without a mother and a pussy and a vagina. Ain't no throne, ain't no kingdom, ain't no soldier, ain't no army, ain't no heaven, ain't no angel. You had to give this God a self-created God when every man got a belly but knowing he come from a woman. And, in, and, that's, and it's as above, so below. Let the will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Motherfuckers are born from women on earth. So God, you see where I'm going with this? Why ain't motherfuckers born from women in heaven? What happened to God and goddess? The realism and atheists took it away. And they all anti-woman. So now we got a God with no woman. And you got a big bang. With no, so, didn't your mama water break? Boom, that was the big bang. They giving you the boom, but not the source site, which is mama. My explosion of life started from between her legs. That's where my life unfolded from. So in micro and macro, when you think about the Big Bang, no, they ain't going to say that what caused it. Because now we got to talk about the Great Mother, which is what the Milky Way galaxy symbol is, a womb, which is what you see in the symbol of this realism star. We're going to beat up on them. You know we're going to beat up on them. Let me show you about this realism symbol. What I told you, you circle seven phonies, I'm going to get you with your ass. I'm not scared of none of you goddamn Abrahamic ass brotherhood ass niggas. I don't like you, 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 you Jay Z ass loving ass celebrity ass niggas. Circle set bucket hat wearing ass niggas. This is what the fuck the fez is. It's a fucking form of the Teflon. Yeah, tell them that. Right. Let's let's show you, boy. I don't fuck with you costume uh, ass niggas like that for real, for real. No, but Drew Ali was in the circus, and I'm going to do a show on that nigga that's going to make every mo mad at me because I'm going to go in with the roasting and the knowledge on No, but Drew, Drew Ali. Be on the lookout for it. Be on the lookout for Brother Sanchez spanking some behind in 2023. These guys don't know what they talking about. Now, let's get it, y'all. This is what the fez on the head represent. You see that? This is what it represent, y'all. All of these circle seven groups, that seven is spinning around in the middle of that Merkaba. You see this seven? It ain't just sitting there. It's spinning around in the middle of that star. And you know what that is? The symbol of realism. The symbol of realism. When you spin that seven around in the middle of the vortex, you see how they all connected. It's the same religion. All of these Abrahamic faiths. Yeah, man, because Abraham is the god Saturn. All of these white long beard wearing niggas. Look at here. I told you the devil got this long ass beard on like that black dude on that Devato commercial. Detect this. Goat chin ass niggas. Scruffy thoke ass niggas. Now let's keep this thing moving here. <laughs> yeah. We can't never let them goats get uh, comfortable. They goats, ain't it? Yeah, yeah, we can't. We ain't gonna let y'all. We gonna... 
make sure we come up and, and wedge at your ass every now and then, fool. Now watch this. It said an atheistic religion. Watch this. Hold on. Show y'all these folks time out they some atheists. When you go God the Big Bang. An atheistic religion, it holds that the Elohim have historically been mistaken for gods. It claims that throughout history, the Elohim have created 40 Elohim human hybrids. Goddamn, the 4040 Club. Shit, Jay-Z. I'm just thinking out loud. Who have served as prophets preparing humanity for news about their origins. Among them are the Buddha. Jesus, you see, all of the gods of Abrahamic faith. I'm telling y'all that Buddha is another little short, smelly, fat motherfucker, just like the Satan and the devil and 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 Bess up in Egypt. Yeah, tell that nigga Sarah, Satan, Satan, Seti, Satan, and Pharaoh Aten. Yeah, yeah, bro. Let me, let me. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah you, you know. Listen, man. Y'all Egyptian niggas is worshiping Buddha. That's the god best in Egypt, nigga. With his little fat belly, little fool on. Like, ooh, I just want to just beat you up. <laughs> just a little spun clown looking motherfucker. Your god ugly as hell, son. How you going to lead a great mother and worship this shit, son? Let me show you what your God look like. Y'all niggas out y'all mind. You going to kneel down to this mother motherfucker go to Egypt. This is the God best. And then pull this motherfucker out. Man, set it. Sit your ass down. I won't smoke with everybody. Right, right, nigga. The ancestors didn't tell me to beat you niggas uh, uh, nicely. I'm a, I'm, I, you've been beating up on a great mother for years, nigga. How y'all niggas abandon a great mother for this, this, this nigga here? It's what you did. Look at your God, son. You smoke crack, don't you? Ain't that your God, son? <laughs> niggas talking about they want to, uh, they got smoke for, for, for Buddha. When nigga, you, 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 you worshiping goddamn Buddha. The golden calf, the golden statue. This man personifying a quantum computer. And you know why his belly is so fat? Because the souls of man is in his belly. This the God sat and full off the souls of man. They told you that the beast was devouring the children in the end of Revelation. That the beast was devouring the children. Guess what, nigga? I'm going to give that beast a tummy ache, and y'all going to help me. You, you, you see, you got to realize you in the belly of a beast that's testing you. And the quickest way for him to spit you out is to kick and say, uh, uh, yep, I'm in your belly, bop, 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 I'm piercing guts and shit, nigga. He going, oh, we got to get Sanchez out of here. Uh, yeah, nigga. We ain't let him back in there, no, because I'm going to fuck you up. You, you in a good position. What you think Jonah was doing inside of that well? Sticking the fuck out of them guts. Bitch, let me out. Mm-hmm. See, the rest of them ain't fighting. This beast gonna realize he swallowed. <laughs> he swallowed one of them motherfuckers that's gonna cause you some pain. Every now and then, you, you, you get a virus in your stomach. Stomach ache. And you gotta vomit that up out of there. And you feel so much better after you vomit, don't it? And that's what Jonah made that whale do. You can't just be in the belly of this beast sitting back like this. You got to be in this belly of the beast kicking ass like your boy if you think he going to let you out. Now, come on now. You got to call that beast so I can't wait to get Sanchez to fuck out my belly, nigga. I ain't, ooh, nigga, my, my shit, I got shot pains every goddamn way. Shit. Get him out. Yeah, you'll never swallow me again. See, and that's what I'm a virus. You, you got to become a virus in the goddamn system. 
Cyrus the motherfucking virus. Nigga, y'all in this beast belly and, and you acting like food. Settling and, and, and becoming a turd. Nigga, I'm in this beast belly and I'm a motherfucking live virus. I'm making this nigga vomit and shit. I'm making these devils regurgitate. Right, all of that damn shit you, you, your forefathers been saying for years, but this truth that I'm bringing shining through all that old bullshit, nigga. That Kemet shit, that Abraham, all that, nigga. Yeah, I'm just coming with ancient spirituality. Simple, nigga. Not no atheism, not no dumb shit. And if a person want to get in tune with what their ancestors was in tune to, tell them, come over here where the golden wings at. Tell them, send them over there. Send them on over there where the golden wings at. Please like and share the video. And don't forget to subscribe and hit the notification bell. Be sure to select all so that you can receive notifications every time we go live and upload to the channel. Yeah, these niggas in this belly of this beast becoming turds. And y'all up in this belly of this beast worshiping. Nigga, I said, Sadie, show me your God. He said, this is the God Bass from Kimmy in 1895. Nigga, come on. Black motherfucking power. Oh, nigga, I'm going to do a whole show on the black power religion. Let me write that down on my board real quick. So I don't forget it. Hold on. I ain't even capping, nigga. Black power presentation. One minute and we finna get it. Hold on. Niggas don't know nothing about a Taurus field talking about some power, nigga. I don't care what color you put in front of it. We gonna bang on it. Now let's get it. Now let's talk about your God right here, son. I ain't through with this motherfucker. I really want to take some time and just roast y'all niggas gods, but I ain't got time. I got to go and move forward, son, but I just had to show you what you worshiping, what you got your energy tied up into, son. Let me get on back to the knowledge. <laughs> they got our folks out here worshiping all this shit, bullshit uh, gods. Uh, old ass white men with long beards and little leprechauns and fat men and little, little just little crazy shit. Elohim and little go goblins and goos and shit. Let, let me just read some more of this here. When it's just all about technology. Watch this, y'all. Among them are the Buddha, Jesus, and Muhammad, and Rael himself, the 40th and final prophet. Raelists believe that since the atomic bombing of Hiroshima in 1945, which is when they went to war with Hitler around that time, and look at what the symbol that they adopted. Y'all don't see that this during the same time of Adolf Hitler. And that, that's Hitler's sim symbol, the swastika in the middle. I ain't going to talk no more about that. That's all I'm going to say on that. You can do the rest. You know that if you want to get my documentary on A.H., you know, Adolf Hitler, then, you know, I'll lead a link to that. I, well, at the end of this stream, stream, I'll post a link to that documentary on this stream in the video description and pin it to the comments where you can tie that in with, with, with the Hitler thing on your own because they... That's one of my strikes right now. Now, everybody do me a favor and hit the like button. It said humanity has entered an age of apocalypse in which it threatens itself with nuclear annihilation. Now, guess what, guys? There's a movie that I just watched that was talking about this shit. And I, damn, man, I wish I could think of the title. Where this chick built the time portal and he kept getting caught in this little warp. And, uh, shit, what was the name of that? I just watched it the day before yesterday, man. 
I'll, I'll let you know. I'll even put it in a description or something. But it's always about the world ending and some kind of shit that's going to wipe out all life on Earth when scientists are uh, researching this advanced technology. I already went over that. Let's move through this. Realism holds that humanity must find a way to harness new scientific and technological development for peaceful purposes. Ain't that what's going on on the Earth, y'all? Isn't that what's going on on the Earth right now? Isn't that what's going on right now? You see the science and the religion coming together. Realism is religion. All of these Abrahamic faiths is Zion science, the new kingdom of science. They said when they speak of peace comes sudden destruction. We think that we can use more science and more technology to get up out of this trouble when we just read in the beginning that the ancient gods in the past created this simulation with advanced technology. And we think more and more advanced technology is, is going to bring us peace. When this is how war, disease, pestilence, and all this started in the first place. And we think more of that. Go OK, we so it's say in that when this has been achieved, the Elohim will return to Earth to share their technology with humanity and establish a utopia. Ain't that what all religions teach? That in the end of the world, God going to come back and make everybody immortal like he was and give everybody a white robe of light just like him. Look at this pop smoke. See, the rapture is already taking place and it's starting with the celebrities first. Just like in the Bible, it was the Enoch's and the John of Patmoses that ascended to God first. Check this out. Because these folks selling their souls. Now, it's, it's, now watch this. All other religions say that when these, no matter what religion you in, when the world in and your God come back, he going to establish a new kingdom where he shared the technology that was in heaven onto the earth. That's what we read. Let me get my camera back up. I don't know why Zoom always timing me out, man. That's something they got to work on. I'm going to have to see how to... adjust that or whatever but yeah so that's what we've been told the, the, in the bible guess what it say when christ come back he ain't gonna send y'all to heaven people think listen just hear me out for a minute all of y'all christians think when you die you go to heaven stupid when you die you lay in your grave in purgatory until christ come resurrect the dead Ain't nobody dying and going to heaven if you're a Christian. You trapped on the astral plane waiting for Christ to come resurrect the dead. And when Christ resurrect the dead, the living and the dead will live together on earth because Christ going to come with the new technology that connects the realm of the dead with the realm of the living. That's called the future, near future technology. That's what I'm telling you. Religion and science was always the same thing. That's what realism is. Everybody religion telling them the same thing that the realism people are saying. The religion you got can't, listen, realism started in the 1600s. Guess when America was founded? Around the 1600s, 1700s. What did they bring over here? Religion. Relianism. 
The tribes that was here didn't have a religion. They had a spiritual system. Now they are religious. And they believe in a sky daddy that's going to beam them up to the heavens. Because they are religious. They've been given a religion. The people that colonized this land, they didn't. You got to understand what Christianity is, man. You got to understand what Christianity. Christianity is your form of realism. It don't matter how you believe in this alien God that's going to beam you up, Scotty, long as you believe in it. And your religion is your, your way of believing in it. And different people, they got to make a different religion for them in order for them to understand this lie, this deception. That's why it's so many different forms in different places. But everybody is saying the same thing, getting everybody hopeful towards cheating death. But you, you don't have to die again. You will never age again. The realism people came with anti-aging cream. They came with dyes to, to, to uh, dye your gray hair out your head so it don't look like you're old. The people in the tribe was like, look at these dummies trying to cheat death, trying to put on creams to stop wrinkles and dyes to stop their hair from graying. Our tribal people was like, yeah, they dummies to us. Now we're like them. Now you can't see reality no other way. Yeah, these are the people who, see, now check this out, because I want to keep reading. To this end, Raelians have sought to build an embassy for the Elohim that incorporates a landing pad for their spaceship. Oh, my fucking God. Oh, my fucking God. Watch this, y'all. Watch this, y'all. Oh, my God. Watch this shit right here. We physicists are now looking into the brain itself and we can see blood flow and we can even see thoughts, thoughts as they're being created. And we can now show that certain old wives tales are correct. Every parent, for example, believes that their teenage children suffer from brain damage, act mentally retarded. Absolutely. We will be on the moon, our consciousness, we're going to shoot it into. Now, I personally believe that it's retarded. Absolutely true. We can quantify the effect. We can measure it by measuring the drop in blood flow to the cerebral cortex. Now, I personally believe that one day we will digitize the entire human brain. And what are we gonna do with it? I think we're gonna shoot it into outer space. We're gonna put our connectome on a laser beam and shoot it to the moon. We will be on the moon, our consciousness will be on the moon in one second. One second without booster rockets, without all the dangers of radiation or weightlessness, We'll be on the moon in one second. We'll shoot it to Mars. We'll be on Mars in 20 minutes. We'll be on Mars. We'll shoot it to Alpha Centauri. We'll be on the nearby stars in four years. And what is on the moon? On the moon is a computer that downloads this laser beam with your consciousness on it. Oh my God! If you ever, if you ever think I'm teaching pseudoscience, just listen to this nigga if you think I'm tripping. This man just told you what they are. These people ain't humans, y'all. These people are not fucking humans. I'm sorry, man. They humans, but they spirit are like from some. Listen, it say Raelians have sought to build an embassy for the Elohim that incorporates a landing pad for their spaceship. Man, that man is telling you about the moon base. Look. Raelians engage in daily meditation because they going to the other side. All of these goddamn celebrities, when they get money, they say, I'm into yoga. I'm into meditation. You into leaving your body now. All of y'all celebrities abandon y'all religions and you step it up a notch because now you are ascending to the heavens to meet God. See, these celebrities are like the Enoch of our time, the John of Patmos. Once you get initiated into these elite, the Elohim elite places, 
You have the out of body meeting with the devil on the other side, nigga. The out of body experience with rail. The, all right, y'all think this shit crazy. Look, Raelian, look, it said Raelians engage in daily meditation facts because these folks that's got money, they, they knowing about how to astro project. Look, they hope for physical immortality through human cloning. What do we say? Gucci a clone, Jay-Z a clone, Kodak Black a clone, Kanye West a clone. I wouldn't be surprised if all the motherfuckers clones so cloning is, is say in the end of days, they're going to introduce this Raelian technology that they using for the elites. They're going to do it for everybody. It said that we just read that in the Bible. We read that with the Raelian shit. It said when the Raelians take over and come back to the earth in the end of days, they're going to harvest your soul with the technology that come from their world. The false light. Lucifer. The light bearer. But it's the false light. This this light. This this is a Raelian agenda, y'all. It's a Raelian agenda. And that's what he's telling you. He's talking about the base that the Raelians want to establish. They landing pad near the moon, the moon matrix. I keep showing you Kanye West with the moon behind him. Why ain't Polaris behind him? Because look at what Makai Kaku said. He said, with this technology, we're going to shoot you to all of these stars like Alpha Centauri, Jupiter, Venus, Mars. But we ain't going to shoot you to the North Star because they want to misdirect your energy. They want you going in circles around the quantum computer. They want to launch you to the moon, to Mercury. All of these are Greek gods that's eating you up. In the fraternity, they spit the egg out of one nigga mouth and spit it into the other nigga mouth. That's how they going to spit your damn egg, yo, which is the pineal gland, out of the world of Yahweh into the world of Jupiter. Then when Jupiter get through with you, he going to vomit you out into Mercury's mouth. And they going to keep, you going to be born again through these male gods, through regurgitation. Passing the egg is what they call it. Humpty Dumpty is the sacred egg. That's the Easter egg. That's the soul. That's the little yellow yolk in the middle of your brain. When they crack the brain open and get the yolk out, they spit it out of each God's mouth into the other mouth. They want your soul to go to Jupiter. All of these different gods with tech. Because let me share something with you. These stars you see in the sky, these are satellites that was created in Babylon, Acadia, Samaria. Like Orion system, that's a matrix, nigga. When you die... They want you to go to Orion like the Pharaoh. They Makai want you to go to the moon. Like that son said, shoot me to the moon. Who sang that song? Fly me to the moon. These people, they they got there was a God called Sin. He's the moon God. They have a satellite holographic. The moon is like a holographic satellite. That's projecting souls back into this matrix that Makai Kaku talking about. They already built this system in the ancient world. They rebuilding it again. A moon based lunch system. That he didn't say nothing about shooting you to Polaris because they don't want you to get up out of here, bro. That's the way out. That's the sky vault up out of here, Polaris. They want you to go to the moon, Venus, Mars. 
Let's explore. That's see. Look at here. Everything that technology and science is doing to our world is a Raelian agenda. Now you ought to understand why that blue six-pointed star, what Judaism is about, and all the Abrahamic faiths. So now let's talk about the egg game, because now we about to go deep. Listen, females, your eggs are little bitty stargates. Once a consciousness enters that stargate, it stretches it into a fetal bag and starts it big bang, its expansion process. Your egg is very tiny. That tiny egg is what stretches into a fetal bag and ultimately a human in a Taurus field and ultimately, boom, we blow up, we scratch too far. And all the energy in us burst back out like they said when a star explodes and all of your energy is redistributed back out to the universe to be perfected, to make a better version of you. They don't want you to get to that. People, they've been buying females' eggs for years. And now, people say that it's aliens living under the ground. Israelians living under the ground. These are an advanced species of humans that treat cheated death and they live on through cloning. These are the sons of God that made it with the daughters of man. But they did it through cloning an incubator, taking the egg of a woman, which is a stargate, and allowing a demon to come in through that stargate. That's how the sons of God entered this world. Because check this out, y'all. Each of these universes are literally, like on a natural tip, these are baby universes for us to learn and explore our spirituality and get big. It's like a shared cocoon for a bunch of caterpillars. That's what nature did. Instead of having one caterpillar and one cocoon, she put each of us caterpillars in our own cocoon, then threw all of us in a big-ass cocoon together called Earth. And whichever caterpillars ripen first, they are saying out of here first. The rest stay in the bottom crabs in the bucket till they get light enough to grow wings. Hit the like and share button. But they taking the eggs of the females and they have been, they creating whole civilizations in the inner earth that never come up to the surface. For all you know, it's a version of you miles under the ground that'll never come up. And they telling him, you can never go to the surface because if you go up there, you're going to die. If we break through up there, our world going to die. You know they got some kind of spooky shit to keep them from never coming up. Just like they got a life to keep us from exploring and shit, with, you know. So they separate all these, cut these beings with the lie. And, and, and the thing about it is what I think is going on with these eggs is they need these eggs in order for them to reproduce themselves on some reptilian shit. Because it said out they, they achieved the immortality through human cloning. Now, these pharaohs had hundreds of wives, and I'm sure that they would have been harvesting their eggs even in that time because they were very advanced. And so if you think about what we're saying here, this is, this is, this is just, I mean, I, we need to like and share the video. I'm going to keep reading. It says that they promote a liberal ethical system with a strong emphasis on what? Sexual experimentation. <laughs> you know why, y'all? Because... The natural way of our sexuality will aid in the ascension of our souls. Sexual experimentation means skeeting it on the belly, skeeting it on her eyes, 
hey man, I skeeted it on her back, I skeeted it on this way, skeeted it that way, anywhere other than the bullseye. Now remember how I just told you we all were born. We all were born because we hit the bullseye. That meant your daddy was a straight shooter, your daddy aimed right. Your daddy didn't skeet you on the damn bed or skeet, you know what I'm saying? Sexual experimentation have to be in the society in order for them to harvest a woman's egg. In order for them to have a sperm bank, they got to create some called masturbation. That sexual experimenting nature didn't make jacking off. That's something that the masters made masturbation. You can even see the Pharaoh holding his thing. He ain't just hold, he holding it like nothing. Because his semen, I hate to go into all that, but y'all, they anointed the document. He swore in with his balls, his lineage. That was an ejaculation. Don't let these comedic priests tell you no, no lie. Lies. Sexual experimentation was a highlight in ancient Egypt, baby. They experimented with sex in Babylon. In Sodom and Gomorrah, yes, they were experimentalists when it came to sex. And they brought up Buddha, right? What comes from Buddha's land? The Kama Sutra. Oh, my God. All the freaky shit in the Kama, Kama Sutra, God damn it. <laughs> and the Buddha shit is the God best with the Raelian shit. One thing about these Raelian folks, they show taught us how to be freaky in the motherfucker. And all of their music is about sex and shit like that. And their music is over-sexualized with space sounds. With these space sounds. You know, like Will I Am and shit. You know, like the digital music. That's what the Raelian souls are. We're, we've been infiltrated and don't even know it by a whole nother advanced species we've been harvested by them and don't even know it rail first published his claims to have been contacted by the elohim in his 1974 book he subsequently established an organization devoted to promoting his ideas my deck which in 76 disbanded and was replaced by the Raelian Church. Rail headed the new organization, which was structured around a hierarchy of seven levels. What are those seven levels? The seven ethers, the seven circles on a quantum computer. I told y'all. Look, attracting more followers, the group attained a country estate in France before relocating its operations to Quebec. In 98, Rail established the Order of Angels, an inter internal all-female group whose members are largely sequestered from wider society and tasked with training themselves to become Elohim's consorts. Now, they're going to go into how the Order of Angels was basically an all-female society created by Rail just for the purposes of of harvesting these females for eggs so he can get their eggs. Oh, my God. I told y'all that this been going on for a long time. Humpty Dumpty was an egg that fell, had a great fall. You did, too. The egg, this yoke is what we call in Jack falling down the hill with Jill, the woman. The consciousness of man and woman and the great fall down that hill. Our consciousness landed on the tip of a pyramid. Imagine a ball, a water balloon falling and it land on a pyramid tip. Boom, it bursts open and all of the liquid flows down the sides of that pyramid, all the py pyramid uh, walls of that pyramid. Each drip is another version of you that shattered from that big ball. The God ball. Each drip of you got to climb back up the, the Babel Tower and meet back up at the top and unify to become that ball again. And boom, you beam, beam up out of here like I showed you. The path of ascension. 
You were a unified ball that fell onto the tip of a pyramid. That's the Santa's hat, the birthday hat. Boom, that ball crashed Christ and became basically seven chakras, seven layers of you. And that pyramid became this Merkaba. You see what I'm saying? Matrix. And so this pyramid called a Merkaba has to transform to a perfect spear again in order to ascend. Right now, it looked like a spiky ball, like the co coronavirus symbol. It's, that's what you look like. That's what I'm telling you because if you look at the symbol of Atenism in Egypt, it's a ball with a bunch of spikes on it, a sun rays. Each of them rays are, are, let us make man in our image. Let me show you what I mean. Let us make man in our image. Let's go back to that. My bad. Here it is right here. All of the Elohim are singular gods inside of that spaceship. But once they beam their light out of the ship, that singular light becomes a bunch of rays of light. And those rays of light is what create your avatar down there. Watch this. All of those rays of light is what makes your body in this underworld, you see? But when all of these rays of light come back together and unify, this human going to become a beam. You'll, you'll, imagine all of these rays of light collapsing together like an Asian fan. That's called teleportation. You see it in Star Trek all the time. They show you what it looked like. Watch this. And then what's supposed to happen is they supposed to really turn into a beam of light. It's plenty of ways that they show this, but that's the beam up. The whole, is this what we're looking at? So now, just like I was saying, right, the great fall is Jesus in, in that, in, in, you know why Jesus is inside of that ball? Let me show you some. Let's go back to this. Now, I know when you see this, it's going to click. Watch this. Hold on. Here is our true home. Right here. The real you is a smaller, dense version of yourself called a fairy. And that version of you lives inside of this Smurf snow globe at Asgard. That little condensed ball of light, which is the real you, is in the middle of your brain hemispheres and that plays out like this to where the real versions of us is the mind inside of the human brain which is this in the creation all of us have a unified version of ourselves that never left this small north pole home this is our halo home we are the elohim or the elohim Halo Heim, our halo home. We projected our consciousness down into creation. Let us make man in our image is what we said from above. Every last one of us inside of our true home, we agreed. Let us make an avatar for ourselves and, 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 and let us make a man of ourselves in our image so that we can dwell in the simulation so that we can experience creation below. Let us make man in our image. And when our unified consciousness fell from above, the way light fall is in a plural motion. Jesus inside of this bubble, 
represent the unified God that lives inside of Asgard that never left true north. You left zero degrees via my projection like what Makai Kai telling you. Now look at this artwork. It show you Jesus projecting himself out down on the underworld as many fallen angels. All of the disciples are, con are Christ consciousness. They all are Christ in a different universe, projecting himself from his true home. That's why seven of these angels in, in, in the seven uh, gate guards concept. But we'll, the 12 disciples are symbolic of the Zodiac. These are the 12 different, the sky is divided up into 12 pockets like a roulette board. And these seven chakras will ascend through each of their slices. And, but they all will meet at the same spot at the North Pole. So these are different lines of magnetism converging into a central point. And that would be Christ. Now, compare it to Krishna, and you can see the same thing. Now, compare it to Aten in Egypt, and you can see this great fall once again. Because Brother Sanchez know what he's talking about. Ain't going to lead you astray. Check that out. Look at that. They know what's going on. You know, Humpty Dumpty had a great fall. Humpty Dumpty was a little egg. What do you think this ball is? That's Humpty Dumpty having his great fall. He shattered into pieces. He had to climb back up the tower, up the wall. They've been telling this story for years. How many times have they recreated this shit? Because look how many Mandela effects we can find. Look at how many folklores and religions through the ages telling this same shit. It shows you all of the resets. Every religion got its own beginning and ending. These are different, these are different points in time. The book, just like every machine, come with an instruction manual. Every time they created this simulation, they created a new religion with it. Seven world superpowers perfected this thing, and that's how we get the seven chakras, the seven kings of Babylon. These are the seven wisest men throughout the ages and the kingdoms that made the, the strongest machine... This CERN portal has been mastered by many generations. But these seven really created an acceleration that's the top seven, let's say. They the top set, these the top seven strongest creations of this technology. And they represent the seven Babylonian king. If you can master these seven, beating all the other simulations gonna be like you know what, after you beat the game and they give you all the perks and cheat codes and shit, that's what it's like. Once you master these seven gods of Olympia, boy, you're going to be so refined. You're going to be back. It's like the, the seven colors and karate belts. It's the seven Van Allen belts or seven Greek gods that created seven simulations in a quantum computer. You got to kick all of their ass. You got to go in each one of these incarnations with this energy that I'm showing you here, going against the system, showing you, I know about this shit. Yeah, I'm a smart student. This a matrix. Y'all soul harvesting. They got to spit you out. They got to spit you out because when you start letting the teacher know that you smarter than everybody else in the class, guess what they do? They skip you up a couple of grades. You're going to jeopardize the curriculum. Because the smart ass going to tell everybody the answers and ain't nobody going to be able to learn. Get his smart ass up out of here and skip him up. Keep me here with the children as ignorant. Well, not ignorant, but that just ain't as advanced as he is. That's the people that got to stay in this class. See, what happens is like when I was young, they wanted to skip me from first grade to third grade because they said I was a smart kid. 
My mama didn't let him do it because she wanted me to complete all of my grades. She didn't want me to miss nothing, right? Now, that was their way of saying, you know, he gonna, and, and I noticed they didn't call on me a lot. If you smart as hell and a teacher know it, you're going to feel like left out. They ain't going to call on you like that. The teacher know you're going to get the answer right, man. Broderick, okay, man. You know what I'm saying? But you got to be a smart kid to know that. As you will take offense like, okay, teacher ain't going to call on my ass. Now check this out, right? Teacher know I know. Teacher can't wait for me to, teacher know I shouldn't even be in this bitch for real. But check this out, right? And that's what you're like. See, once you understand what this is all about, the universe opens up to this awakening. It can't hold you because you've now unlocked the fucking seat. A teacher can't keep you held back if you know everything in the class. And if you show her that you know everything she about to teach on the first day of school, they'll say, uh, this young man should start off in second grade. He's advanced. He's ahead. That's what some of us are. We're going to get skipped a couple of levels. Different souls, different folks, the universe, university. Let's get it. Here's what the Pharaoh's showing you. This, we've been born in a Raelium inside a Raelian technology and brother Sanchez just trying to get you out. Please like and share the video. And don't forget to subscribe and hit the notification bell. Be sure to select all so that you can receive notifications every time we go live and upload to the channel. So, here is your clown collar. When they talk about atom, atom, what is atom or atom? It's your Merkaba. I told you that. And you are wrapped up inside of their metaverse simulation. Remember that the word meta, you, you turn it backwards, it becomes atom. Atom. You could also rearrange this word to what? Team. This is a team simulation. We all agree this is a contract. I told you, mate realism. You've been mated, bonded, fused. Now, what they fear is the broken covenant. The broken covenant is what Samson represents. Untying himself from these chains right here. These are the white, the, these, these little orbits that you see around this dude is the solar system. These are the Greek gods in the heavens that are beaming your consciousness down into their matrix. All right. See if I can paint this to you and, and do some syncretism. All right, check this out. So here is what we're talking about. In the solar system, you're in the middle. You're in the middle. And all of these satellites in the sky are projector machines that is beaming you down into this earth reality. This earth and this body is ancient technology that comes from Egypt, Babylon, China. Basically, the seven world superpowers that rule this world today, they all own seven fragments of our souls under the seven Greek gods in the heavens. We got to be born out of all their universes. And it's seven, they got seven versions of you. You're in the lowest one and you got to rise back up to the highest one. And basically they have wrapped you up in this false light of, of holographic uh, flesh version of you. This is what we are. Your crown chakra is literally the projecting machine that's beaming your body into the simulation and creating a world around you inside of this light matrix. This bubble of light represents your whole world or your Taurus field. You, your whole reality is being projected around you from the mind. 
downward. And the mind is also creating an avatar of itself inside of the earth circle simulation. This is your birthday hat. This is why Santa Claus got on a triangle hat with a white dot at the top. This is why your birthday hat shapes just like this. Okay? So like I said, when these rays of light collapse and it turns into that single beam, you're no longer in a human form. You becomes a laser beam of light that's shot back up to inside the project projector machine where you realize that, okay, we did say let us make man in our image. And we did agree to project ourselves down into this earth circle, into the simulation. You forgot about the agreement. The agreement didn't happen in the flesh. It happened in the mind, Neo. Why you think it got the word meant on it? Why you think it got M-E-N-T on it? It's an agreement. This is a world we create from the mentality, from the mind. You agreed on it before the flesh. So you'll remember that agreement the moment you get back into this ship. You'll say, yo, that was fucking crazy. Nigga, I just woke up from a crazy dream. Oh, uh, they were like, yeah, nigga, that's the simulation. There ain't no dream. You literally entered a fucking map. This whole shit that Macaque. Kaku teaching you. We already did it. We keep doing it and following further and further into oblivion. That's what I'm telling you. We did this seven times that we can prove. There are seven wandering stars in our sky, y'all. The seven wandering stars. What do you think those are? Those the seven planets that they showing you about today. Ain't that something, y'all, that when you Google seven wandering stars, bro Sanchez pop up right there? God damn it, I'm a bad motherfucker. Boy, I've been, I've been putting in work. God damn. You know you have been putting in work when a nigga Google seven wandering stars and your face pops up. On the first page out of 24 million motherfucking results, B. I didn't even know that, nigga. Google seven wandering stars, y'all, and tell me if I pop up on y'all computer. Or is it just my computer? Because, bro, if this is really real, I'm a bad motherfucker. I'm telling you, dude, when you Google seven wandering stars, who faces this? Ha <laughs> ha damn, nigga. <laughs> that boy good. Ha <laughs> ha. God damn, boy. Boy, y'all going to, uh, hey, niggas going to be like, no, nah, it ain't pop up on my computer, Sanchez. Uh, let, 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 yeah, that might just be from my account only, man. I don't want to get my head tooted up. Somebody going to email me or put it in the chat that, yeah, it didn't pop up on mine. But check this out, though. Let's get back on, 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 on. Let's get back on point with it. The seven wandering stars are seven CERN portals that are orbiting this, this underground Sheol satellite. Under the Earth is Archon technology, devil technology. Let me show you something. We got seven planets, right? When you Google seven wandering stars, you get the seven planets. Let me share some with you, right? Let me show you why they all named out the Greek gods. Here's why. Here's what's happening. Let's go to the Hebrew cosmos. In the bottom of the earth, there's this underworld where these Reliance come from and if i flip this upside down you'll see it is a ufo ship this 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 is a ufo ship right here beaming your consciousness to the earth world from the underworld when your consciousness is beamed up out of sheol it it is is 
think of your consciousness, an uh, underworld. Ver the, these archons got your DNA. And they have cloned you from Sheol and launched you into the heavens. And they've launched a version of you into each of the goddamn seven matrices that, they, that the kings of Babylon made, the seven kings, like Makakaku saying. Each of those seven planets, let's pull them back up because I told y'all we was going deep. Watch this. Hold on. Those seven planets, those seven, remember now, you got wandering stars and you got fit stars. Now, I want y'all to think about this. There's only seven wandering stars in our known universe. The rest are fit stars. The closest seven wandering stars to us that we go by with our seven-day week system, seven chakra system, 7,000-year long count, it's the Trappist system because you're trapped inside of this Saturn's like satellite system. Makakaku not telling you we already did this. Now listen, they're beaming you into these matrices from Sheol because they fucking copied your consciousness. They own some of our consciousness in the underworld. So they've duplicated a seven-headed dragon of you. They've taken your, they own all of our, some of our DNA. So you literally being born and dying seven times is what gives your, make you be as uh, break free from them. Because they, been given your DNA by your future parents. They've cloned you in the under in the seven underworlds. You're a seven-headed dragon, and you got to explore each of these. We're space travelers. We're space travelers right now. And the first planet we're exploring is the Earth. And when we leave here, we will be born six more times in each of these other parallel universes. And when we make it out of here, we will get back to our original home base and talk about our journey in space. We will tell the humans there, how was it like on the other planets and all that? The only way you can remember this journey is when you make it out. But the subconscious brings back, there's like Easter eggs in a video game. The, the subconsciously give you symbols and keys and clues to help you out. That's what we doing now. So each incarnation, you're going to have an awakening. You're going to have six different awakenings. And each one going to be more powerful than the last one. So think about if bro Sanchez is my first awakening. Can you imagine my second one, my third one, my fourth one? Oh my God, man. Oh my God, dude. Let's get it. So they, they beaming us from Sheol into the Trappist system. And the first, lower, the lowest of these planets is Earth. So you got to, you're born here first, and then you keep on going up the stairway till you make it out. Now, the same way they copied your consciousness because it fell down there into their world and they was able to copy you because you fell. When that happened, they created seven evil forms of yourself. That's what the archons did. And when they did that, the angels from heaven sent in seven reinforcements to battle them demons. So earth is where the battle of Armageddon taking place at, of angels and demons. They copied you into seven-headed dragon, but then there's a seven-headed angel coming to battle that. And, and if the angels win, you are sin. And if your Leviathan win, then you fall deeper in the shield with the great serpent that the Mayan talked about. So this is playing out in each one of us on a personal level, which is why I made the post on my Facebook page about your heart energy. And I will go into that in the future. But let's keep let's read some more. We're doing a good job. I'm, 
I see that this realism series gonna go on for a while. Do y'all want me to keep doing this series? Drop a one right now. Let me see. Let's do a vote. We got over a thousand people in here and I need some feedback. I noticed that my numbers for this series is actually going up every episode. It's something that I think I stumbled across in 2023 that just might be my little calling, my little series, you know, because this thing can go on to part 20 if we want it to. It's just so much to go uh, to teach with this. And you see each series we going into new, a new awakening of this shit. I ain't tired of it. It's getting deeper and deeper, man. So let's keep going. We're going to keep it going. Says that. And we bringing in the egg shit, y'all. Come on, man. Look, now we about to get deep. Remember, I told my feet, I told the females a minute ago on the last one. I said, look here. They, they collecting these eggs. Come on, folks. They harvesting females' eggs. They got sperm banks and plasma centers. How do you think they keep getting our DNA to clone us, man? Every time they create a new world and put your clone in it, when your consciousness die, it goes into the fucking clone, and it got to die out of all them clones for it can get back to this true home. We lost in the wilderness. We reading about this group that get into, they are about cloning and, and soul harvesting, bro. They talking about the rallying people when they come to earth in the end of days, they going to introduce humanity to their cloning technology. This is how the sons of God mate with the daughters of man by collecting eggs, sperm banks, plasma centers, and going underground in Sheol to clone your ass and beam your plasma, which is your light. That's your light energy. Your uh, sperm, your egg. That's your, this, this is all your, you can be, your, your consciousness. And uh, they going underground with that stuff, launching it. They using holographic technology, and they telling you, Oh, we discovered a new star, uh, and 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 they name it out to some dude, and guess what? They just created a new universe. They launched, and once they get enough of our clones in that universe, that can become a new Elohim or Halo home. It's a voting system. Once a, a lot of us, uh, uh, so many of us, is projected into one of these worlds, it activates that world. That's why it's based on cloning as well. And let's read here because they collect eggs, man. Check this out. This man, the, the red Relianism created the order of angels. That's an all female group where they basically taking all of these women's eggs so that they can experiment with how to open these portals and harvest souls, man. Look at how long they've been doing this. This group was, this was started in the 1600s. Then it said, because look, realism started in the 1600s. How long have they been having female concerts, consorts and taking their eggs? I would imagine even back then. How did the Holy Spirit impregnate Mary? This was technology. Look at here. In 1997, Rail initiated CloneAid, an organization engaged in research in human cloning directed by senior Raleigh and Bridget Bocelia. In 2002, the company claimed to have produced a human clone, a baby named Eve bringing much critical scrutiny and media attention. The movement has attracted further attention through its public protests, endorsing causes such as women's and gay rights and against nuclear testing. The International Rallying Movement. 
claims tens of thousands of members, the majority of Francophone areas of Western Eve and North America and parts of, see, look at here, the IRM are in all of the Western world technological countries with the Abrahamic faiths. Told y'all, Western Europe, North America, the Abrahamic faiths. I told y'all in East Asia with Buddha and all that. I told y'all, ain't that ironic that the IRM movement is in the same places that I told you where everybody under these Abrahamic faiths? Come on, man. I know what I'm talking about. Look at here. Criticism of the philosophy has come from journalists, Israelians, and anti-cultists, while it has also been studied by scholars of, scholars of religion. Realism is a religion. Scholars of religion classify as a new religious movement. We know it ain't new. It's a resurrection of that old beast coming back onto the earth with his same uh, damnation technology. It's the Antichrist re resurrecting. It, it, they saying it's a new Christ or a new religious movement. He just another uh, demigod like the old Christ. It's Christ reborn. Christ got to return again to the earth every time they recreate the simulation. That's what y'all don't realize. If Christ is the Lord, the, the demigod that created our simulation, which is, I think, is Aten, the Pharaoh Aten. Um, every time he create a new simulation and you're born in it, another version of him going to be reborn in that, too. He crosses over with his flock, just like Christ. And. They all change uniforms when they cross over. Like Christ's sheep, sheep put his uniform over when they meet him on the other side. That's what I'm telling you. The God who created this simulation is going to create the next one. Listen, this God returns every 7,000 years to rebuild his simulation. I think that that is Elon Musk. Just because of his gematria, his numerology, and even his name and his world position, his symbol of his company, all of that. Elon is the word alien, and Musk is literally dealing with a musket system, like a lunch pad system. And we just read that, that that's what Raelianism is about. They establish a lunch pad, and they keep recycling you through that, or through that base through that moon base. So you go from the earth to their moon base through the seven Greek gods and back to the earth. And you keep doing that for infinity. Until you realize they need to point me to Polaris. They got you going in circles. That creates days, time, lapse, repetition. We're in hell. The Mayan said every 7,000 years, the system reset. You know why? We spent a thousand years in bondage in each of these simulations. It's seven of them, including the Earth. Then you got Venus, Mars, Merc. It's seven of these satellites recycling us, recycling us. We spent a thousand years in each one. That equal out the 7,000 years where now we can get out after we run a lap. Because you start at Earth, you go in the solar system, you run your lap around the solar system. That's what this symbol is, the solar system. And you bouncing your spirit around it through the seven chakras. I can even show you this in the Tibetan wheel if you think I'm making it up. Hold on. I got this stuff open for a reason. Wait a minute. Where my Tibetan wheel at? Bear with me. We got a lot open, but we, t we going over a lot, right? No problem. We'll open it up again. We ain't going to waste no time. Now, when you say Tibetan wheel, first of all, the name Tibetan is like the name Ezekiel. 
And I know you like, Brother Sanchez, you reaching. I'm about to get the board out. You know I know what I'm talking about. Each of these triangles is a tab. You know how I got all these tabs open on my computer? And each tab is a gateway into another world. Each of these triangles is a tab, and each one has Aten inside of it. Aten is the name of your fallen soul. Aten. In each of these triangles, your soul fell into each slice. Remember, your soul was a unified ball that fell into the belly of the beast. This will is the goddess's belly. You fell in this middle part, and then your consciousness severed, and a piece of you fell in each, each one of those. You got seven chakras. This your macabre that you got to master. Now, look, let me show you about the name Tibetan. Because remember, in each of those tabs is Aten. You still don't hear what I'm saying, do you? Let me show you real quick. In each of those tabs is Aten. And each of those tabs is Aten, Tib Aten, the tabs of Aten, the tabs of Aten, Tab Aten, Tibetan, the tabs of Aten. How many tabs is it, Sanchez? Let's count them. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven in the middle. So the seven tabs of Aten is again Leviathan. Leviathan. The levies of Aten are the tabs of Aten. Isn't etymology cool? Leviathan. When you say Leviathan, the word levy is an action. That's saying trap him, damn him, catch him. You are a Pokemon that was captured. You were damned or you were levied, you were levied. A levy is a dam. A levy is a small dam. And a levy is a tab. So to tab Aten is to trap Aten or to levy Aten or to damn Aten, which is the word what? Damnation. Boy, I'm bad. I told you I'm bad. So we going we got the trapping system where they trapping the soul. They tabbing it. They're mating you to the world of rail. Each tab is a dam or a levy. So they're Levi Atten, Tab Atten, Dam Atten. It's all around you. Open your eyes and ears. The word condemn is the word condom. Put the condom on. What is a condom? It's a dam. It's keeping the soul trapped. That soul going to go down the toilet. And when they filter all the water, I bet you they just collecting a bunch of nut and eggs somewhere, these damn Raelian folks. Who else would want to filter your water? Nature got rivers outside that we drunk from. They want us drinking the same water we pee in, poop in, because what are they trying to filter out of that water? I hate to gross y'all out, but nut and eggs don't mix with water. And you can filter that out in a simple technological process that I wouldn't put it past these sick motherfucking relians. 
We just read what they all about. Sperm, eggs, plasma, blood. These bitches is about cloning you and trapping your consciousness and clone in the damn system, the trapping system that we just talked about. So Tibetan wheel, Tibetan wheel, tab of Aten wheel. This is no different than a macabre. I mean, you got to look at this the same way as we look at uh, this. You are being reflected in each of the tips of this triangle. Until you smooth the rough edges, as long as you got these spikes, those are going to keep you stuck inside of the matrix. So when this macabre comes a spherical shape, it can leave. And that's what we're doing. We're rounding out our rough edges. Those rough edges are the spikes, the spikes to your macabre ship. And as you trap spiral up this stairway to heaven, you're breaking off those points, bro. Um, you know the stars on a Christmas tree that's wrapping around a tree? Yeah, man. Ain't but seven. Listen, I told y'all it's seven wandering stars in our sky. Those ain't natural, man. Those are ancient satellites to harvest your soul. That's what I'm telling you. Those are part of their soul luring system. So there are seven wandering stars named after the seven Greek uh, uh, ancient gods that created those universes. And uh, once we born out of this world, we'll be born into a universe where everybody talking about six chakras. Then when you die in that world, you will be born into this other universe above that one where the beings up there got five chakras. Then above them, the beings up there ain't got but four chakras. And the beings above them got three chakras. The beings above them got two chakras. And the beings at the very top got that one chakra called Polaris, that one shining ball, which is all them seven that came together and consolidated over time at the top of the tree. We're working our way up the stairway to heaven, and we got to have this awakening in every last one of these Greek gods. And the way that I'm kicking ass in this earth world, I like this video game. You like the game when you winning, don't it? To know that you born in a simulation. But shit, I figured it out, goddammit. Now, all of us went into a game, and the game was when you get in that game, we're, we're, see, the thing was, science is saying when man make his own universes, what's going to make it dangerous is that his universes is going to be indistinguishable from the real world. Making souls be trapped. So, the thing is, uh, we did this before. We made a universe that was so realistic, we forgot that we left our base reality. And the only thing that woke us up is when the imperfections came. Because during our Garden of Eden phases in this place, we literally thought we were still at the North Pole. And we was like, yo, we must be asleep. You know when you fall asleep and you start dreaming and you don't know you're dreaming and that somewhere in the dream you like, oh shit, I must be dreaming. We're doing that as a collective now. We all fell into this thing and we didn't even know we had failed from our true Eden until we started to notice the, the laws of Aten, the, the expulsion from the garden in the form of the new laws arising. The, 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 the fucking, uh, we start seeing a world around us like we're really witnessing the end of the world right now. 
but it ain't no big ass boom and it's all over. It's a slowly ass process of terraforming the world to where you no longer see no more trees, no more waterfalls, the weather getting crazy. So the thing about all of this is that um, y'all ought to be motivated, baby, that when we, hey man, that when you die, God damn it, pow, pow, pow. Nigga, this ain't about swinging punches and, and, and gun shooting. This about in each of these incarnations asking the questions that in the quest I'm on, quest I own. Come on now. Motherfuckers ain't gonna make it up out of this place because they stopped questing. They thought that they tricked us like the age of exploration ended on earth. That the exploration started going so deep, they started exploring the human mind. And they started opening up these big castles and old churches and shit where they was cut motherfuckers' head open, trying to see if they can find a pineal gland. Then they realized it was on another dimension and that they need Neuralink technology to interface with it. Brain computer interface. Every 7,000 years, their God returns to his simulation to reset the time. They literally call him Set in Egyptian because he the one that resets time or setting. He keep resetting the clock back. He don't want you moving forward. So what you got to realize is there are no sunsets or sunrises. You're in a daze. The seven wandering stars creating time is something happening within the vortex within you. You got a kundalini spiral happening within you. And that is what's spinning your own heavens. Your heart is making the sun and moon go round and your universe outside. Listen, man, when your heart stopped beating, you're going to see the sun and moon drop down like somebody ripping clothes off of you and you're going to see a whole nother reality behind this thing. You're going to realize you was powering your own universe from within and all of us connected our universes without to make the macro. But when you leave, you travel with your own version of this universe that's your own heaven even in comedic afterlife they talk about this they say you continue your journey of ascension until you become an ascended god and that basically each incarnation is this same world the same you but a more refined version so this macabre star is spiraling around the pyramid. And as it does that, these sharp edges get to start breaking off. And once all of them get broken off as it spiral up this pyramid, it's a smooth ball back again at the top. And now that and it had to smooth its rough edges, it's, or what the Hindus said, work out your karma. Now let me ask y'all something, man. I really need a break. I can go longer because it's a lot of shit to teach and go over. But will y'all be willing? I'm going to take a quick break right here, maybe three, four, three minutes, man. And I don't want you to go nowhere. Don't touch that dial, just like the commercials say. We're going to take a quick break. I've been going three hours and a half with no break. So a three-minute break, and you guys, guess what? Don't go nowhere. All right, let's do it. And I assure you guys, we won't be no more than three to five minutes. Let me get me some water, rest my mouth for just a little while, and then I'm coming on back. Uh, don't, don't worry. So, yeah.
Appreciate it. And we back even before I said, I'm a good man. I'm a hard working man. I don't need a long break. Now watch this. Because I'm, 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 I got to get this out, man. Now check it. Where were we? We're going to continue back with our notes. Because if I just freestyle, we'll stay off of the notes for too long. And look, we got a lot of stuff to read. So let's go ahead. Where were we on here, y'all? Okay. In France, where the religion originated, the government's parliamentary commission on cults labels it a sect. And where my ashtray? Like and share the video. Let's keep our numbers high, guys. It's good for ratings. In 97, a parliamentary inquiry commission issued a report through the Belgian Chamber of Reps that also categorized the Belgian Relian movement as a sect. Hold on. Relism is possibly the largest UFO religion in existence. Yes, because it's the foundation of all religion. Remember that the word religion means a binding, a binding religios. And that I told you materialism is to make yourself with realism mate and realism material realism and then you talk about this binding thing look here that see realism was always the uniting factor of all the religions all um talk about beam me up with the, the aliens the science people even if you went to science i just showed you that makakaku is talking like the reverend poke chop a rapture, nigga, with techno. See, you techno, you atheists and science niggas, you can't say that your science ain't speaking the same language of the Bible with this new technology. This realism is the umbrella of all this deception that's gonna, in the in our time, the world gonna unite under one power. That's real realism, realism. Aliens is what's going to bring the world together. You feel me? (laughs) 
Yeah. Why do I see twos in the chat room? Why do I, let me get a sound check, drop a one. And like and share the video, man. Drop a one if you can hear me. Some people complained about science. I'm going to see, was it just their system? Yeah, drop the one. Thank you. So look. This is very deep, man. And uh, I don't know when the glitch took place, but I don't know how much I was interrupted, so I don't know where to start off at. So I'm going to just keep it moving. Sorry about that. So, uh, you know, the founding principle of all world religion is realism. And they don't want you to know that today. What's going to unite science and all other world religious, religions is going to be an alien invasion, a stage alien attack. Yeah, when they talk about yeah, Blue Bean, that's what we're talking about. They're going to have a stage alien attack. And this going to be like some Independence Day type shit to where they're going to tell you, listen, ain't no time for us to be beefing with each other as humans. Ain't no time for us religious to be beefing. They are already doing that now. Ain't no time to be divided. We got climate change and aliens here. The Vatican acknowledging aliens. People, you don't see where this going. Look at here. Uh, how else they going to unite all these superpowers? With signs in the heavens, what the Antichrist would do. Rel they're going to resort back to what it started from. Realism. And... It's going to unite all of the spiritual systems, science systems, tech gurus, and we already see it headed that way. So realism is possibly the largest UFO religion in existence. And in the mid-2000s, the scholar of religion, Andreas, again, Grun show, show, excuse me, called it one of the most consolidated UFO groups internationally active today. Damn. In its beliefs, realism differs from many other UFO-based philosophies. Nah, it don't differ. It's the same beast. They just keep recreating it and alternating it in alternate realities. That's all. Like Berenstain and Berenstain, Christ and Krishna. Like, come on, man, we just went over that. Syncretism shows that it's the same devil with many heads. So, relics have also been characterized as having a belief in ufology, but relics often stress that they do not regard themselves as ufologists. Don't matter. Realism is materialistic. Didn't I just show you that? I showed you that, didn't it? Because these people are trapped in the underworld. Their body is their soul. And they trying to take your soul and turn it into a body. Now, how do you do that? With this hologram shit that Makakaku talking about. That's called damnation. You're going to lose your soul. All of, how about Look at all the limitations of your body. But you ain't limited like that in your mind, in your soul. You giving all that up with these people. Their soul is their body. 
meaning that these devils from the underworld, the highest that they can go is the earth. The earth, which is their evil great mama Lilith or Gaia. That's the highest these folks can go. <clears throat> so this means that when a, when a demon ascend to its highest heaven, its highest point, it looks like a human. And when a human ascend to its highest point, it looks like a god. These demons' highest point is the human body. They've built their heaven in this underworld, in this fleshly realm. And they've trapped souls here. I came to help free some of those souls. Now check this out, guys. Look at this avatar. This is what they want to do to you. Pop smoke your ass. Now watch it. They want to trap your soul in a human form. Because they are trapped in a human form, damn devils. They don't have a soul. They only have a body. The body is the highest di dimension that their consciousness can rise to. You can go higher than this thing. Why would you get trapped in this world of flesh like with these folks in this matrix? These folks are materialistic. Because they high as heaven is the material world, like the pharaohs in Egypt, luxury and gold and heavy metals. And if you listen to heavy metal music, that's what hip hop was started with, rock and roll, heavy metal. And heavy metal is what anchors your, your soul to their solar system. And I'm going to get into Raelianism and soul harvesting with hip hop and drill. We're going to talk about Astro World with Travis Scott. I'm going to show you how these damn devils be harvesting souls. Kanye West, we ain't through with it. Remember that the Circle 7 groups are the 5 percenters, your religious celebrity niggas. It's a cabal, man. The boule means the bull, dude, the devil. We in the belly of the golden bull, the golden calf. That's the word boule. The Taurus is the bull, Taurus field. That's your fake body that they harvesting your soul with. We got to detach from this material world and the world of flesh, the secular world. I told you in, in the world, in the, when you say materialism, that's called realism, R-I-A. L-I-S-M, realism, right there, they spelling it different. You, it's mating you to the heavy metals, the periodic table, using alchemy. The pharaohs in Egypt cheated death, y'all. They found out how to harvest souls and make themselves with this underworlds that they started to build in the real realism or what they call in the natural world. We from the supernatural world, not reality, but super reality in the heavens. What the other side of reality is this sort of supernatural realm. It defies the laws of reality. Because the laws of reality are the boundaries of the soul. Your limitations in the flesh. But they, they always tell you, get real, man. Get real. No, get super real. Get abnormal. You see what I'm saying? When they say get real, get real. Get thinking your mind into the mechanical, physical rigid, dense-ass understanding of reality. We don't progress and mature as souls with that. So realism is materialistic and rejects the existence of the supernatural. Ain't That's what atheism does? Let's look up what the word super mean, because a lot of these folks got a problem with the word super, and I'm going to show you why. They're like kryptonite to you. Watch this. 
They they don't got a problem with the Super Bowl, but they got a problem with the supernatural. Stupid. Y'all heard me. The only time these atheists and wanna be smart technological science niggas, the only time that they got a problem with the word super is when it's dealing with your soul. And that's the kryptonite to kill your Superman that you can't imagine. Because the word imagine means I'm a genie. Break it down. Oh, yeah, look at it. I'm a genie. Imagine. In the realm of our imagination is where our true self is in the mind, not the flesh. Let us make man in our what? Image. Not in our avatar. Not in our CERN machine. Not in our Moloch beast. Not in our Neuralink thing. The first man was created by simply mind projection. And until you learn how to do that again, you can't make it out of here. You project it in and you got to project out. And the only option outside of that would be to use the technology. They deleted the memory of ascension, but it's coming back now. So they trying to rock you back to sleep. These folks only got a problem with the word super when you put it in front of natural. Why? They don't got a problem with Superman. They don't got a problem with the Super Bowl. No, they don't got a problem with a super soaker. They ain't got no problem with no super soaker. Only time they got a problem with the word super is when you put it in front of natural. That ought to tell you something. Supernatural? Oh, you pseudo. But their scientists can talk about super earths, though. They, they get to decide what you put super in front of. Soon as you put that word super in front of natural, oh, they got a problem with you now. Because they don't want you to know the truth. Because they don't want you to know the truth. They ain't got no problem with the Super Bowl, none of that. Super Earths, Superman. They ain't got no problem with calling themselves superior. But they got a problem with nature being superior. They don't think that nature has a superior side. But they think that man does. The word super is also the word supra, which is the root word of supreme. So again, you don't think there's a supreme side of nature? Let's look at the definition of super. And, and we got to find the right one. None of these definitions make sense. And that would make sense because they want to keep us blind. Let's look up the etymology. That's when we get the truth. We ain't going to play these games. Because super just mean beyond. Look at him. I told you. Look. I know what I be talking. Look at here. If somebody say you went above and beyond. You did a super job. Going above and beyond is crossing over, crossing over this ether, getting to the other side. In order for you to make it out of here, you got to go overboard, dog. You got to go above and beyond on some Christ shit, some Enoch shit. You, mediocrity won't get you up out of here. Because mediocrity is status quo, perpetuate. It ain't elevating you. It ain't progression, it's stagnation. So in order for you to make it up out of here, you got to go above and beyond mediocrity. 
you got to prove in this realm that you worthy of making it to the next level by embodying the energy of the next level while you right here. You got to become Superman and then you'll be able to fly through the heavens. You'll be able to go over and beyond this ethereal plane. Now, when you play with the word super, guess what? You get a word called rupes. Now, you could take the word rupes to make the word super, but the word rupes is the word rupes nigra is when we get wings. All other souls that make it to this point on the earth, they have grown wings and learned to fly. They become superhuman. They're trying to make us into superhumans with technology, and it's crippling you. It's like giving a bird robotic wings instead of letting that bird learn to fly. If the bird rely on the robotic wings, the moment the batteries die on them wings, it's going to find itself falling from the sky. Now, look, this word rupus is the word super. And the souls that are here have went above and beyond to make it down. You don't make it down saying everything we already heard. You don't make it down saying the, repeating the same shit that Galileo and all them said. You don't make it down repeating the same stupidity that all of us learned in school that's perpetuating the downfall of the entire fucking earth. If everything we learned in our colleges and school ain't done but put, ain't done that but put students in debt, created a debt system, not just in money, but in pestilent plague and death on the earth. Because none of the shit they taught us in these schools as a collective will restore heaven on earth. It would just make you help you build a technological world. Everybody going to school so they can make robots, so they can build machines, so they can get into coding and computers and computing. This is man continuing to manufacture uh, synthetic minds. Back in the ancient day, you can go up to a 12 year old and say, What's 983 times 743? And they'll spit the answer out like that. It's some children doing it right now in Asia. They read novels in, in 30 minutes. You don't understand that. A computer can't be greater than your mind if your mind created the computer. A calculator can't out-calculate the mind that created it. There are literally humans that their mind is like a calculator. And guess what they call them? Gifted. I, I, I shit you not, y'all, this world is so backwards. If your child is born with the gift to compute like that, like Rain Man, they're going to give your child a crazy check. Did you watch the movie Rain Man? That dude was a fucking genius. And they called him retarded because we in a backwards ass world. They got children walking around with supernatural gifts and they calling them gifted. But the way we use the word gifted is equivalent to autistic or Mr. Mark. They, they, they are none real. They got none real quality, superhuman qualities like Rain Man. Them people will get a crazy chick. Tell me we ain't in a backwards ass world. How the gifted people are crazy. How they got the whole world said, nigga, I ain't gifted. Don't be calling me gifted, nigga. Who don't want to be gifted? See what they did? They flipped that shit on you. And you won't claim your real gifts. The gifts of the psyche that some people tapping into. We think they crazy. They seeing the other side. Now watch this, y'all. Yeah, they don't care about you using the word super until you put it in front of natural. Why, y'all? Ain't that prejudice? Miss it and use it. Again, super glue. Super glue. 
In other words, my point is, what is wrong with the word supernatural? Why are the Raelian movement denying the existence of the supernatural? And I showed you, your Raelians are your data. Listen, y'all, I hate to say this. One thing I noticed, a lot of these damn devils, they, they in a body like us, but they got big foreheads. I'm just bullshit. But now nah, the Anunnaki got these big relian alien foreheads, man, like Yakub. And they promoting this relian technology and kingdom of Zion and science shit. I'm just saying, niggas. I'm just saying, if you look at all them pharaohs and shit, if you look at the goddamn clown hat, they got the fucking clown ball right here with his hair way back here with a big forehead looking like Yaku motherfucking ass. Look at motherfucking Makakaku forehead. These and one, I'm showing you, we got a bunch of aliens in the flesh and one way we can spot them, look at a nigga's forehead, man. I'm telling you. Now look, they got the forehead going. They got the technology, the space going, the makakaku shit going. In other words, they can be all pseudo with their technology. But you can't say what they saying about beaming out the body and all that with your own supernatural powers. Because you got a natural Part of us is natural and part of us is supernatural. Your body is natural. It's the part of you made out of nature outside. Meda nature, nature. So, but your soul ain't natural. It's supernatural. And they want to deny your soul, man, and I'm going to fight them back. Everybody that's going against what I'm teaching, I'm going to spank you now. I'm going to spank you good. You're going to leave me alone. Because your scientists can talk about all this out of body shit, but I can't. Because you ain't using the technology with it. That's our problem. We was doing this naturally, supernaturally. The Raelian people reject the supernatural because they want you to do, they want you to travel through their soloring system with their satellite technology, their beaming technology. And the satellite dish is their UFO ship in the underground. That's why the UFO ship looked like a satellite dish. Satellite, Saturn's lights, the false lights of this solar system. Those seven wandering stars ain't, nat ain't, ain't, ain't our true. They don't supposed to be there, man. There is no other God but the most high God. Didn't your Bible tell you that? So why do y'all believe in Venus, Mercury, Mars? Because you don't know that you practice in the Antichrist religion. You don't know. They tricked you into believing in false and other gods if you are a Christian believing in this model. That's what you don't know. That the seven candlesticks on the Jewish menorah are the seven planets in the Trappist system. Now, if it's only one God, the most high God, why the fuck do you believe in Mercury, Mars, Saturn, and you think you monotheistics? Now, you're a damn Christian, right? You got one God of the heavens, but in science, they giving you seven and you think that you're monotheistic still. You don't know you're practicing Zionism. The seven planets are the seven candlesticks, dude. As a matter of fact, let me show this uh, symbolism on the screen with this menorah thing. Because if there's new people joining, we want to put the slides up for them. They may have not saw it before. Here you go. In Kemetic, in Jewish, and in ancient Hebrew on the left. 
and we can go to more if you want. Here go uh, Mesopotamia and Mesoamerica on this one, uh, this pyramid and then this one. We can do this all day. Everybody said what I said, even Dante Inferno right here. And then you can see that's your Santa Claus hat, the triangle with the dot on it. Brother Sanchez know what he talking about now. Ain't nobody else going to show and prove it. They going to give you scripture with no proof. Then when, let me show you what the Raelian people do. They trapped y'all by taking away the visual proof. I brought sacred geometry back. When you get into this form of shit that I'm doing, all of the Raelians and the enemies say, stop Googling, stop showing pictures. But yet they Googling stuff too. It just ain't images though. They Googling sources, texts, scriptures, like the Bible ain't got no images in it. So no luminescence is sound and light. The sound is the word. The light is what you missing with the image. I bring back enlightenment because I go with the sacred geometry. I give you the aha moment, which was the name of one of the early gods. Did you know that? Yeah, it was God Aha. Let's pull it up. They turned it into Allah. Aha. You see that? You can look this ancient God up. That's the word. That's what we do with refreshment. They turn it into movies, all that. But look it up. Um, but when you say Yahuwah, it's Ahua, Ahawa. Aha was the root word. And aha is an enlightened mind, right? When, some, when the light comes on, when Jesus say, I am the light, I'm the light that comes on up here. Aha. That was the name of a God. And the reason why God is symbolic of light, and we call it enlightenment, and the sound of enlightenment, aha. They turned that to God. Now watch this. Y'all are not monotheistic. Okay. You believe in seven gods. It's just that the sun is the central figure of your religion. Jesus said, don't believe in no other gods but me. Jesus said, I don't believe in no other gods but me. And what Jesus is personifying is the sun, but that is really the North Pole telling you, don't believe in no other. Stay pointed upright. I'm the true God of the most high. Anything swam to the left and right, you tilting your balance scales. It's pointing you toward Mercury, Mars, and now you're going to be born in a simulation. You got to fly high and fly straight to get up out of here. If you lean to any side, you will be intercepted by one of these satellites that Makaka telling you about. They rebuilding this Babylonian system of soul harvesting. So that's when Jesus said, you know, I'm the most high God, the true God. I'm the light. Be, be wary of the false light, Satan. That many going to come in my name saying they the Christ, but they ain't the crease, the real crease. Because it's a bunch of creases cutting this thing. You see all of these rays of light? All of those are cuts. Those are cuts, cracks in the simulation. Which is why on a previous screen, I showed y'all the broken glass. Each... Uh, generation of advanced societies on this earth it was seven of them they helped to collectively shatter shatter the ether you know in all of the cartoons when they show you the sky breaking open that been happened how you think the great fall started and time started let me show you some remember in the previous stream i showed you the hourglass which is two pyramids, 
doing a flip, recycling the souls. Those are the two pyramids making your macabre. See, when this portal closes up, this it that won't be no opening for the no great fall. You see what I'm saying? So the only way that humans can fall in and out of these matrices as if there's a union, a galactic federation of seven kings in seven dimensions in, in, the, in the United Nations, the seven world superpowers control everything that happened at the United Nations. Those seven world superpowers are really the ancient souls and seven bloodlines of seven kings that are, are, have copied us in each of their universes. So you see them here, they are the seven archangels, and we got to be born out of each of these. Now here's what's going on at the middle of the earth. At the, there's a galactic federation in happen to, to keep this portal open, but every now and then that covenant is broken and the portal is closed. If any one of these particular universes closes its portal, then it becomes one that broke the covenant. And now all of the souls moving up and down going to be blocked in its dimension. And then it can be guilty of soul harvesting. And it broke the contract of the Galactic Federation. That universe will have to be punished. Now, I'm just showing you how I'm interpreting this thing. And I'm thinking that that's what happened in this underworld. The archons down here broke the contract with God, the gods in the heavens. And they, they start trapping souls in this lower world. And then now that all hell breaking loose because we told they, they was told that was forbidden, it would cause overpopulation, mutations, uh, uh, what we're experiencing now. Because closing that portal is subconsciously throwing everybody in this underworld out, this bottom one, into an age of darkness or what they call a dark age. When that portal is closed, humanity forget all about the North Pole. People stop talking about flat earth and North Pole for like thousands of years, hundreds and thousands of years. And as the portal open up, the conversation of flat earth and the North Pole come back onto the earth. Your mind open up back to you ask questions like why does a compass point north only? And this whole flat earth globe earth is basically a spiritual warfare. Uh, science versus nature. The word flat means balance. It's equality. It's ma'at. You see what ma'at doing with her wings? She ain't balling them up to a ball. Nope. Balance. Now check this up. When this portal is opened back up, traffic can once again flow freely through these systems and we can rebegin our progression. Our progress will stop for a couple of years because imagine if there's traffic flowing up and down this thing. The agreement is good, right? Boom. But one of these worlds get mad and it start, it damn itself off. It block itself off. And now all the souls are trapped. Every soul that was behind that world can't go into it to reunite and do its journey. And all the souls in that world can't go out of it to go continue their progression. So what happened for like a couple 7,000 years, according to the Maya, you just go in a circle. All these worlds go into a repetition solar system circle. Uh, this DNA vortex uh, where they just repeat the last incarnation over and over, you know, in this matrix until the portal open back up. Then when the portals start to open back up, they start saying, yo, what if we was born before? What if we got previous lifetimes? They go to talking like that when the portal opening back up. If you can see what humans were like when the portal first closed, boy, they was dumb than a motherfucker. 
the societies of Babylon and Egypt and all them, man, the peasants were so dumb. They were nowhere near asking the questions we asking. Those first couple of generations that came after them crusades, them babies, bro, that what created the dumb peasants that you see in all the old Roman films. In those days, they had groups of wise men. What does that mean? That everyone else in the world that one part of them groups wasn't even wise. We enter the dark age. And after that dark age, we entered the age of light, what the Mayans spoke about. And they, they said that will be synonymous with a lot of great apocalyptic events. But at the same time, humanity will be reaching their spiritual maturity. So the Mayans said at the end of this cycle, shit, there will be a storm before the rainbow. There will be turbulence in the world. But also at the same time, that turbulence will also open up man's consciousness to understanding who he really is. And man, I have a choice to make on re re where he want to go from now. We're, we're at a fork in the road. All of the technology that's destroying the world is also giving us insight on what we are. When they create a clone, it's what make Brother Sanchez understand what I am. When they create a computer, it makes me understand what my mind is. See, the paradox is, without none of this relaying technology, you wouldn't even be enlightened. That's why this world is a classroom and a test. The seven first grades of school are called elementary. Them the seven first levels. The number seven is the God L for elementary. You in elementary school, kindergarten. So the kindergarten students need technology. And when they get up to the out of elementary, they become the technology. They embody it. The technology is to show them what they are. In this underworld. That's why the Satan was always called the tester. Who tests you? A teacher. Okay, so. Uh, everything is by design. And uh, I don't want to really. So look, yeah, like I said, Christians, it said there's no other God but the most high God, Polaris, the middle of this solar system, that pole. That's Christ on the cross. You see that pole right there? There's no other way out. Now, guess what happens? When Makai Kaku talks about beaming you to these other planets, they point you crooked. They tilting you. That's why they worship a globe that's pointed away from Polaris. All of their shit is tilted like this solar system. Why can't it be like Ma'at? Y'all don't get it? Ma'at is showing you this, and they showing you a tilt. And you going with what they saying. When you see, look at this. That's blasphemy. Now look, they glow, everything tilted and crooked with these wicked folks. Because if they point up right, that's pointing you toward your true self, what the blue line is. All of these little other yellow lines, those are the satellites from the Greek gods in the trapping system. All of these angle, angles are fallen angels that's falling away from the middle point. And because of that, they start uh, becoming wicked, crooked. They ain't as pure as the one in the middle. All of these angles are fallen angels that fell away from the center and became different versions of you that was cloned and created in Jupiter, Earth, Mercury, Venus. And like Makai said, you're going to keep being through this solar system and they never going to point you upright because that's the way out. You got to do that for yourself because if they can't do that for you, that's what the test is all about. 
balance mean who can stand up straight when they dizzy? That's who going to make it out. What's creating multiplicity and duality is the soul has start to go into a Tasmanian devil spiral, a cyclone, and it's born into the time cycle. Time cycles. These cycles are cyclones. Here they go. Seven heavens. Now, what you got to realize is a top, a spinning top that spinning upright will begin to fly. Watch this. At some point, that thing will beam up. Um, once it get vertical. Now, I, I'm, I'm saying, when, not in, you know, if you go spin a top saying, look, if it, uh, you can't spin it to the speed that's going to make it start to skip and jump up. What happens is, when this top go to spinning real, real fast at a speed you can't even imagine, it'll actually just shoot off of the ground. That amount of speed will create such a wind beneath it that it'll push it upward toward the sky. But it got to spin. It's it got to spin fast enough to get this energy to shoot up. This is what your macabre is. This is literally what your macabre is. Watch this. You see, this is exactly what our macabre is. You like a spinning top. That starship is spinning. And once it raises that vibration, that kundalini to a high enough vibration, that thing going to hop up off the flow in a second and shoot up off of there. Because what happens is it starts going so fast that it starts skipping up and down. It go to like getting this rickety skip to where that much speed, the ground can't even process that much speed. So it kind of like start levitating up and down like a basketball dribble. And the faster it go, the higher it jump. And the faster it speed, that thing becomes a you it beams the hell up out of here, man. But the slower it's going, it's wobbling and following, falling to each side, like what these rays of light doing. So each version of you is connected. And the more you raise your vibration, what's happening is all of these lines of light where you fail into these simulations, they're going to start raising their speed. And they're going to start braiding together as one around this pole. And, uh, and as your speed gets faster and faster, each of these rays of light will be snatched out of each of these ethers like pulling a plant from the ground. And they will all ascend to the heavens as one as they're wrapped around that one pole. They call this the Osiris spindle in some cultures. The Osiris spindle. Uh, this is the movie that I was looking for. Go watch it. It's called, uh, what was the name of this movie? I watched it two days ago. It's got the CERN portal with the, rev everything I'm teaching you is in this movie. And they literally calling it the Osiris Spindle. Uh, yeah, I think it's, yeah, it's called Boss Level. Go watch it. Boss Level. Because this dude beat the game like what I'm telling you we going to do. And when you make it up out of this thing, you and you play it again as the boss. In other words, we all ascend and become our own gods at the boss level. We go on free roam, and at that point, we it's on some inception type shit. We're these demigods like Yahweh, and now he we on his level now. See, the serpent told you God didn't want you to be on his level, man. The serpent was really trying to free you, man. The serpent is the kundalini I'm telling you within you. The God in the heavens, the one trapped them in the garden, which is a terrarium. The 
the serpent told them, God just don't want you to know, be on his level. What you mean on his level in the sky. He wants you living in the garden, in the underworld. The serpent is the stairway out this bitch. The serpent was saying, look, climb up me and I'm going to get you to God level. The serpent is the spring that's attached to Jack. That's allowing him to pop out the box. And when we started fucking with that serpent, we started waking up. And guess what happened? God kicked us out the garden. Why? Because Jonah got spit out the well. I told you when, when, when you... The garden is God's stomach. And smart asses are a pain in God's belly. And he going to kick you out the garden. Because you now so smart, you, you now becoming your own God because you listen to the serpent. Everybody that consort with the serpent get expelled from the garden because the serpent giving you the knowledge of God. And in order for you to get that knowledge, you got to detach from God and go into the simulation to learn to get your powers. And when you make it out, just like the serpent said, you'll be on God level then. You'll be on that boss level. Go watch this movie because everything I teach, they're going to show you in there. The Osiris Spindle. Uh, that right there going to do it for this part. I want to keep y'all tuned in. We agreed to make this an ongoing series. I want to maintain about 1,100 people and people following this series from beginning to end. And I think we can do that. Am I keeping y'all interested in this realism series? Let me know by coming back and, 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 and you know joining me in the next class, in the next presentation. I'm going to come back refreshed, rejuvenated with even more knowledge, and we're going to start off right here and keep reading on and breaking it down and taking our time, even if we got to go to part 77 round this bitch. Because <laughs> there's so much information inside of this subject of realism. So uh, hashtag realism, make that the new thing, realism. And tell them, bro, Sanchez, have you ever heard of realism? Yeah, that brother, bro, Sanchez, breaking it down, man. Ain't too many people ever heard of realism. They don't know about why we call it Israel, Ra, and El. Realism. They, they don't know. So we own a real advanced portion of knowledge in this country's community. And they ain't going to grow it for us. We got to grow it ourselves. Shatter information, folks. Let's make sure every series that we have a bigger and bigger number count involved and have more people want to want to know. Well, what is realism? I never heard of realism. You can tell them. You can lead them here. You can be the one to say, let me break some down for you. They be, damn, bro, where you get that from? Go check out bro Sanchez, man. We be getting it in. We're a group think tank. We all share ideas. We help each other. And we all on this same path of ascension. And it like me, man. If you interested, check it out. Because realism is a word I never heard of until just a few, maybe months ago. And not and, and that is literally the foundation of everything. Like that is literally the root word of religion. So that's why we got to get into it. There's a place called Raleigh, North Carolina, where Jordan come from. The, I, see, I'm so deep with etymology, like, that's what I'm telling you, the word rally is a rally or a Christ mass, rally, realism. Rallies is the checkerboard, you know, but think about this, right? Think about this. We say, really? If somebody say something interesting that's paradoxical information, We'll be like, ooh, really? Even when you say, like, all of that ties into this whole, we're inside of relying technology, the belly of the beast. This is interesting. And when, you, when your mind goes expanding like this inside of the beast, he spits you out like Jonah. He kick you out the garden. So the goal is to get kicked out the garden. That's all. 
it's 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 you your spirit matures and you no longer need a guide or a god you activate your own light within people who still relying on gods and religions they're going to continue to be born in the Saturn cycle, Venus, Mercury, Mars, the Aurelian solar system, the Trappist system. Until they wake up and realize that they are gods, they're going to be servants of gods and they're going to be servers to a computer. What is a server on a computer? Let's look it up. What's a computer server? It's the same thing. If God, if Jesus is the computer, you the server. Let's look it up. A com, a, a, a com, look. A server is a computer program. What are you? You, you your own program of this matrix. I told you, look at it. Every one of us is software or a vibrate, a program. A server is a computer program or device that provides a service to another computer program and its user, also known as the client. In a data center, the physical computer that a server program runs on is also frequently referred to as server. The, see, you're not physical. Even science tell you that our entire world is only 1% physicality. That's representative of software inside of a computer. That 1% of physicality can't be detected. The only way we can interact with that software is through a physical base, meaning your computer hardware, your computer running the software. So you being a server in a computer, meaning this supercomputer that have taken all of these programs and merged them together as one superior AI algorithm. Imagine a computer that's that's using a, a union of every version of Windows created. In China, every tech guru making their own advanced software like Windows and putting them together with Bill Gates version. That would be the that would be this one ultimate software that's running the biggest computer in the universe. So the most advanced computer in the universe needs all of the programs in creation to run itself, not just Windows. And that's this whole concept of all of us coming together to help create this Moloch, this quantum universe. Uh, each one of us is a server providing our program to this universe outside. You know, how some of us are plant experts, some of us animal experts, animal spirits, plant spirits, water spirits, fire spirits. Each of these souls on the earth, on a, on a spiritual level, you may be a water spirit, fire spirit, animal spirit, all that. On a physical level, that energy is translated into these particular things in our reality, plants, water. And those people become attached to those things in their life. What, you know, you say, why did he always have a gift and love for plants? This is what I'm saying. Like, each one of us is helping manifest all of the different programs and software that's creating this diverse experience. In this one computer are infinite amount of programs being ran in unison to create this shit. And each one is leading back to one of us. Now that may be hard to understand, but these words we use in religion, that Christ would be lifted up, but we talk about uploading in a computer, that's ascension, downloading, that's being casted out. We talk about serving, Servants, that's in computer. 
We talk about windows and we talk about the sky vault, the gate to heaven in religion. Is all what's the religion is based upon this computer technology. The beast is the computer. And that became the original God that we worship. We thought we were smart. Now we trying to get out of this shit. 